One and all on the thrilling grounds of the H2O campus uh, here in Permanent. Tonight, a symphony of skills and strategy will unfold in front of our eyes and we will crown a new EDVZ final champion. So yeah, Kapi and EDVZ, but once again, we're here. The seventh edition of the tournament. Seventh. I have next to me Inta Janssens, <laughs> the lovely Inta Janssens. Uh, some will know you, others won't. Yeah. Should I do the introduction or you should I let you do it for you? I'll, I'll let you do the honor. I've seen her as a competitive player in the female scene. You've won an international tournament, the ECL Women's Cup in 2022 it was? Yeah, 2022. Right, the second cup. So you're basically, we can say, some sort of a world champion. Un unofficially? Unofficially world champion. Unofficially. <laughs> I've also seen you do a lot of hosting uh, for the football in, in, in the Netherlands, but yeah. also um, on esports, of course, with the Fame Her Game and all the other female tournaments. So I've seen you around quite a bit. So yeah, must be fun to be here tonight. Yeah, no, especially, uh, I'm glad to be here. I, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this tournament. So uh, let's, just, uh, let's just get into that. So, first of all, a lot of people are watching at home. There will be people that are looking for, of course, the packs, obviously, Definitely. because there's few rewards. <laughs> yeah. Then next to that, we have people that are looking for the item upgrades with the show showdown where we get to in two Yeah, we'll in get seconds. to that. Yes, definitely. But also, they are here to see a champion. And we can't have a champion without knowing who's going to play. Exactly. So, maybe we should introduce the different teams that are going to be that yeah. are play today. Yeah, if you, if you kick it off, that'd be great. Yeah. So, here is the bracket. We will start with Ajax against Heracles. And at the same time, we will have Twente and Feyenoord playing on the second stage. So, yeah. two games at the same time. I think Ajax Heracles is going to be the one that most people are looking forward to for the uh, showdown cards. Definitely, definitely. Do you have like a sort of prediction about these two? Uh, it's going to be a really difficult one. Like, um, last time they faced each other, there was a it was a 3-0 win for Ajax. So, you might say they're the favourites in this game. But, of course, it's the finals. It's a different atmosphere. It's going to be... Yeah, it, it's, it's going to be... There's a crowd here. There's... It's so much different compared to um, to through the weeks, like in the play rounds. What about uh, the, the other side of the bracket? So, like I said, Ajax Heracles and Twente Feyenoord are on one side, and on the other hand, on the other side, we have Excelsior PSV. Yeah. And Azit Alkmaar against Pek Zwolle. Yeah. So go over that for us, Inta. Uh, you as an uh, as a competitor or ex-competitor, I don't know how, what I should say, ex-competitor. Ex-competitor right ex now, yeah. <laughs> uh, who do you have here in this side of the brackets? Well, thing is, like with Excelsior Pace Fair, you're looking at uh, a team that I actually specifically call the Dark Horse. Excelsior, it's going to be very interesting. Uh, I'll get back to that later. Of course, PSV, one of the favorites to say for this uh, for this EDFC final round. And then, of course, as said, Danny Fisser, a well-known name internationally, nationally. So I'm um, pretty looking forward to what they're going to be doing. And, of course, Peck, um, which we're going to get back to as well, because you uh, you mentioned Peck, uh, but we're going to get back to that. Yeah, sure. So, like we said, eight teams participating right now. Yeah. They're going to fight to be the KPN EDVZ champion. It's the seventh edition already. So, so it's been quite a while. And for those people at home that are following these kind of tournaments that have been around the scene, they will know that this is the ground of champions. Champions are born in the Netherlands. The home of champions, actually. Like, EDVZ, it's, it's, it, it actually, it, it's so cliche, but it actually is the home of champions. You've got, you've got Paolo, who has been internationally great. You've got Manuel, who has the who's probably the player with the best 2023 there is internationally and nationally as well because he uh, yeah he won the EDVZ of course last year mm -hmm. um, so yeah there's, there's so many big names especially uh, Levy as well of course well known there's so many internationally big players competing in this competition and I think uh, internationally EDVZ might not be big but looking at these big names that are competing, I think the name Edifizi has grown so much along the years. Yeah, it's getting bigger and bigger and we see more people coming in if you compare this one, this edition to previous ones. Exactly, yeah, Then definitely. you'll know that there's more people watching, there's more people interested in esports yeah. and the clubs are pushing it really. So maybe talk about like, um, yeah, let's get into the first match maybe, talk about what's going to happen sure, there. Sure, sure, let's, let's go in. So we had Ajax against Heracles. Yeah, so like I mentioned last time, um, 3-0 win for Ajax, so um, Max won against Fins, 2-0. Uh, 
And I think yeah. Paolo, yeah, Paolo uh, played, so there was no Levy there. It was Max. He was the third player today as well. Um, so that's made me interesting to mention, of course. For people who are just tuning in, uh, we've got eight teams competing with two main players, and each team has a third player um, who has been playing throughout the season as well. Um, so this, yeah, this game specifically, Max, who's the third player for I, uh, Ajax, he uh, he won. He had a great win against Vince again, and uh, Paolo won against Colin. So three 0 So I might say, like I just mentioned before, Heracles might be the underdog in this. Might be is the underdog in this. Uh, yeah, in this game, so to say. And looking at the other game, FC Twente Feyenoord. It's funny because last time, I, you were there as well last yeah. year. Last time, um, it was also Twente Feyenoord in the beginning of, uh, of, of the quarterfinals. It was quarterfinals, same, same, same matchup like we had last year. Exactly, indeed. yeah. So, um, and it was pretty entertaining. We had nine goals there, six, three win for FC Twente right then. Um, so, yeah, I think it's going to be very interesting to see how the matchups have turned out. Uh, of course, with Brent, Twente is a very, very good player. Um, yeah, and of course, um, Feyenoord is still as final. They're, they're here again at the finals. I th yeah, so it's just going to be a very interesting uh, matchup. It's going to be a very interesting matchup. We see two players that are well known in the Dutch scene. Definitely. They, they have been around, Tala and uh, Julian, of course, for Feyenoord. But on the other hand, we do have Heracles, where Colin is playing, like you said. Colin is also some sort of player that used to play for Feyenoord. Yeah. So that's going to be a big clash too. He's playing for his old team. So we have the bracket here once again. Um, like we said, first matchup, Twente Feyenoord, will be a very important one, I think, for both of these teams because they really want to like show in their first game yeah. that they're here to compete because the big names in this tournament are obviously always going to be Ajax and PSV. Yeah. But I think for them, that first win could be a very important one to like get things going because, yeah, who knows, maybe they can dethrone Ajax or PSV and be the outsider that actually wins it. We've seen a lot of these in the past events of the KPA uh, EDVZ, so why not again this year? Yeah, no, exactly. And the thing for Feyenoord is that there's a bit, bit more pressure. They've got a lot of fans following them. Uh, they even traveled here with their player bus that they used for the first team of Feyenoord. They traveled here, they lost against Twente in the quarterfinals, so the first game they lost last year. They really want to get revenge, and I think it's going to be very interesting to see how Tala, who has became one of the biggest talents of the Netherlands, if not, uh, one, yeah, if not the biggest, to be honest um, and he, he, he got a spot in Ioranje which is the national Dutch team um, yeah, he, he's, he's really really good I've, he even won the Dutch championship um, so we've got the ch Dutch NK yeah. we call it national uh, national Kampioenschap yeah. so the Dutch championship uh, he won it so uh, I have high high uh, expectations of him He's one of the underdogs, like the, one of the young guys that is coming onto the scene. But we cannot like, forget about Levi de Weert, who's also very young. Definitely. We're, we're calling him as one of the household names now in esports. As he won, I think it was last year, 2v2, 2v2 EA Cup with um, uh, Olalito, Olalito yep, indeed. Yep. So uh, even at uh, EW, uh, the Nations uh, League that we had last year, we went to the final with the Netherlands together with Emre and Manuel. So yep. I think in general we have quite a big pool of talents. Definitely. Um, and later on we will go to Emre, who's also a Champions League winner. So we have so many talented players here who are also young. So I think the future for the Dutch eSports scene is looking pretty good, like I would say. Definitely. Of course, we're talking about the big names. But looking at, for example, Excelsior, Luke uh, would be one of my one to watches today. Yeah. He's been he's been doing really good uh, in overall. Um, so, yeah, he would be like Tella was last year. Last year, Tella was, OK, um, I think it was his first year even in EDVC. So he had to, like, um, how do I say, he liked, like to um, adapt, that's what I was looking for. Adapt to the competition. Of course, there's crowd there, there's, there's, there's people there. It's different from gaming in your in your bedroom yeah. or in, in, yeah, it's just a different atmosphere. You have Look to at adapt to it. Look at it. It's, 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 have a, it's having a big impact for me, at least. There's a lot of lights, there's people there, there's people shouting. Like, I can imagine for uh, someone really young, like Tala or like Luke now, um, it could be, yeah, it could make a big difference. You could get more nervous and stuff like that. And of course, the really, really big players that you mentioned, like Levy, like Manuel, like uh, PH Jin, they're used to this already. And we have to see how they're going to adapt to these kind of stages. Yeah, we are hearing the welcome for Feyenoord, from what I've heard. So they're going to come on. We have Julian, like you said, Trent is coming right behind it. Tala, Brent Wering, of course, Bob van Uden and uh, Atakansu, so to get the whole squad in. This is going to be quite an interesting match, in my personal opinion. Uh, to say, the first game that we're going to play is going to be Mika against Julian Ben. So we're playing 1v1. 
in, in a team with two players. Yep. That means we do an aggregate scoreline, game one, game two, who wins in total on aggregate, passes to the next round, the loser is out. Yep. So quite a heavy burden to carry to play that second game. Definitely. So definitely. Julian playing the first one, Tala has the second one as the yep. young kid on the block. That's a big burden. He's, he's, yeah. He has to carry Feyenoord. Unless Julian makes a monster score like 7-0, then who knows? Yeah, that's the thing. Like you have to, you have to think about it. It's mind games as well. Like, in overall, I think uh, Tala has the better season than uh, Julian uh, mm -hmm. this year of, uh, of the regular season of Edivisie. So, do you want him to play first and like put a good score for Julian to like back up or play defensive, or do you want Julian to like um, put put everything? to like draw or, if, or, or win in this case mm -hmm. uh, the game it depends it really depends on how he's feeling and it, it's it's a bit of a chess game like do you want your best player to start or to like give a big impact or do you want it for last do you want yeah. to save it for last that's indeed strategy that we have to put and therefore exactly. they have coaches they have a team so they know what to do but um, Julian has been known for like very defensive play style yeah. being able to keep a 0-0 zero, zero. so in that case it's normal I just heard here we go right behind us the welcome for Ajax and Heracles. This is going to be like the team, the main pitch game. They're going to be in the front. We have Levi de Weert next to a PA gym. And then, of course, Nick Den Hammer as coach. And then on the side of Heracles, we have, of course, uh, Vince who's going to play the first game. And then next to him, Colin Decker. Yes. A very interesting game, I think personally. A lot of people are just saying that this is Ajax's game to win. And they don't believe that they could do it so in, in my personal opinion there's always there's always a possibility we are playing EAFC 24 <laughs> if anything there's always a possibility for everybody exactly. to come back if you just have the mental mentality to come back and have like your head in the game there's always going to be opportunities within the game but you will have to take them and this is going to be crucial for both of them I think no definitely um, like I said the it, thing is it's a tournament as well like you have to bring your A game every single you have to keep concentrated it's a long sit for these players they've been practicing for hours already they've been looking forward to this you have to keep keep yeah the focus on this game and of course even though um, the differences between them like the 3-0 win for Ajax was yeah, it was quite huge in the regular season you never know what kind of tricks they are coming up with with the finals I heard that the games are gonna kick off we of course have two commentators yes amidst us we are not gonna commentate the games we have two commentators for that we have nobody else than Brandon Smith who's gonna be here the one and next, only. next to him we have Renzo Rousing coach about Team Hullet is going to be here. He's going to give some more, in um, a little bit more insights on the games, of course. And he has also a better idea, I think, than most of us put together when it talks about like strategically and tactically. Definitely. So it's going to be a very interesting game um, for both of them. So we're going to head it there over to them. So let's get start. So Brandon and, of course, Renzo, take it away guys i hope you had a great time here i gave a brief introduction but it's yours to take away i hope you're going to enjoy this match and yeah give us all you got we certainly are thank you very much dory welcome to this year's e divise grand finals live from the heart of amsterdam here and look i mean we're in for a special one today renzo i mean it's our first time commentating together since i think the playoffs yeah back in uh Back last year, well, no, a couple of years no, ago, back on, yeah, a few years ago, back it was now. So it's our first time casting together for a long time. We're in for a treat, today, aren't we? So much talent here oh. in, uh, in in the Netherlands, and it's so hard to call which way this one's going to go. Oh, for sure, there is, this is the home of champions, Brandon. Welcome to the EDVC finals, and we're going to start off with probably one of the favourites for sure, PH Zine and Leif De Weert representing Ajax, and. Um, yeah, I mean, even if you look at the other squads, we have PSV Eindhoven in the likes of Manuel Bacciore, Emre Yilmaz, we have Feyenoord with Tala. We have so much talent here in the, in the Netherlands, Brandon, that I'm very pleased to see how this one is going to be unfolding. Yeah, absolutely. Again, if you have just joined us here, welcome to uh, the E Divise Grand Finals. It's the seventh time this tournament has taken place. Uh, Ajax have actually played in four of those six finals we've seen so far today. Will they make it another trophy? It's been a couple of years since they last picked up a trophy here. Obviously, it was a heartbreak for them last year in, uh, in the competition, losing in a grand final, which really did hurt. It was Finn and Levy back then. Obviously, since then, PA Zin has stepped up to the mantelpiece. And... Look, Finn's still involved in that team. Max is the third player this year, but that Ajax team has just got better and better. Yeah, it is. But, like, if you just look at the Ajax team itself, you would say, okay, any player would play in most of the teams yeah. for sure. But now with the likes of Finn, Max, Levy, and PSN, 
I mean, Nick has such a such a wide perspective to look at it and be like, oh, okay, I can pretty much dominate with whatever squad I have, in my opinion. But now with PSG performing the way he did this season, yeah. winning the Pro Open, and having Levy there, yeah, I mean, I don't see a better team as of now, if you ask me. Yeah, well, they've called this the home of champions, the Divisa this year, because you've got an FC Pro Open winner in there, you've got the current world champion. In Manny Bashore, obviously of PSV in there. You've got Emre Yilmaz, E Champions League winner. There is so much on there. We're going to swap over to a different game for a split second now. We're jumping over to it now. It's been FC Twente and Feyenoord. Obviously, you've got Julian van der Berg who on a crazy for a champ streak record not so long ago. Tried to take Anders Vergang's mantle there. He takes on uh, Mika Muski of FC Twente. It does lead by a goal to nil in this game. What's important to say about this one, Renzo, is that the winner of this one will play the winner of our featured matchup, Ajax against Her Hercules. Yes, that's true. And uh, Mika is probably a player that a lot of players uh, who have been in the competitive scene for quite some time, or even fans, they might not recognize him, but he has actually been doing quite well this season. He was uh, a substitute back then when uh, Twente really did struggle in the first uh, first couple matches of the Edivisi. And he was substituted because Brent, actually the number one individual ranked player, he was ill. And Mika made his introduction against Ajax, against Piazin, and he won the game. And it was incredible. People were like super flabbergasted that he actually won that game. And now, here in the finals, leading 1-0 against a veteran, Julian Berg. So that's what you can expect at the UWC finals here. Lots of surprises, incredible talent, and as we can see here, there Could might be, be a chance. A second goal, which there will be. Mika Whew. finding a second goal. This is on our B stream game, of course. FC Twente against Final. Keep in mind, if you're not aware of the format here in the UWC this year, it is very simple. It's an aggregate scoreline that will come together to determine an overall winner. Our grand finals today, though, will be played on a best of three. But look, you said he came in when someone fell ill and he's and ever since he got the opportunity Renzo he's not looked back because no. as you can see he's got better and better and better and what a start he's having here against a veteran you could argue in Julian Van Berg. Exactly a veteran for sure because Julian has been around for the sixth uh, consecutive season in the EDVC and now facing a 2-0 deficit quite early in the matchup as well 22nd minute and yeah we saw there we can expect it a lot more today Brandon Haaland getting up in the air a knockdown, and it's a beautiful finish from uh, from Alexi in the end, putting uh, Twente up in uh, two goals the lead right now. Well, if we can, let's jump across, if we can, to our main featured matchup. It's just kicked off now. It's Levy de Vier de Vajax up against Vince of Hercules Alemo, who actually were runners-up in this competition in the second year of running. It's quite a long time back when we think about Brian Hessing. But he oh, was in yeah. this tournament, and he was a runner-up to Danny Vissa, someone that you know very well, uh, Renzo. I remember the famous throwing the fish celebration. For sure. Uh, <laughs> he, was, <laughs> he was putting his rod into the crowd and trying to reel that one back in. But yeah, for sure, that was a, quite an interesting matchup uh, back then. Brian Hessing obviously not being part of uh, Heracles Almelo right now, because it is Vince Eikens and Colin Deckers representing Heracles Almelo. Up against uh, Levy de Weert is Vince right now, and Levy might have a chance here, but... Good uh, interception there from uh, from Fins there, who uh, yeah, has been looking quite well so far, not being... Uh, oh, this is a risky pass, though. Not When you say so, you do get that curse of the commentator, I guess, Brandon. Well, we have to look at the facts here, Renzo, of Ajax's season that they've had this year. Joint top on points in terms of the regular season. Them and PSV were incredible. They only both only lost one game out of the 17 they played. This could be a chance. Ooh. That was a chance indeed, Mbappe getting it on that right foot and I thought he green timed that but then you might expect something better from Mbappe in that position to at least get in on target but indeed like you said Heracles Almelo and Ajax did face off uh, against each other in regular season obviously as there is a chance developing here for Levy. He's just driving isn't he into our nine, it's Ajax to lead by a goal to nil, 12 minutes in. It's all they've taken to get them started and after what could have been a, a horrible start Renzo, yep. Levy put in the, the pace somewhere he needs to, a lovely little pass into our nine. Thank you very much around the goalkeeper, just so that Ajax are in the lead here. Yeah, and I don't want to speak too early, but it's just kind of not a little bit heartbreaking for Fins as he thought he might have been up there 1-0 with that chance from Mbappe, and they immediately, uh, the attack of Levy after that, he's 1-0 down. And like I said, the Heracles did face off against um, 
against uh, Ajax earlier this season, but Levy wasn't actually a part of that. But Ajax did win 3 0, and it was 2 0 to Max um, in that matchup against Finns. So Finns yet goalless against Ajax, but obviously he has quite some time still to make up for that as Levy is just taking a little bit of a slower build up from this initial attack off kickoff uh, that he won the ball off by uh, of Finns. Well, if you have to shoot into the KP and Edevise, this is, as we said, the grand finals here in the Netherlands. There's a lot on the line. Oh, oh that's a terrible dispossession there. Could be a chance for Fulham many to get a second, cuts it back to R9 for two. You don't give a player of Levy de Vier's quality a sniff, let alone a chance anywhere around the box, because he will punish you every single day of the week. But what I wanted to say, Renzo, is that there's some big spots on the line for these guys. As we know, PAG and Levy de Vier, they're all at the FC Pro World Championships. They've done that part. However, there's an E-Champions League on the line. Four tickets to the E-Champions League, which happens in May this year, which no doubt all of these players have got their eyes on. 100%. Obviously, we're now representing Ajax, representing PSV, representing whoever, Heraklis Almelo, you want to be able to represent your club in the E-Champions League, right? Because, for example, if we look at these uh, matchups right now, they have the pressure on them. They should be making the final, right? People are looking at them like, okay, Ajax, PSV, they're the top dogs. They should be getting to that final stage and compete in the E-Champions League. Emre, for example, being a reigning E-Champions League winner, he should be able to get to that stage at least in the tournament, right? And yeah, obviously Levy, when you give him a chance like that, like Finns did, twice already, right now losing the ball again, but let's get a fortunate bounce here with Reese James. Can he work his way back into this game and at least give Colin something to work with in the second leg against Piazzin as well? Well, there's probably people at home thinking, Renzo, what are the restrictions in play for this year's Capien Edivise? It's pretty much uh, in any player scenario, isn't there? There's no budget, there's no icon limit. There is a budget, and there, uh, or there's no budget, sorry, there is an icon limit though. You can only select four Team of the Year player items or uh, four icon uh, player items. And you will see most of the time Team of the Year Haaland being used. Uh, the new Ultimate Birthday, uh, Ruth Gullit, who has incredible stats. I mean, have you seen him? That card, 5-5, five, five, finesse shot, playstyle plus. It's a brilliant card. It's probably the best Gullit that has ever been in the game, as Levy the Weird said to me yesterday. Well, the best part is for him, he's, he's only just come into the game as well. A couple of weeks ago, it couldn't have been timed any better. Yeah, for sure. And I do think Finns is starting to lose it a little bit, but maybe the pressure of Levy is starting to get to him as we might see a chance here with Mbappe. Looking for that team of the year, Haaland, but doesn't quite find him at the back post. So working his way back in, Khalid, maybe the finesse, like I said there, but it was intercepted quite well in the end. And... Obviously, talking about those four team of the year or icon item, player items, which one would you pick, Brandon? Uh, there's, there's one man that's first on the list. He goes by the name of Erling Haaland. I think you'd have to. Uh, I think you have to use him. On that same topic, though, Renzo, is that uh, you've probably noticed how there's a couple of heroes in these teams as well. Because heroes, you can basically use as many as you please. There, I don't expect to see many heroes on the pitch, but I'm seeing Lucio and I'm already seeing Vitz and company. True. You can uh, so pretty much every other pick is uh, is free. You can just use whoever you'd like. So they can be a hero at the central defensive position. We, for example, will see Virgil van Dijk, his inform card, uh, being used. But also the likes of hero item uh, Vincent Company and Lucio, who are obviously brilliant. As Vince Icons might get a chance here, but Rolfe, fresh addition to most of the squads as well. Levy loves her. Um, yeah, she's just a brilliant card, 93 rated right now, and. You can pretty much yeah, just have so much, so much choice so you can build your team up to your own preference apart from those four team of the year or icon uh, items. Well, as Renzo was saying, no budget in the of Ease, eh? but some restrictions to some extent as from the start is getting quite chippy here, but Khalid no, can't get to it and Rolfe in the end does manage to clean up business there for Levy. As uh, that was an interesting situation there, Brandon. As we saw there, Haaland trying to fight with Van der Sar in the air and uh, almost getting the better of the goalkeeper. Weapon Van der Sar has been unbelievable, of course. Rich history with Ajax. Obviously, whenever Van der Sar is in goal for Ajax, you expect him to do a little more maybe for the badge. <laughs> you, get, you get a little plus one boost. You get a little plus one boost indeed. 
as uh, Finns here, trying to build up just before half time. Might we be looking to get that last chance? Could be on for a third. Is Arnold on for a hat trick? No, Hulli could get the third instead. It's Van der Sar Ooh. saving Heracles in Heracles this from going 3 0 down in our other matchup. Two goals to nil, still FC 20 leaves against Fire Remember, both the games are in the first matches. It's two legs or two matches per each fixture and aggregate scoreline combined together will decide. The overall scoreline, Furlong Mendy finds Alex Pateas. It's Uspen Dembele of all people, which is an interesting choice. Does get dispossessed. And that'll do us for half time here, Enzo. Ajax lead by two goals to nil. And overall, it's been pretty routine for Levy. Yeah, it's been a, a game with just little chances, honestly. Uh, it was one mistake at least. And before that, on the, uh, the 1 0 as well. It wasn't the prettiest of play from Finns, but Levy has just been able to capitalize to the maximum potential uh, and yeah, leading a comfortable 2-0 lead. And like we said, Finns will try to give something for Col or try to get something out of this match for Colin to work with still. And Levy right now 2-0 in the lead. You have PHC set up for the next game. You're looking all good. We have to say that by the way, PA is in waiting in the wings. If you're Colin Deckers and your teammates 2 0 down already, and you're playing against PA Jin. How on earth are you preparing to go into that game against that Brazilian monster? I mean, he's someone that um, during my coaching career I faced up a lot against with Paulo Neto, and I just know that whenever you're a couple goals down, there's always a possibility. As we saw, a big chance there for Finns, but it didn't get um, on target really. Well, at least in the corner that he probably wanted to, straight at Van der Sar. But PSC. He will always score. So if you know you're two, nil goal, uh, two goals down, you probably are three goals down, actually, or four goals down even, Brandon. So that will make it so difficult as Levy is uh, building up quite slowly here, obviously taking his time with this two, the goal cushion, working his way to Rolfo here on the right-hand side. Rolfo trying to get something, finding a pass into Frankie de Jong and Bappe here, step over. This looks good from Levy. There he is. Harlan. Harlan. You know what's coming. You, you know, know what's, what's coming. coming every single time. Three goals to nil. Ajax leads. And it's a brilliant goal. Well, well worked from Levy. Build up perfect. And then just that little acceleration with Mbappe towards the back line. Um, gave him the option pretty much to cut it back. And Haaland just, yeah, in so much space. So he did realize that little dink into the back post would give Haaland a free header on target. And yeah, just as easy as that. 3-0, Brandon. 40, uh, 54 minutes in. What are you thinking? I'm thinking the Ajax right now could be cruising through to a semi-final. <sighs> Looks like it. Looks like it for sure. As we see on the other pitch, Twente and Feyenoord still are in that first leg. 2-0 up for FC Twente. Mika trying to set up Brent in a beautiful position, but he's still up against Talha Demirel, who is a fantastic player as well, Brandon, attacking-wise. Those are uh, absolute phenoms in, uh, in their own perspectives. No, most definitely, of course. It's going to be a big ask as well for Brent Wernick when he takes on Tala in the next game there. I mean, for final, it could be an early exit for them in the tournament as well. It doesn't look like they're going to be going through unless they can pull a goal back now. Big save, Van der Sar. Yeah, indeed, but like, the Edefis finals just haven't been that pretty for final as of uh, yet, Brandon. They've always been see, uh, always seem to lose either in the quarters or in the in the semi-finals. They haven't played a final yet to date. But they've always been in the finals, though, haven't they, Brenza? They've always been in the top eight. They've always been in that conversation. But they've, they've, as you're right, they've maybe lacked a few of those big performances. Yeah, for sure. I think honestly, there might be one season that they might have been left out. But then again, it was more of. Um, them having a different roster back then and this roster we'd expect a little more as Alexia tried to get a finesse there but Mika is going to it's win. going to do us 2-0 big big result for Mika Muski it's a great start for him as we said he it's his bit of a dream story for him in this E Divise got called in late and has not looked back ever since 2-0 win there still a second leg to be played let's jump back over to this one now Ajax lead by three goals to nil when it's Levy Devere who's putting on a master class at the moment for sure is as he does does lose possession there might be on a counter attack Cole Palmer here getting into that left hand side how, how important would it be just to get a goal I mean that could be huge as well for just 
I mean, the great goalkeeper movement there on the finesse. But just as well for the feeling that Colin will enter the game with. Two goals, okay, you never know. If I score the first goal, even in the first half or so, okay, you still have a game on. But three goal difference, like as the PhD in always scoring, you know it's almost a four goal, five goal difference that you have to overcome. And that's just a little too much if you ask me. Chance for Hullet for four. Woo. And just like that, Ajax might as well just say, look, we're in a semi-final because PH in is stepping up to the sticks in 28 in-game minutes. Levy De Veer has done his part as a teammate here and he's given him more than a lift up. <laughs> he's given him a ladder. Yeah, that is a ladder for sure. And uh, like I said, at Ruud Gullit, that uh, ultimate birthday item is actually incredible. He has that finesse playstyle plus where, where Fins was actually thinking, okay, I need to move my goalkeeper towards that far corner because he might finesse it. And then you have the power shot playstyle plus as well on that item. And he went for the near post and yeah, just no chance in stopping that one. Fins Icons, what can you still give us, but also your teammate Colin Deckers to at least give yourself a little, a little chance to maybe come back from this 4-0 deficit overall. But then again, it's PhD and who is waiting. Colin Deckers has a monster job to do. And it doesn't look like Levy is about to slow down anytime soon. And if he was to find five, he would make matters even worse. Fellow Mendy might be on to find five for Levy. In the end, it is KDB who did step up to the challenge and managed to collect the ball for Fins as he is trying to work his way back up on that right-hand side with Rhys James. Well, for Heraklis Almo, um, how would you go into this second game? You're playing against P.A. Jin. I need four goals. Honestly, <laughs> I, I am a coach. I would say, yo, just throw all at it, uh, all you got at it, and just try to do as much as you can. Literally zero pressure. There's one. Potentially, no, it's not. Two hands on it for Van der Sop. Indeed, it was. There was a little chance. And like I said, if it only can get down, back down to at least a goal for Fins, then Colin might have that fire in him. But he's probably now a little bit yeah, sucked out of his energy as well because it's just going to hurt that seeing your teammates struggling that much. And you, f you know that you still have to face off PH Sin, who, like I said, always will score. So you, he's probably not even giving himself a shot here. He would need his coach right now to tell him, OK, just throw everything at him. Maybe the first two uh, 20 in-game minutes, you will try to finesse to get just get a couple of headers in. And you might think, OK, I'm tuning him up right now. And you start getting that spark back. Yeah, absolutely. If you have just tuned in, welcome back to the KPN Edivise Finals. We're bringing it to you live from Amsterdam. 40,000 euro competition, as we said. We've got E-Champions League tickets on the line. We've got two spots to this year's FC Pro World Championships, which are slowly filling up as well. 11 spots already given out to the community. After tonight, it potentially could be, obviously, 13 in total. We are getting closer and closer and closer. And that list of players, Renzo is already stacked. Oh. And you've got to think, next week we've got La Liga. Then we're off to Italy. Then we're off to Germany. Then we're back at the Champions League. Of course, France. there's so many leagues still to, to conclude and so many spots to give out still, isn't there? Oh, there's so, there's so much talent right now. I, I mean, we saw that at EAFC Pro Open, right? It was just so close. Every game, like, you couldn't guess who was going to win. The top four that came to conclusion there as well. They already got their, uh, their tickets booked to the FC Pro World Championship, but Every, every league is just so good right now. It's so hard to uh, actually win them. As we saw last week, even uh, you were there, right? Uh, for the Manchester City victory. It came down all to the wire. As we see Fins here, Mike getting a goal back. There's a goal. There's a goal. That's that little spark, that little energy that Heracles as a team needs into maybe pulling off one of the greatest comebacks we've ever seen in EAFC history for sure. Well, that's one goal. Well, the problem is you still need three of them and you're playing against PH in in your next fixture. Still 10 in-game minutes to go, Brandon. There might be something still here for Fins. Um, as Levy will probably try to slow down as he has been uh, the, the games thus far. But that means that there should be still a chance for Fins at least to uh, maybe get that second goal. And then ah, he has a shot. Colin does have a shot. Well, keep in mind that we're not playing nine-minute halves just because, obviously, there's two players involved in each fixture. It's six-minute halves. They start shorten the games a little bit. You know, you work with enough pro players, Renzo. Is it 
Is there a different strategy to games when you're going from six to, to nine minute games? I mean, for sure. Um, in the six minute games, especially if you're looking at the play style of some certain players, they might be looking at playing a bit more relaxed in their build up when they're playing the nine minute halves. And in six minute halves, you need to go, you need to attack because if you are one, one goal down, as Levy here, big chance, but a big save from Van der Sar. And right now it's the 88 minute. If you, or we're, we're ticking into that. If you were playing nine minute halves, you know, okay, I don't need to immediately jump out and get that ball back. But now in six minute halves, you can see we're already slowly getting to that 90 minute mark. And you know now Finns doesn't um, get the ball if Levy just controls it here. Well, Mbappe's got on a bit of a 5k run, isn't he? Exactly. This is what I mean. Levy just choosing Around the wisely. Pitch. We're to going to jump back to game C just very quickly, Renzo, just to jump in here. I remember the storyline here is that FC20 are up by two goals to nil. Yes, they are. And um, this is actually an interesting one, Brandon, because Talha and Brent. Brent is the number one seeded individual player as he was able to get that top... Um, the top ranking in the individual standings. And Tala is actually the third player on the rankings. Um, Just off topic, Renzo, there's been another goal for Ajax. I don't know if we can give you the lowdown on that one, if possible. It's 5-1. Ajax lead. Levy David has just put on a masterclass there. 90 plus two added time. We thought he was done. I thought, I thought he was keeping the ball. I thought he was saying, right, PA's in. There's a 4-1 lead, mate. Go and enjoy that. Instead... There's a 5-1 lead. There's the goal. You'll see it again. It's pretty much trademark Haaland towards the back post. Thank you very much. It is. Massive, massive result for Ajax. I mean, we started off the day saying, like, we're going to see this Haaland knockdowns a lot more often. And yes, we did. And obviously, he chose to run back with Mbappe there. But that uh, made sure that he had the build-up for the last attack going. And yeah, then... He probably already made up his mind, even when he was there with Mbappe on his own halfway line. Let me just get to that back line, just throw it in on Haaland. I'm already leaning 4-1, that's nice, but 5-1 could have been even better. And yeah, it's just a brilliant performance from, uh, from Levy. Well, let's jump back over to Feyenoord against FC Twente. It's a big job for Tala to do. It is 2-0 down against, like I said, the number one ranked individual player um, of the EDVZ regular season. He only played 16 games as well, Brandon. Most of them on the top rankings, the top three, they played 17 games. And um, Brent actually managed to collect 41 points. And the second ranked individual player had 35. So he still had a game on hand against them. Yeah, and, he, and he's sitting next to him right now. He's playing against them. Tower exactly. is the, the second ranked player there. Oh, he actually was the second. He I was. Think they were tied up, right? With Colin. It was very, very tight. Very yeah, tight Colin yeah. in there as well. Emre Yilmaz fourth, Danny Vizov fifth. Again, it's a really interesting format here at the Edevise. The, the season's played in a very different way. It's you know, sort of split into four different periods. There were sort of two in the winter of last year. One as the game kicked off, one before the Christmas break as FC20 nearly find a third in the game. But you could argue, look, I mean, Ajax were in a grand final by the, what, the end of October? The end of, the end of November? They were, the, they, were, they were period one winners. Yeah, they, they qualified. Were. They actually won, uh, won it twice, I believe, in the end as well. And yeah, that's the thing. If you manage to just perform for four or five game days straight, you could be booking your spot into the E Divisi finals. That's the way the format works, and that's the way it goes. But Brent Wehring and Tala. Big chance. Big goal for Feyenoord. It is, it is. I was about to say, they performed consistently all season long. So scoring. Uh, Brent scoring 60 goals in the regular season, Tala scoring 57 goals. I was about to say, we're going to see goals in this matchup straight away. And Tala just provided that to us. Bringing back Feyenoord in this matchup, 2-1, over aggregate score. Brandon, we've got a game on our hands. We certainly do. Remember, the winner of this one will play against Ajax or Heracles. Almelo, as you said, they took period two champion spot. They got themselves into... The Edevise finals by December time, then PSV came up trumped, and it was Pex Wall that took that last spot from those four periods as well. Then there was three spots given out to the season standings. Daisy Alkmaar, FC 20, and final picks up that. And then between eight teams at the bottom of the league, so they even gave chances to eight teams to take the final spot. It was Excelsior Rotterdam that came through clutch there, which is a great part of this format, Renzo, because even if you don't have the best of seasons, there is still a chance in the playoffs. 
Exactly. Yeah, there's still a, a chance in the playoffs indeed. And it used to be a little more different. But like I said right now, you can only perform a couple of matches straight. As Tala might be getting a chance here. But R9 looking quite, uh, quite interesting on that occasion there. Falling over, tripping over. Um, Tala would definitely like to see a foul given for that. But Brent here probably looking to take the last attack of the first half with the build-up here. Alexia and... Definitely is. Well, the blockbuster game's underway. PH in. He's on the sticks in his first ever Edevise season. His debut season in this competition, by any means, it's not his debut rodeo. For sure is. In a tournament like this. An FC Pro champion, a two time E Nations champion. Just under half a million dollars in prize money this man has picked up. And he's still so young. And I was speaking to him just yesterday at the Ajax Arena, and he just said, I said to him, you come across so shy, because he is so shy, out of the game, he's so shy, but in the game, he's roaring, he's vamosing, he's celebrating, we saw it at the FC Pro Open. I mean, I'm sure you spent more time with him than I have, Renzo, but he, he is one of those players, isn't he? He just gives you his all on the pitch. Yeah, but he, apparently, because I, I also talk, talk to a lot of Brazilian players as well, he looks shy to us, uh, be like, obviously talking a different language than he does. Oh, as this is a he hates it. Beautiful play. Eight and minutes, 52 seconds, and he's already got started. What a what a man, Pia Zin, putting Ajax 6-1 up overall. And now, yeah, I mean, are we already calling it a day for, for this matchup, Brandon? I think you would be. It's a five-goal cushion, yeah. Renzo. Five-goal cushion. Pia Zin still 80 minutes left to score more goals. I think uh, we have to say goodbye to Heracles in uh, quite an early stage here of the EDVC finals but you never know Colin what can you give us but for sure uh, as I can continue my, <laughs> my story about PSG he actually is one of those guys like you said that looks shy but in the Brazilian community he's not shy no he's the man he he's the man. man and he's letting them know <laughs> well he actually had the pleasure a couple of weeks ago of commentating on the comfortable e Libertadores because he couldn't play in the competition due to his commitments over here in Europe with Ajax but again that's a tournament that he's already won he said to me yesterday that he wants to be one of the first players to have won that tournament in South America, to go and win a European league, and then after that he said all his, all, all his eyes are on is the Champions League and the FC Pro World Championships. Remember, if he does get into the top four today, aka the top two, makes the grand final, he will be oh. guaranteed an E-Champions League ticket. Here comes PH in on a rampage again, looking for another one. And he's Edwin van der Sar's knees there, just to clear that one away. 60 minutes played, it's... Ajax 6, nearly 7. As Haaland does hit the crossbar there. Yeah, I, I, I'm not used to uh, PSC missing a chance like that, but I mean, I guess he's human. I guess he's human. And like you said, he just wants to won, uh, win it all, right? He just wants to conquer the whole world. We saw uh, Matthias doing uh, quite the same uh, already in uh, terms of leagues. Winning the E-Premier League, winning E-La Liga, winning the uh, Argentinian League, winning the E-Libertadores in, I think it was 2021, something like that. And Piazzin is just on a mission, winning uh, obviously multiple tournaments already and looking great, at least for now, in the E-Divisi Finals, trying to get his next title with Ajax. Well, the player that sits opposite him is Colin Deckers for... Heracles, Almelo will jump across to leave that game for a split second. As we go to his former team, Colin Deckers once upon a time did play for Feyenoord. Four changing teams this time round. It's Taller that does leave by a goal to do. He does lose the tie 2-1 at the moment though. Are we about to see extra time? For the first time here in the Edivise, long ball forward, it's a lofted Ooh. header. That was a... Yeah, a Van Persie-esque header from R9, but he just couldn't get it on target. Very dangerous looking there was Brent. But right now, Tala, what do you think? 67 minutes in, 2-1 down. You did manage to get one back, so you're leading this game. Are you already going to try and put some pressure? You have to, really. You I have mean, to. You lose your out the tournament, and in the nicest way, Renzo, for a lot of these players, it's the end of their season. Exactly. So I can expect uh, Tala to come out all firing in that one, but we're back with Pia Zin here. Someone with else R9. who's fired out. Pia Zin. A man on a mission. 
and he's just firing goals at us really and yeah if you're calling right now you just want to get gone from this area i think if you call it right now you're thinking why why have we allowed him to play in the league <laughs> how did ajax get why did ajax get this guy to the netherlands just as on the other stream i was able to see a huge chance for tala there we could have seen like you said the first extra time coming up in there maybe we can switch back to that one but yeah i think we're about to see another chance for tala here as it's a great build up but he plays it back, Brandon. Why? I don't understand that one. He looked like it looked like a clear-cut chance if he shot that one on target, but he did pass it back right into the feet of Brent, who probably was like, "Thank you for that because you just saved me." Big switch of play here from Brent to fellow Mandy. He's playing it to. I think that was Casemiro, but I'm not sure. Alexia. Big pass into R9, but a great interception from Lucio as Tala, in the 76th minute, has still some work to do. Loses possession there, and this could be a chance for Brent to seal the deal for Twente. Ruud Gelid on the back line, dribbling, looking for someone for that cutback. Oh, it's just a little too much from Brent. And we see a pause being taken there from most likely Tala who's going to put that constant press on right now with only 12 in-game minutes to go and Ooh. like you said six minute house Brendan so you don't have a lot of it's time it's going quick he's going very quick indeed as you said updates from DDVs in the first quarter finals Ajax lead Heracles by seven goals to one Levy and PA's in have been dominating there we'll give you a quick update while we're in a pause 41 minutes on the clock this is the storyline here I mean did we expect anything less than Ajax to put on this level of performance I mean, to be honest, we probably expected them to win, but 7-1. And as there is a chance there for Colin, but it doesn't go in. 7-1, with still a half to go in this entire matchup, is incredible. It's just an amazing performance thus far from the team, Levy and PHC, who uh, are only getting started for the day. As we see here, Tala going to chase that mighty comeback that he has where well, season's on the line isn't it the season is on the line indeed Brandon as Palmer here Davies trying to find a way through can't squeeze it through our nine was the idea but was a huge chance there well a huge Arras. opportunity was he, has he just come on or was he a star I think he has come on but you never know like I said there are multiple options that's, that was quite a risky pass from uh from Van der Sar, from Brent, because Haaland was there, and that's not one that you want to take up into uh, an area duel there, as uh, Araujo is strong in the air, but I'll have my, uh, my chances with Haaland any day. As Mondi here, trying to control the possession for Brent, as Tala has only got five minutes left, really, putting that constant pressure, going to take some risks, as there will be space for Brent to work with, but yeah. What are you going to do? Are you going to try he's, and score He's happy one? to take time off the clock here. He's happy to take more time off the clock. He does give away possession, though, and then this will give Feyenoord. Is it? Really, their last roll of the dice if they wish to stay in this year's competition. As Tala works his way on to the right-hand side, and Gullit might be getting into some space as Declan Rice is putting one in. Gullit has some space. He turned oh. it. And he's just rushed that slightly. Lucia wins possession back. Casemiro, this is... Brent Warwick's oh, game to hold the ball now, back. unless he gets possession away back again, added time. Neymar. Dribbling. Neymar tries to go one-on-one -on -one with a defender or two, brings a couple of players into it, Hullet. Wait for that pass to go through, Neymar, there's the step over. He's asking quite a lot, into corner, added time in one minute. Keep it up for Haaland in the box, that will just queue up and wait for that opportunity to get his head on the ball. De Bruyne, back to Haaland, final, goes down to ground, massive tackle, and it will be FC Twente. The knockout finals and book a spot in the semi finals of this year's Edevise Grand Final. It looks as if they will be taken on Ajax. But I tell you now, Renzo Tower, he had chances right down to the wire there, right at the end. Yeah, we, I think we just missed it. Uh, it was in around the 67 minute or so. It was a huge one on one opportunity for Tala. And yeah, he had it right on his boot there. But unfortunately for him, he gets knocked out together with Julian and Twente. Brent actually losing them a game, but winning overall on aggregate 
continuing their story in the Edivisa finals, booking their place in that semi-final. And uh, yeah, mean, in the meantime, we did switch over to this matchup. 7-1 still to Ajax, as Twente will likely be facing Ajax in that semi-final. Well, the crazy thing is for those two players, Brett and Mika of FC Twente, if they win one more game, they qualify for the Champions League. True that, yeah. There. This is what might happen right now. They might have been... I mean, they, you still have the nerves, right? You still have the nerves for that first game of the day, the quarterfinals of the Eda Visa Finals. But then again, if you win that game, you get some extra, extra cash, but there's not that much yet on the line. Now the games start to begin where you might get your place for the World Cup even, your spot for the World Cup, your spot for the E Champions League. Nerves will settle in right now, Brandon. Well, PAG in, tuning up at the moment. It's his debut season, the Edeviso. Long ball forward. Pull it. Just getting that one on his head, but doesn't manage to get it on target. And um, there's still an, uh, a pause from PAG, who probably just tried to test his playing out capabilities and just controlling the game because he does need to get it prepared for that second match of the day which will be his semi-final and this game yeah what really can you do right now if you're 7-1 up it's not going to make it much better if it's 8-1 or 9-1 PSG just trying to control this game as Colin does get an opportunity here let's get one back and we'll still need four more did not well, manage more, I should say if there's any chance of a comeback in the last 23 game minutes Yes, Beginner. indeed, and ideally he gets six more, obviously, but that's going to be a tough one for sure uh, as five goal. As we saw there, uh, just a brief look at the match statistics. Statistics, excuse me. Colin actually had eight shots already, and PSG only had four. So he has been there, but just hasn't been getting the, the chances converted. So we're looking at the... Nice stage of the Edivisi here. Both the teams just, yeah, look quite relaxed, to be honest. As Cole Palmer did manage to get that, uh, that one in, in the back of the net for Colin Deckers. Well, he may have had the chances, but he just hasn't put him to, put him to bed, has he? No. If you're not going to score the chances you get against PAs in, but he will demolish you. But how many times have we seen that already, Brandon, this season? I know you've been uh, I watching it. it. I, I played PAG yesterday as well, Renzo, I can tell you, <laughs> first hand. If you don't score against him... He will score against you. He will just keep scoring against you. 69 minutes on the clock. Erling Haaland makes it 8-2. And I think <laughs> this is just typical PAG. He was probably controlling that game, got that two-goal early lead, trying to control the game, playing it out. Then he concedes one, and he's like, no way, I'm, I'm winning this game, I'm winning this game. And right from kickoff, he does punish Colin again, getting that two-goal cushion back and uh, on track to win his individual game as well. And like you said, he will just continue scoring. But haven't we seen, during the pro open stage, Abu Maka, Anders Fergan, just being the victim of his incredible goalkeeper movement? Well, he's just such a complete player, isn't he, in so many ways? But now good he is defensively going forward, but the small intricacies, whether, as you said, there are uh, some players have a set piece that goes their way. Some people are unbelievable goalkeeper movement. Some players might just have it all. And I truly believe at the moment, PAG does think he's one of the, or if not, he is the best player in the world. I don't blame him for having that confidence. He rightfully can think so, as he is right now, if you talk internationally, the current champion of the world with the only pro open being uh, or the only competition being the pro open that has been concluded thus far this year but there's so much more to come and everybody's fighting for spots for those on the remainder of the season as PhD will be looking to maybe get a goal extra in this matchup against Colin yeah he might be on for goal number nine can I make it ten would you would you have as an objective right now Brandon to just make it double digits or is that too cocky? I don't think I'm that harsh. <laughs> but PAG it might be. You might be as Haaland. Oh, oh my. Van der Sar. Van der Sar, how have you let that go in? I can tell you that Levy right now is probably looking like, how is this guy doing this type of stuff? 
we could probably get him on board for an interview and ask him what do you think of that last goal potentially from Piers in where he shoots it from the back line and it just goes. The angle in. just looked like it was never going in. I mean, it shouldn't have gone in. This is what we think, but then Piers in does, just does think differently, and somehow he always does manage to or does manage to get those fine margins working for him. But an incredible team performance here from Ajax, 9-2 on aggregate against Heracles Almelo. That is definitely a way to put pressure on your other opponents that you might feature, uh, might meet later up. Well, if you're FC Twente, Renzo, you're looking across the board, you're going, <laughs> oh, how did Ajax like go on in their quarterfinal? I'm guessing they maybe got a good result. Oh, they won 9-2. Yeah, that's not, you, you don't, so you don't go into that matchup thinking like, oh, okay, um, he's struggling. No, they're not struggling, you know? No, no, there's no individual struggling, is there? One scored and one five one. The other one's about to win four one. Exactly. So it's not like oh Mika, for example, he won his matchup, so he could potentially be like, okay, I'm I'm feeling good today. Let me play the one that won by the well, at least the biggest margin. Uh, no, doesn't go for this uh, this current matchup. Mika and Brand have some serious work on their hands if they want to beat uh, this Ajax Amsterdam team. But Brandon, looking forward. Uh, to how this one is going to unfold as uh, what are our other quarterfinal matchups looking like? As we're, they're already setting that up and it's going to be AZ versus uh, Pex Zwolle and the other matchup is going to be PSV versus Excelsior. I'm going to be jumping into that as soon as possible after these uh, matchups. So, sorry, you caught me in a train of thought. I was I was there for you. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no worries, no worries. I was asking you. Well, I'm just gonna ask you straight up right now. Who's gonna win, PSV or Excelsior? PSV. AZ or Pex Wolle? I fancy Pex Wolle. Oh, so that's that they, would they, be a little upset. Then. They've won. They've won this tournament two times before. When you could argue. In the actual league format, they weren't that great, were they? But they came through in, in finals day, uh, and they brought a. You don't uh, want to be bringing up this one against <laughs> me, man. You don't want to be bringing this I, one. I, I know it's close <laughs> time. I know it's. But look, they came through, and they were incredible in those tournaments. Massive win, by the way. In case you missed it, for Ajax, they will be going through to take on FC Twente. But you're right, AZ Alkmaar against Pax Wall is a big, big matchup coming up. I think you're right on paper, AZ Alkmaar. You could argue maybe got the stronger of the team, but then Pax Wall. Gio Bundy, former EDVC champion, together with Fitessa, together with Levi and Manuel. I mean, and out, of the, and out of the six seasons that have already been, Pex Wolle won two of them. I mean, yeah. Um, Pex Wolle are just somehow always there. A, a, a surprising lineup every time. And like I said, Gio, he's that guy. He loves that underdog position. So, yeah, we're looking at a fantastic game up on our hands. I'm going to bring it back to Inta and Mr. Dury to see you guys in the matchup later. Right. Yes, Brandon, very interesting game. Thank you, Renzo and Brand, for that very particular and very professional commentary. We had our first game, which was uh, Levi de Weert against Vince. That was the first matchup that happened. And of course, the second one afterwards was Piagin. Maybe you can move a little bit. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, that was Piagin, of course, against uh, Colin Deckers. Interesting matchup. It was done after the first game, obviously, so it was quite hard, I think, for Colin to get back into that game as a Heracles player because you're already, was it 5 1 down? Yeah, it was f it's, it's too big of a difference, to be honest. I mean, uh, of course, yeah, kudos to, to Vince, like, trying his best. It's, it's a very difficult game to play, uh, to play against Levy, and of course, Colin having to fix this difference against. Yeah, one of the biggest players lately. I mean, come on, it's it's it's, it's impossible. And he did his best because he, he was playing pr quite well. I mean, you you we were watching it together. And it was like Colin was playing right really well, but yeah, the difference was too big. Yeah, too big of a difference, too big of a step to do a hurdle to to to, to tackle at least. Yeah. But yeah, five one down. You have to play against Piagin. I don't think that's a big present that you can get. No. What Ajax will get is of course a semi final, but a second thing too. We have, of course, the upgraded item of Carlos Forbes. Carlos Forbes, yes. 89 rated. It's going to be a monstrous card for people that enjoy using the Eredivisie, at least, uh, players. But um, as we see on screen, we are going into the second matchup that happens. And the second matchup is um, Twente Feyenoord. First game, you already called it a little bit. Yeah. Julian have to, has to be there and he has to try and keep a score. It was 2-0 to Mika. Second game. 
Brent against Tala. Tala was the guy, the man that had to do it. One nil victory wasn't enough. Yeah, talk me through it. Yeah, the thing is, like um, in overall, if, if you look at Team Twente, Brent was the was the first one uh, was actually first placed in the individual ranking in this whole season of the EDVC. He scored so many goals, and he like like he was. Individually, he was the best player of the EDVC, so you can expect a lot of him. Uh, Mika, on the other hand, is would be rated a bit lower than, compared to him, so to say. Um, so for him to start against Julian and put Brent away with 2-0 up is, is like one of the best advances, advantages you can have. And um, of course, for Tala, it's going to be really difficult to, to play Brent and actually have to win 3-0 or... It's, it's impossible to the number one in the individual ranking. I mean, Tala had quite a bit of opportunities to score. He, Definitely, uh, yeah. When I was watching him, he, he actually got to the goal. He made two big mistakes in front of goal, made a wrong decision, and eventually that's what cost him. But I think Tala did, did a great job. Um, we have to say for Feyenoord, it's not the first time that they come here and they disappoint because we have to say it like it is. For them, it's a big disappointment. Again. Um, and it's been years like this. And th there was just something missing in this team. And I can't put my finger on it because, like I said, we had it for multiple years. This is not the first year. Uh, last year, I remember, they went out to 22. Exactly. Uh, first so round as well. Yeah. Like, so the quarterfinals as well. They, they, they got out uh, against Brent as well. 6-3. So yeah, it's, it's, it's really difficult for final. I think it's, it's going to... It's going to be a mental thing as well. Like you've been thrown out of the tournament uh, in the first game last year, have to face the same opponent. You come here with a big atmosphere uh, in a players' bus, a lot of big expectations because you're final, one of the top three teams in the Netherlands. You want to be the one uh, who, who takes a trophy home for like yeah for your team because your opponents yeah like your rivals Ajax, PSV, both. Uh, the favourites for this tournament. So as final, you really want to get this trophy and being kicked out in the first round again is going to hurt for them. I think even more so, the first matchup that was going to come for them was Ajax against Feyenoord. That's yeah. a big one. And I think there, in those type of games, they have something extra. And it's quite sad that we can't see that, but on the other hand, Twente has done an amazing job. Yeah. So uh, in that case, uh, for them, it's, it's, it's obviously deserved a 2-0 victory, then a 1-0 victory. So uh, yeah, I see that we have a guest that will join there us. We go. So you can have this headset here, put it on, uh, maybe turn it around. Yeah, perfect. Put it on. Let me help you. We'll do this. Can you hear us? Uh, yeah. Cool. Loud and clear. Yeah. My name is Tadori. You have Inter next to you. We have the one and only Brent Wering. Number Welcome. One Welcome. Hmm? Number one individually, EDVC season. Mm -hmm. uh, how's that for you? Apart from this game, what's it like to like one one game less played? Like you've you've played 16 games, if yeah, I'm correct, 16. right? And you became number one individually yeah. against in the home of champions. What, what's that like? Yeah, it's a good feeling, of course. Uh, if you look against the players in the EDVC league, the way Mario Bajor, I don't think I'm one of the favorites to become number one. Yeah. But uh, I've been playing for five years. Every year I've been almost at the top, having fourth, fifth place. So if you look at that, I'm always near it. So it's good to have uh, finally won it. Yes, especially and now last year you kicked out Feyenoord. This year you've done it again. Yeah. What's it? What's it like? How do you feel against uh, for playing against? Yeah, this tough op opponent, so to say, because Talat, to mm -hmm. be honest, yeah, he's yeah. really good, especially this season. How how do you beat him? You didn't score against yeah. him, but you still won. <laughs> so basically, yeah, how do you beat him? Yeah, I, I was kind of afraid going into the game, especially if you look at Tala, he's insane this year. So yeah, I've gone into the game a little bit more defensive, yeah. and that's definitely not my play, but I do it always. And then if you go into it, he scores a goal, I've, I have some chances, but they don't go in. Yeah, and eventually, I think Tala last minute, he has a big chance. Yeah, the, sh the, yeah. the, f the first post. Yeah, 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 right. yeah right. that's, I think that's almost all the chances. I think I've played the game just uh, very boring. Yeah. I think that's the only job I had to do because Mika won and I think I've done the job all right. I have a question for you Brent. Yeah. Uh, it's been like like you said five years. Mm -hmm. This season I have a stat for you. Maybe you uh, just correct me if I'm wrong. Twente hasn't won a game if you didn't win your game. <laughs> I have no idea. If, if everything correctly, if everything, so if my memory yeah. serves me correctly, yeah. you've won every single time Twente won the matchup, um, or a draw. You never lost the game. Let me put it like no, that. No, no, I've only lost against NSA, against Munir, and we've lost that game. So, so yeah. Well, right, there you go. <laughs> just a quick one. Maybe you didn't know it yourself, but <laughs> just a quick one for you. Of course, congratulations on making it into the next round. Yes, it's, thank you. it's been a big one. Feyenoord, like we said, big team is here with a with a, with a big fan base too. Mm -hmm. 
coming into the tournament, Twente, a little bit less known in the international scene, but I think for those that follow the EDVZ, that follow the KPN EDVZ for multiple years, they will know the name of yeah, yeah, FC Twente. Of course, we've been on the finals the last three years, I think. We've uh, finished third last season. Yeah, lost against Levy De Weert uh, last year and the year before that. So it's going to be uh, not really original. So you're looking to get some revenge and, and, oh. and, actually, and actually trying to beat them? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was looking for revenge last year. It didn't go that well. But uh, I have a new chance, hopefully, this year. One more thing. Yeah. You know who you're going to face. Yeah. Now, you, you've chosen yourself. Can you give us an insight? Or is it going to be a secret until the, the matchup starts? Uh, uh, who are you going to face? Like, who are no, you going to face? I don't know the opponent, but looking at um, mm -hmm. where they're going, yeah, we are at least not changing. Okay. okay. So well. I think Ajax is also not changing. So Perfect. Thank you very That's much, Brent. Yeah. Thank, thank you for you coming on here. No and problem. best of luck. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Right, that was Brent. Yeah, Brent Wering indeed. So. Thank you very much for coming on. FC Twente, like we said, once again yep. into the semi-finals now it is already. So they yep. already guaranteed them a top four. Quite a bit of prize money too. So I've seen that uh, the prize money for this year went up once again with a total of 50,000 uh, 50, euros. I believe you're correct, yeah. So uh, we see that it's a growing thing. We have the bracket on screen once again. We know Heracles lost to Ajax 9-2, it was? 9-2, yep. And then Twente 1-2-1. That means that our next matchup will be Ajax against Twente. But before that, we'll obviously have to go to the other side of the bracket, where we have Excelsior against PSV and AZ against Pek Zwolle. Yeah. It's going to be a very interesting one. Um, last time, it's it's pretty interesting. So, like in the EDVZ, um, your ranking in the, the standings, they um, they give you the opportunity to choose your opponent during the EDVZ finals. So Ajax chose Heracles, and PSV actually chose Excelsior. Um, so in this case, it's really weird because their matchup in this season, um, they only won three to two against Excelsior. So it's yeah, it wasn't a very easy easy game against them so I'm, I'm really wondering why did they choose Excelsior as their opponent did they choose Excelsior as their opponent or did they choose for the person that comes to the playoffs because obviously that we didn't explain yet yeah but the structure of the tournament yeah at least this tournament was every single team will play against one another so we have a normal round of Robin where then uh, the fourth period periodic champion sorry which was Ajax mm -hmm. we had uh, PSV obviously Heracles yeah. and then Peck Swallow. Those yes. were the four periodic champions. Then next to that, we have, of course, the first three in the ranking that aren't periodic champions. Yep. And then after that, we have the position seven, I think it was, until 12. That was, I think it even was uh, eight because of the... the um, periodic champions, yeah. Yeah, periodic champions. It was eight until 15, I believe. And they play a playoff together. Yeah. And then Excelsior came out on top. Yeah. So, so I think PSV was in the mindset there from, okay, Listen, they have to do an extra tournament to get here. Mm. They will be tired. They won't have the best feeling going into that because you had to go through like a playoff round. Let's take them. It could be. We, we could ask them uh, maybe yeah. after the match, definitely. Um, but still, yeah, it's an interesting matchup to, to like think of how are they going to play each other? Because if I'm, if I'm correct, let me just check that to be real. Um, Manuel beats Milan. 2 0. Okay. So, and I've got it here. Uh, Tico led 2 0 against Emre, and Emre scored in the last minute against him to win it. So, otherwise, they would have lost points. They wouldn't have become uh, a champion. Exactly. Yeah. So, in this case, yeah, it, it was a very tough game, and uh, it was, I, I believe it was a corner for Emre as well, which we've seen quite a lot here already. Corners. Erling <laughs> Haaland. Exactly. Yeah, that's the thing. So I'm, I'm really uh, curious to see on how they're going to face each other. Definitely. Yeah. So, yeah. It's going to be an interesting matchup, of course, that is coming up later on. Um, there's another game too. So obviously we have two games that are playing. Pek Swallow will play. So Pek Swallow was my favorite going into it in some sort. Why? Because I need an underdog. I need a dark horse <laughs> to get in on stage you and perform. On, you were put under pressure by boss. <laughs> yeah. I, I will not say yes, obviously, because otherwise <laughs> he's watching this and he's going to come for my ass. So they are going to play Pek Zwolle. He's going to play Azit Alkumar. Yes. Azit Alkumar, also a pretty strong team. Uh, obviously, PSV might be in this bracket side, the, the strongest team with Emre Yilmaz and, and Manu yep. Bacore. World champion Manu Bacore. Next to him, E-Champions League winner in Emre Yilmaz. Yes. So they might have, like, the biggest names. But when you look at, like, the longevity of Danny Visser, he already won an e Divisi champion back in the days. I think it was for the Graafschap. Yeah, 2018, if I'm correct. Yeah, against uh, Brian Hessing. Yeah, so he old Heracles. Yes. And then next to, uh, next to them we have, um, of course, um, Pex who's going to play. But we have Giovanni, Gio. 
Jill has been around quite a bit. He's done well in the e Champions League too. He went into the knockout stages even in London, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, uh, yeah. He, he did a pretty good job. So in that case, I think that we are still looking at players that are undervalued in the market. They are not being seen as like those big players that could like make it happen. But for me personally, these are the players that we have to watch out for because on their day, they can beat Levy De Witt, they can beat Page Zin, they can beat Manu Bacho and they can beat Emre Yilmaz. If they lose a game against them, yeah, it's theirs to lose. Yeah, yeah, of course, the pressure's on for the big names because they've got the international titles, everyone's talking about them. But looking individually as mm. well, Daikis has had an amazing season this year. Yeah, he's been uh, he's been he's been hard carrying out almost say the Pex Solo team. Uh, but this is the thing for me personally. Now is more of a warm up game for all of them because they are warming up for the game against PSV or the game against Ajax. That's like mentally where they are. Like this is the moment that I have to show myself. Yeah, it can well, be dangerous. Exactly because you have to win. You, it's just you're out if you don't win you're out it's, it's easy as that that's it that's i love tournaments right there um but the thing is like uh, with danny fisser experience w would you say he's like the favorite for the the matchup between azet and pex Wolle? i wouldn't necessarily say favorite but i would say that he has a big influence on the team uh, he's been around for a while now he's a content creator too on the side so he's very much involved into EAFC and into like gaming so in my personal opinion he's still there to show himself and show what he can do and the fact that he's here in these finals and other teams like in Danny Hagebuk for example who didn't make it in here also a big household name within the yep. KPN e Divisie well Damien as well Damien with Schitt, who, yeah last year he was a champion so yep. for me personally I think there's a lot of players that are missing um, so at that point I think they deserve to be there and it's up to them to now show that it wasn't just a lucky shot yeah. but that they can perform at the highest stage when the lights are on them when the screens are flickering when everything is against them oh, that's you bring the it moment. so well you bring it so well that's the moment <laughs> when you have to stand up because that's what champions are made of yep and like I said once again we have plenty of champions in this tournament so uh, yeah it's incredible we are uh, i hear that there's still some things happening behind us of course there's All a right. dutch stream too yeah we have the english stream um they are doing some uh, awards right now so maybe we'll di d dive into that one too but um i can hear that we have an assist of the season so about that let's drop that next matchup that's gonna happen we already talked about those if we go back to the previous matchups we had ajax like we said against heracles first game can go a little bit more in depth about that. Yep. First game was uh, PHN playing, no, Levy de Weert, sorry, playing yep. against Finns. How hard is it for you? Because then I need your expertise in this one. <laughs> How hard is it when your back is against the wall, you're 5 1 down for Colin to come in and, yeah, deliver, do something? Yeah, well, um, there's a reason I, I don't compete. Well, we're standing here, those big players are competing right there on the stage. Thing is, um, it's a very, very big mental mental game as well. Like, you see in the big players, the differences between what they can do is not that big. Like, 70%, I believe, I've talked to a lot of 70% is mental in these stages, yeah. in these games. Good. And um, that was not my strongest point, to be honest. <laughs> that was, I, I can assure you, um, I actually, I entered that tournament when I won the one. Um, and I entered like, okay, I'll be out in the semi-finals. I already had something scheduled, like uh, an appointment. And I was like, okay, you know what? I, I'm going to be in time. And then I just got through because there was no pressure on me. And I think for these guys, it's going to be, especially with Chris, who's very young still. Danny is still very young, uh, very experienced, but still very young. Um, same goes for uh, yeah, Geo's. I think Geo's the oldest of all out of the four. Could and be. Could be. Yeah. So yeah, it, it, I think these things they all matter. But in the end, it's all about who's yeah, who's bringing their A game into these uh, into these EDVC finals. And I'm very curious to see what it's going to turn out into. Yes, we saw once again the bracket. New games are going to be. I see that the players are handing behind us. You can see it there too. They are standing ready to do the walk on. It's going to be intense once again. These are the intense games. Finals, of course, yeah, that's your summon. But at that point, I feel like you're in some way. Something's happening. There Whoa. we go. Yeah. Stuff is happening. <laughs> wow. Back to the Coming on. A uh, lot of fans right next to us here. They're all are, fans. Those are the Alvin Alkmaar fans right next to us. We <laughs> couldn't even hear ourselves. So it's going to get loud. Definitely. It's going to get loud. That we already know. So 
household name like I said, Danny, uh, Danny Vincent. Yeah. And he brought some fans and the noise. A lot of them. On. A lot of them right next to us. <laughs> I let you take the first game in town. Right. Chris against Daikis. Chris has been a talent for Team Gullet for a long time. Yeah, I think he was scouted when he was 13 years old, and that's incredible. Even in this scene, all the talents, that are, they are quite young. Uh, Levy started when he was really young as well, but Chris was one of the youngest, I believe. 13 years old. I think he's only 16 or 17 now, and he's competing on these big stages already, internationally as well. Uh, I think since this year, not sure, d due to age? Well, six, the, the, the year you turn 16, only the tournaments after that you can qualify. Exactly. So I think it's going to be for next year for Chris. Next year even, yeah. So that's the thing. Like, it's, it's going to be very interesting. Daikis is, is yeah. I, I personally haven't seen a lot of him, so I'm really, really interested in how he's going to be playing. And of course, Danny against the winner of the next E-Talent for Team Hullet as well. So uh, they, they all have they all have the similar background because yeah. I know Gio, I know I know of course um, Danny. They are they are friends. They are yeah. friends yeah. outside of the scene uh, when they're not playing against one another. They are friends. They can hang around. They can have a chat. They talk about FIFA. They talk about EAFC. We talk about football in general. So yeah. everything is there. But now they have to face one another, and there's gonna be there's gonna be a result already done. So yeah. there's gonna be a heartbreak once again in this game. I think it's gonna be a very tough one because you know that you're playing against friends, you know, against people that you know for a long time. Who are you in that? Me personally, I'm the one. <laughs> I don't really like to play. I uh, sorry, I can't hear you. No, it's still funny. You see, PSV did a run up. PSV against Excelsior. Next game up. Emre We have Manu Bachur against Tico. It's going to be interesting. I'm going to show it to Brandon and Renzo. They're going to be commentating over this game whilst the players are getting ready. I hope you're all good, Brandon. I hope you enjoyed our we're good, we're analysis. Good. The games are about to set off. The games are about to start. We have, of course, PSV against Excelsior. Yeah, just go for it, gents. Give us your insights. Let us lift this game and uh, just feel amazing. Thank you very much, lads. Thank you very much, Hakeem and Inter. And yes, we are back on the comms with me and Renzo, guiding you through what is going to be another fantastic set of quarterfinals. We can only hope, Renzo, they live up to potentially, I'd say, what the other quarterfinals did. I'm not on about the Ajax game, because Ajax won 9-2 and they run away with it, but that FC20 game was pretty tightly contested. And in another day, we could be sitting here saying that Feyenoord may have been going through, because they were really close in that second leg. On another day, for sure, but not on this day uh, it is, Brandon. But let's see if we can see some thrillers right now, some 90-minute moments that can put you on the edge of your seat again in this matchup. And I think so. We might be um, seeing that in this particular matchup, uh, Brandon. PSV Eindhoven, Emre Yilmaz facing off against Excelsior, which is Luke Weidefeld and Tycho, who are, well, some of those Dark horses that you might have not considered before the season started. Oh, Van der Sar! He just pulled out a miracle save there. But Vandrado getting in there. Emre Yilmaz, as we know, has had already a great start to his year. Didn't do enough to get himself that all-important top four finish in the FC Pro Open. He is non-stop! Five in. minutes in! And he's already got a goal of Erling Haaland. He was just knocking on the door, corner after corner, header after header. And it was at some point in that, Van der Sar has had to hold his hands up and say, I can't do anymore. I mean, we're four minutes in and I've seen four headers on target, Brandon. Emre definitely not holding back in this EDVC final matchup against Excelsior. Uh, Luke Weideveld, I think, hasn't even touched the ball yet, Brandon. And he's already facing uh, a 1-0 deficit. Well, quickly, we'll jump over to this game now. We are seeing AZ Alkmaar take on Pex Wall. Two-time Edivise champions. What's more interesting here is how the Edivise often works, Renzo, is because the man who won the Edivise for Pex Wall sits on the opposite side for AZ Alkmaar. He's not playing in this game. 
but he will be in the, in the next game. Chris De Ball up against. You mean Dani Fisser? What's what I mean? It was at the, at the, at the Graafschap, it was. But it, it doesn't matter. You have Gio, who is a former EDVC champion on the Pex Wola squad right now, but he will be facing Dani Fisser in that uh, next matchup as Daiki's here is building up with Foden, reaching that back line, but just a heavy touch, and Yashin is able to collect it. Uh, and Brandon, I can tell you, Azad Alakmar and Pax Wolle, they've brought uh, some audience with them. Dani Fizzer has a group of at least 50 friends that are supporting him today right next to us. So watch out for some screams whenever they score. As I think on the other pitch that we switched off from, we've seen a goal. Maybe we can quickly jump back into that one to show because it's something that I've seen before today, Brandon. Um, yeah, there's been another goal in the uh, sorry the PSV game, similar to the IX game. It's a second goal from Ray Yilmaz. We'll be able to show you it. We'll try to, but I think we've just missed the replay there. We're going to stay with this one for now. But the point I'm trying to make is Danny Visa did he did win the Divisa Pexwell. It was at the Graafschap. <laughs> they have the it's same the they have the same colours. As we can see here, Emre Yilmaz once again that near post corner with uh, with Erling Haaland scoring that one um, just like in the fourth minute. Emre Yuma's not holding back a single moment against Luke Weidefeld, who has a huge, huge task on his hands. But indeed, Danny Fizzer did win the oh, Division Championship, but oh, it is the Graafschap. The stripes are like yeah, it, just it, the it other way around. It caught me off there. <laughs> no, no worries. These are hor horizontal and the other ones are vertical. But as we can see, Chris de Boer here getting into dangerous space with Palmer and Mbappe. Just a good defensive interception from Tom Dijkies. For Tom Dijkies. What opportunity this is for him to go and show what he can do on the main stage. Yeah, it's just uh, another player, uh, Brandon. That, have you heard of him before? Not outside of the Netherlands. Someone that's in the eSports. Like I said, there's just a couple of players this season in the Eredivisie thus far that have been doing incredibly well. Um, that even in the Netherlands were not that heard of yet. And that's Tom Dijkies. This is... What I mentioned before, Luke Weidefeld and Tycho on the Excelsior side as well. As Chris is... Oh, and we just switched. That was a huge moment, I think, for Azet. Well, they just scored. AZ Alcamar just scored. Chris De Boer is up by a goal to nil over in that game. As, as we, we see jump here. back to it now, this is what we missed. And this is the group of fans that have been uh, enjoying everything that AZ Alcamar have been doing right in the final third. But for Chris De Boer... That was a, a clear-cut chance for Haaland there. Ball roll against the keeper. The keeper didn't go to the ground there, but in the end, the angle was just just there for uh, Erling Haaland to put that in the near post. And yeah, we saw a brief view there of um, of that supporting group of Dani Fisser, who's up in that second leg. And I wonder, <laughs> is that going to be a positive energy for him, or is he going to get a little nervous in that one, Brandon? Especially if Chris De Boer is going to put him up in, well, Looking at this is now a 1-0. Well, oh, Chris lead. De Boer, someone that you know quite well. Yeah, I know sure. that. I, 13 I, years of age, he was scouted by a certain esports organisation. That uh, we have heard of before, but yeah, indeed, uh, Chris De Boer. Yeah. And it's his first Edevise final, so for him to be one up in this game, he is uh, he's looking confident. 35 minutes on the clock over there. We are taking you through this one, though. Excelsior, Rotterdam, 2-0 down against Emre Yilmaz of PSV. As it puts it out wide here with KDB. Again, looking for Haaland there at the back post. Ramirez trying to challenge Haaland and then there another cross. How on earth is Edmund Natal stop that? <laughs> Probably and should have been a goal. That for sure it should have been 34 minutes in and Luke Weidefeld still is in the game because huh, being 3-0 down against Emre that early could definitely put you into a bad position in this overall matchup as you have Manu Bachur in that second leg for Tijo. Well, you could argue, Renzo, Emre Yilmaz is one of the few players that hasn't had this trophy next to his name yet. Nope. Levy has, Manu has. It's only his second season, to be fair. First season, he uh, did uh, did play um, at AZ last year. And but he's not been in the, in, in the finals. No, because they didn't make the finals. In the end, they, uh, they lost in the playoffs. And yeah, it was uh, quite heartbreaking. But then again, Emre Yumas has just, yeah, risen up the charts as quickly as ever. And, yeah, thus far, Manu and Levy have been around a little bit longer yet. But he will definitely be looking today to get that 
trophy on his hands together with Manu and um, yeah, the reigning e Champions League champion will definitely try to book his tickets for that tournament as well. You know, his consistency has been crazy. I mean, his story is ridiculous. Fremre Yilmaz of how he was discovered all that time ago. Wasn't he just found playing like online seasons uh, or something it, like this? He was playing career mode. He was playing <laughs> career mode. How did you get spotted as being a good pro from playing career mode? Nah, so the guy was playing career mode up until like FIFA 21. Um, and a year later, he started playing Ultimate Team. And that's where he was a player that was recognized up on the Division Rivals charts. And we just interviewed him with Team Khalid and as we see a chance here for Luke, but he was just a special player attacking wise. He could do things that, yeah, I can't even explain properly myself if I look back to it. And yeah, here he is. It was like two years later that he managed to get an e Champions League title, yep. top four at the World Cup, top four at the Pro Open, just in two years. I think as well, like, he's been at every World Cup since he's been playing. He's been so consistent, Emre Yilmaz, as we said, looking to qualify for the e Champions League through this tournament to go back there and try and defend his crown once again. He leads by two goals nil at the moment in this game against Excelsior. I mean, and his teammate, Manny Bashore, eh? you could just see him over our shoulder, over your shoulder there. He's waiting in the background, ready to get going as well. I mean, for him, he'll openly come out and say that there was moments this season where he wasn't feeling overly confident with his, with his game and his play style and maybe... Has that changed in recent weeks? Is he, is he feeling more confident coming into this? I think... I'm not sure if he put out a tweet as well, but uh, one, during one of the match days... in the He EDC, did. He said that he was probably at his, yeah, his worst his performance. His worst performance ever. Yeah. And uh, he wasn't uh, even a special player in the Netherlands anymore. He considered himself... So He's we a world champion! Yeah. He, was the re he is the reigning world he champion. Is. And even fresh reigning world champion uh, back then. So, yeah, obviously we work with him at Team Khalid and right now I'm telling you Manu is back almost at his prime level. Do you so think I him being him. world champion just gave him expectations that maybe in his own mind somehow beyond him? Obviously we've talked a lot about this, uh, me working narrowly with, with Manu and um, yeah, he, Manu is the type of guy that will never admit it initially but afterwards looking back at it and I could tell as well um, he did manage to um, almost talk to himself and tell himself that okay yeah it it might be affecting me so how can i actually get rid of that uh way that it affects me in a negative way and i think that's what he managed to find right now together working with uh with us as well and yeah I, like i said manu recently he's been looking very good he's been looking very good so i have pretty high expectations of him but i don't want to jinx him obviously no commentators curse hopefully not no nope. pex well one nil down in this game it's all to do with the build-up here. As you will see, plenty of times as everybody today will be playing a 4-3-2-1 and switching from fullback to fullback, trying to get into those dangerous positions is Tom Dykes uh, through the wing. And like we've seen, so that's uh, an incredible pass, but we will be switching back to... Oh, that's uh, a fortunate bounce there for Pele from uh, Luke Weidefeld, but... Then again, he will take it any day as we see quite a situation happening here. That's incredible from, uh, from Chris there, realizing that he should try to clear that with R1 square, managing to uh, still ha get a hold of the ball with his right back as well. Well, there's been a goal back. Excelsior have pulled a goal back in that game. It's 2-1 overall. Not right now. Luke Weidevelt. Of a big goal back against Emre Yilmaz. Remember, there's still a second leg to be played here if you're not familiar with the Divise format for the finals. It's an aggregate scoreline, two players per team. Both games on the PlayStation. Just an aggregate scoreline coming together to determine a winner. There could be a, uh, a second goal in the game for AZ Alkamar there. Defended well. And Chris De Boer is trying to do all he can for his teammate Danny Vizup, former Divise champion. Didn't play last year in the competition, looking to get back to where he knows he can. And as we jump back, if we can, to PSV, there's been a goal there. Yeah, as Dyke is still here, working a slow build-up. But once we get there, we can show you something that has happened in that PSV Excelsior game. This was the 2-1. We saw it earlier, Pele getting that fortunate bounce for him. And like we said, there has been another goal, but we're trying to get that one to you shortly as Christopher right now 
in cruise control, 1-0 up, trying to get maybe a better position for Dani Fisser, but certainly not trying to concede and put him into an equal position for that next game. As we see here, that goal from Emre Yilmaz, it was Haaland getting his hat-trick, Brandon. How many goals are we expecting of this man today? Uh, um, on average. <laughs> probably 50 plus. 50. <laughs> on average. On average, rate. okay, per game. He's got to be on about two a game. Uh, about two Minimum. a game. Minimum. He is fantastic. Definitely a team of the year item that you will see in any squad being used today by these gentlemen as they are able to use four team of the year items or icon items and apart from that it's just free of choice just personal preference brandon we'll see rolfo we'll see milita we'll see lucio company van dijk anything and even on the midfield you will see a lot of different options but usual suspects are going to be r9 and erling Haaland. yeah you'd be silly not to back them players with the quality they're able to show PSV, 20 minutes away from a 3-1 lead. That's definitely it's a be result. them going into a semi-final if, of course, they can win their second leg. Well, they'll be having Manny Bashaw take the sticks. As Emre on that right-hand side. It's just turning and twisting. You saw Haaland there again and a back post, but didn't choose this time to go for it. As there might be a dangerous attack here from Luke Weidefeld. Cut back, Haaland. Finds Mbappe, looks to go one-on-one. -on -one. Still building nicely, Pele, Alex Mateus, got a step overs, there's the shot! Penalty! That's an interesting call from the referee. Let's jump into it now. Penalty, We're big chance for Excelsior. Pele steps up, scores, game completely changes again. 3-2 it is. Pele getting his second one for the team. And it is a... Well, it's, it's one of those as well, Renzo. You, you, you get the shot away, and sometimes the referee plays on because you've had a shot. But the tackle came in after the shot, yep. pulled it back for a penalty, just like that. Looked straight back into this one. Probably tripped over. Emery Yumas did try to block that one, press the standing tackle, and yeah, the call gets given. Sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. Bit of fortune for Excelsior here, but then again, you could have argued that the initial shot could have gone in as well. Emery Yilmaz 3-2 up still. Nothing to worry about but trying to find that fourth one to set up Manuel with a two-goal cushion for sure. Well, we'll stay with this one for the last 13 minutes. Emre Yilmaz looking to add another goal onto his tally. Quadrado Hullet. finds a couple of defenders into the midfield. It's Hullet with a shot from distance. We're going to conclude this one just to close out the game. Big chance for PSV as they just miss a corner. They'll have another corner there. Any time in this one, looks like Chris De Boer has done his job right. It's his first time in an of visa. Was there an equaliser? What a save! Out for a corner. Van der Sar. Or Yashin, sorry. Tom Dyke, he's so close. He's, how's he, he's asking for a corner. I don't blame him. Full-time result there. Let's jump back across. If we can, PSV. Excelsior. That's a full-time result there. It's an important 1-0 win. Remember, it's a two-legged game, so still another leg to be played. But Emre Yilmaz fancies another one. Ooh, we couldn't even we couldn't even see where that shot ended, Brandon. That was an incredibly powerful shot from R9 that just went wide, I assume. We couldn't tell so, but judging the scoreboard, it probably did. As uh, yeah, that was a crazy moment in the end at the Paxola game as well. That could be huge to determine who's going to go into that semi-final as Dani Fisser and Gio still will fight in that second leg against each other with a 1-0 aggregate score in the favor of Azad Alkmaar. But right now, Luke Weidefeld still has at least one more chance in this game, 87 minute, trying to put the equalizer in and Emre Yilmaz just trying to hold on to that lead as it's Alfonso Davies here, switching to fellow Mandy. Mandy on the right-hand side, trying to cut in, maybe find a cross, as he does so. Mbappe to Haaland, and it's intercepted quite well. So Emre maybe still has something left in this game. Plus two, Brandon, so there is still time. Well, any time to come in from what could have been and should have been a, a comfortable two-goal cushion. Tremme Yilma has to take into his second leg for his teammate, Manu Bishaw. After a, 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 a penalty decision that he won't be too happy about. He's now in this situation where it's only a one-goal cushion and there is no reason why not 
the Excelsior can't go and give Manu Bashore a really tough game when he's going to have the pressure on his shoulders. Of course. But then again, Manu Bashore, reigning world champion. Yeah, he's a world champion. If he's in the lead, you expect him to get you guys into that semi-final. You, you expect him to. But you in that game as well, who's the player with more to lose? Uh -huh, yeah. It's Manu Bashor. He's, he's, got, he's got more pressure on his shoulders. If you have just tuned in, this is the Capien Edivise finals. We are here in Amsterdam with a live crowd. 14,000 euros on the line. Four Champions League, each Champions League tickets and two tickets to this year's FC Pro uh, World Open finals as well. This is the bracket as it currently stands. In case you missed what happened earlier today, Ajax won nine goals to two in their quarterfinal matchup up against Herakles, and then it was a, a very narrow 2-1 win for FC Twente, knocking out Feyenoord. So it'll be Ajax against FC Twente in our first semi-final. And then what we're waiting to do is conclude our second legs to find out who will be the final four teams there. As we said, if we're going by the book here, Renzo, I think many people would sit back watching from home and say, Ajax PSV, that's your grand final. Just from experience, talent, trophies, players that, that play outside of the Netherlands. But... We've seen upsets and we've seen shocks in our time. Of course, every EDFC final, I think there's been an upset in some form, in some manner. And last year, it might have been the first one that everybody was like, oh, okay, yeah, I actually, that's a grand final, makes sense. But up until that, that date, that was always a surprise. We saw the crazy run back in the days, FIFA, uh, it was FIFA 22, where Vitesse, uh, got to that championship, but NEC, Damien Sitaram, you know him, Dame Sheet, he got up to that day feeling a different person if you compare it to the regular season, got his team to the finals, went to the playoffs, went to the world championship, and that's something that you might be looking at by this bracket and you think, maybe Pax Hola can do something like that today. Yeah. Maybe Excelsior can do something like that today. Yeah. And still, Twente. They could cause an yeah. upset against Ajax. Well, the reason I'm looking down here is PSV have only ever been to an Edivise final once. A grand final once. Yep. It was the first ever year of this competition back in 2018. Ajax, on the other hand, have been to four of the six grand finals. They've not necessarily won them all, but they've always been in that last match, that big last match. And especially as there's been a bit of a gap since they last won an Edivise, for them, I feel like there's a... You know, they came so close last year, obviously Finn and Levy... Since then, P.A. Zin's come onto the books now. He's now basically pretty much living in Europe. I mean, he would be because he's involved in pretty much every single competition there is. <laughs> I did say to him yesterday, I went, when are you going back to Brazil? And he went, well, it depends how well I do in this tournament because he could, you know, if, if there was a World Rx didn't make a grand final, he basically could go back into the World Championship. But if he does do well and make a grand final, he's got any Champions League to play in May, so he might as well just stay in the Netherlands. I mean, he's almost uh, becoming a, Dutch, a Dutchman, a fellow Dutchman. He's starting to learn the language as well, so he should, he should. And he doesn't really like the weather, so he will probably get to... I've been to uh, Brazil in the last couple of weeks, I can agree with him. He will grab any chance to just <laughs> jump back to Brazil, get his, uh, himself on that plane. But yeah, for sure, uh, so much at stake here today, Brandon, and... You do not actually know that Levy, since he actually went into competitive uh, EAFC, competitive FIFA, yeah. he hasn't missed an EDVC finals to date. Three but, years. But in a only row. one time missing the actual final of the EDVC finals. Well, three years. In the last three years, Levy De Vier has been in the grand final yes, of actually. the EDVC. Um, unfortunately, he's only won one of them. And I mean, you can speak more <laughs> on this because you were his teammate. Oh, come on. You... Back in 2021. <laughs> This man was playing in the Divise, he's in a grand final. I'm not ridiculing you, Lorenzo. I'm actually saying you made a grand final. True, 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 true that. And, and actually, you also won it the year after. As a coach. Yeah, but you still won it, all right? <laughs> yeah, you still true, won it. True, that's it, that's it. But like, then again, um, a young, talented Levy De Vier just being an incredible player back then, evolving to one of the best in the world as of now, paired up with PhD, like I said, they are definitely the favorites but focusing on what we have on our hands right now it is Peck Swole, Danny Fisser against Gio Bundy but come back what a save at the top Woo. already Gio Bundy giving us a little taster of what we can expect to see from him in this game he's quite an experienced player isn't he Gio Bundy he is he was actually part of that Fitessa squad as well Brandon so he knows what it is to be on this stage and uh, to actually become an EDVs champion back then being that third player, but also being very important throughout the regular season from Vitesse. And Giulio Bundy, I said this before when we were backstage, Brandon, that guy loves an underdog role position. And I bet you 
that he is feeling that same way right now, uh, whilst knowing that he, on, based on quality, really isn't. Well, we've got an update in the other game. If we can go to after this attack does come in from... Danny Fisser. Danny Fisser of AZ Alkamar. There's Haaland! And there's two! The crowd Fischer's goes wild. The crowd on the fee. It is two goals to deal. Danny Fisser extends the lead of AZ Alkamar. They were over the moon about it. If we can jump across to the other game very quickly, we'll give you an update there because there has been a goal. There has been a goal between PSV. And Brandon, I'm just, I think we should start counting how many times this Erling Haaland is actually going to score. Because when we're jumping back in to this replay, we can see Manuel Bacho Oh, that is a beautiful scoop turn with Erling Haaland getting that goal. And we said it, two, two goals on average per game. I'm counting. We're 10 minutes in. He's already scored on both fields. Well, we said that Manny Bashaw would probably come into this with more to lose. He started the game off perfectly. Lovely scoop turn into the finish. It's a 3-2, sorry, it's a 4-2 lead now. It's a two-goal cushion again for PSV Eindhoven, who are looking to get themselves into a semi-final. The winner of that game will play the winner of this one, which at the moment looks like it's going to be AZ Alkamar. Still early, two-goal cushion is definitely something that you would like to see if you're Danny Fisser and Mondi here. Look at Furlough, Look Mendy at him. Run past one or two, fakes a power shot, a couple of ball rolls inside. It's a case of where this ball's going to end up. Uh -oh. He's just desperately lofted the ball into the box, looking for Haaland. That's a little... Just misses him. That was a little... Uh, yeah, a little, a little bit too obvious to just try and go for that cross. He had so much space there to work with. But Gio Bundy, right now, what can you give uh, to us as he puts it out wide to Sasha Bui, I believe that is. The recently transferred right back to Bayern Munich. Ronaldo. Back to the Bruyne, and this is Gio Bundy faking a couple of player locks there. Going to use one of them into Hullet. Well defended. Player lock, such a helpful tool, isn't it? There'll be people at home that haven't added it into their game, Renzo. Why is it so important to add it into your game? Because it, you don't necessarily have to use it. It's more of just playing mind games with your opponent. The player locking ability just offers you so much uh, freedom and creativity, and also... You might notice throughout the, uh, the day when you're watching these defensive sequences, you can also defend with it. Sometimes you notice that you might lose that arrow jewel and people will pass it from that header that you can already press player lock, select a different player to maybe intercept that pass. So it just adds a lot of creativity even on the defensive uh, side. And obviously offensively, you can constantly cancel it um, by pressing player lock again when you already performed it. It just adds for so much creativity uh, to the game. One well, of many things that will set you from your opponent, whether it's casually or you'll see from these pro players here in the Netherlands. We have got a goal in the other game. PSV, Excelsior, Rotterdam. There's been a goal back in that game. We'll let you know which way it's gone. It's actually gone the way of Excelsior, Renzo. And the gap again is... It's closed down. It's a massive goal from Tiger. Just a brilliant work goal and a good finish as well. Just uh, Alexia Puteas putting uh, Excelsior and Tico back into this game for sure. Because we're only 20 minutes in, one goal deficit. As Pexola will be trying to do the same in this one. But it's well defended once again by Dani. He's just going to control the pace of the game here for sure. Trying to put a couple of switches from left back to right back. Finding Fulham on the air in some space. And Tony Kroos, who has that long ball pass plus play style, which effectively used here. Getting that ball out wide to Quadrado. Like I said, Dani Fisser controlling the pace, being patient with build up. But then this is a rash pass. And Brandon Haaland, is he going to get another one? Well, just we very quickly, Pex Wally has got an attack. But in the meantime, PSV have just scored another one. Manny Bashaw. Making it 5-3. The two-goal cushion has been reinstated again by the current world champion. There's an attack over here. Now, AZ Alkmaar looking to go 3-0 up. And we've seen that goal before, but this time it was Ruud Gullit on the back post. That back post cross, ladies and gentlemen, back home. If you want to know how to score goals in EAFC, well, you got it all being displayed right here as we jump back to that. Excelsior first PSV Eindhoven. Manu Bachor. Brought back that two-goal cushion that Emre initially initiated when he fired two back home in 10 minutes against Axel Sure. Ended up 3-2 overall now. 5-3 on aggregate. 
This is PSV leading against Excelsior. Matos switches to the play from Tigo. There's the flick on. Compelle turn. He didn't fancy going on his own. And Bappo might instead. Goalkeeper movement was teased. Went back into the box. Quadrado. Quadrado getting up Might have been the tallest player on the pitch, Renzo. But just did enough there to clear the ball away. For sure isn't the tallest one. But he can definitely jump. Well defended in the end. It's always uh, hard raising moments. Hard beat raising moments for uh, Manu there. When that ball goes up in the air. As he has been scoring them. Himself as Quadrado right now. Just All the time with the Quadrado there, just to... No pressure. Take a few more yards up the pitch. Pep Guardiola would like to see that for sure. Inverted wing back. But now out wide, Quadrado trying to maybe put in a cross again. Finding a pass to KDB. Well, De Bruyne. Mbappe, Manu oh, He should have scored that one, really, shouldn't he? Yeah, that was uh, just the wrong choice. Wrong corner, wrong choice, wrong moment. Haaland had so much time there as well. Could have taken a touch, could have done anything, but chose to shoot first time. And um, the goalkeeper movement was there from Tico in the correct corner in this case. Well, we're currently in the half time between Azi Alcabar and Pex Wally. Still two goals to nil for Azi Alcabar. Danny Visser against Gio Bundy in the second leg there in our other quarter final. This is the match we're staying with for the time being. Excelsior Rotterdam looking to cause a big upset, you could argue, of trying to beat this PSV side. They've got two goals that they need, though. Every time that Tigo has pulled a goal back, Manny Bashore has just done enough to reinstate a two-goal cushion again and again and again. Indeed it is, and that was a brilliant tackle from Virgil, getting Manu that possession, that so valued last attack of the half as he's working his way from left to right, just yeah, slowing down the play running down the clock as it is 45th minute right now that means Manu has the chance to get maybe a goal but lose possession but there Goretzka was just in time for Manu to intercept that uh, counter-attacking possibility from uh, from Tijo as we jump back to uh, the, the other game still 2-0 Paxwell yet to score in this matchup against Azad Alkmaar Trying to do so through Ferlon Mendy is Gio Bundy. Again, so much space, isn't he, with Ferlon Mendy. He's got so much pace as well. It's just who's in the box to get onto the end of it. You don't want Mbappe in that moment. You know who you're looking for, and it's someone who's a little bit taller. Yes, indeed. And I feel like some players are lacking a bit of creativity right now when they get into these spaces, just trying to maybe overplay these crosses a little bit too much. Let's see what happens in the remainder of these games, but definitely need to come up with something better than that. As we saw, both Dani and Gio desperately trying to put in crosses from that back post, uh, to in that back post. Massive switch of play again. Switches the ball all the way around, Mbappe is he onside, he was. Ooh. It's a big win back via company and Goretzka. And that we have another goal in our other game of Excelsior Rotterdam got a goal back against PSV, or has it gone the other way? And have they extended their lead? By well, another one, we'll show you the goal as soon as we can. This is what's happened. It's PSV that have actually gone three goals to the good. 6-3 they lead, and it came through this moment here. We said, how many goals is Erling Haaland going to score, Enzo? <laughs> um, we said average of two a game. It might be three at this point. It might be three. It might be four. Who knows? But... It was a brilliant work goal, and this is what I mean. We need some more creativity. Let's see if Dani Fisa can display that as well. Alexia, Mbappe, Ruth Khalid, power shot, cancel. Brilliant scoop turn, but didn't get the shot off in time. Just sending him all of these sort of forced triggers, isn't he, Dani Fisa? Yes, he is, and he's definitely feeling it right now. But Gio, the massive switch of play once again. Getting Fulham Mundi in some space, but this is a big interception from Quadrado, as there's a lot of space on that right-hand side. Yeah, Not massive. Look at Haaland on the far inside side of your screen. If he wanted to somehow switch it back across, you might see it now. There's the big switch from Lucio into Quadrado. You there can just see Haaland has just tucked in ever so slightly. Pexwell keeps possession in a bay here. 23 minutes away we are from losing two more teams in this year's Edeviso Grand Finals. There's Haaland, flicks it back on, we'll twist, we'll turn, we'll get a goal back. Great time as well. There's still 21 minutes on the clock in this one. He knows he's going to get chances. And he may have just made this one into a really entertaining 
quarter final. And it's another important role for Haaland as he managed to get that knockdown first of all. And yeah, just one more pass. And it's an easy finish just like that. As we did say so, right now, we can hear, maybe hear it in back. Dani Fissus is getting these fans right now supporting Hype, him. Hyped up. Hyped up, chanting for him. But he knows he has everything to lose, 20 minutes to go. How would that affect you, Brandon? Well, you, feel, just, a bit, you feel a bit bad because they've, they've all traveled out to support you, haven't they? You don't want to lose. You don't want to give this away, especially when you were 2 now up 20 minutes to go. This is the worst moment. I can tell you as being a, a previous, uh, well, a pro player myself, this is the worst thing that can happen to you when you want to concede a, a goal with a two-goal cushion. 70 minutes. It's exactly the time that you want to score if you're chasing the game. Because now you know, okay, 10 minutes of regular play, 10 minutes of pressure play, and then it's game on still. As we can see, Gio starting to believe in himself right now as well. He's certainly building up. You can see the confidence in his play. Big switch. There's Haaland. Flicked it on. Back to our nine. Gio Bundy. <laughs> He's told them to sit down. The coach telling the crowd to sit down as Gio Bundy totally turns around the game and but you can't, I don't. See, you can't see it at home but we, we can yeah but this is to the right of us we've got half of Danny Viss's fans and then we've got half of Gio Bundy's family who were you may have just heard them there just shouting towards him just to spear him on and look to be fair he was 2-0 down in this game Renzo he's yeah. pulled himself out of a really difficult hole yeah that uh, that's incredible in five minutes time he went from a 2-0 deficit to uh, equalizing the game and it was Haaland once again just scoring goals for fun and it's just getting that cross in every time but let's see what Danny Fisser can do right now picking himself back up with his attack potentially Rolfo Haaland and now it is who has the nerves set up it's a massive for a game thriller right now turns back possession flicked it down It is so, so, so unbelievable that uh, what Erling Haaland can do to you in this game is unbelievable. He just single-handedly brought back Gio Bundy from a 2-0 deficit to a 3-2 lead. Wow, Gio Bundy letting the crowd of Danny Fizzer know what he is all about. And yeah, those were just incredible finishes uh, once again. You saw Danny Fizz just losing the ball a little bit too early, a little bit too fast, Brandon. And Gio just making it, yeah, using it to the best, uh, the best way possible. I'm a, bit, a little bit speechless how that all went down because it feels like Gio Bundy just, yeah, he just sort of threw it in a couple times and then he just got into space so easily. Danny Fizz probably lost his head right now. Might have some time now to recover, taking this break and putting that constant press on. Well, I mentioned Gio Bundy's family. That's them that'll be making a lot of the noise. Yeah, they are. And they, look at them there. I think they're flabber, just as flabbergasted as well as we are. But right now, we can say that Danny Fisser has 10 minutes left in this game to bring back Asad Alkmaar. What do I say to him before the game? I said, Pex Wall, to yeah. maybe do this. Either his finals, they are just. They are just different, aren't they? They're just different. They are. But like I said, Gio loves this underdog role position. And especially when he was 2-0 down, he just knew, yeah, I can just do whatever right now because <laughs> I'm losing. Let me just throw everything at it. And that's what he did with Erling Haaland supporting him. Let's see what Danny Fisser can do right now. How's Danny Fisser? Uh, got enough in the tank. I mean, he's got enough people in the room supporting him to try and spur him on. There's seven minutes left. Former Edivise champion back in 2019, Danny Visser. has always been in amongst the Edivise finals. But is it going to be a top eight exit for AZ Alcamar? Is there going to be a goal now? Corner. A corner kick. Goes their way. Massive corner kick right now for Danny Visser. 
Where is Erling Haaland? Gio desperately looking to cover him with Erling Haaland himself as well. Here it comes. Watch out for Erling Haaland, you know where it's going. Lofted in. And it's an easy catch for Petr Cech. Four minutes left. I mean, if you're in the situation, if you're the coach in the situation, what are you telling your player now? Just hold the ball. Just get it out. Just get it as far oh my. as possible. But Where's that one going to go? Has it gone out of play? Goes out for a throw in. Gio Bundy. You wouldn't be saying do that, would you? Don't do I, that. No, everything apart from that. But he got away with it. Let's see if Danny Fist still has time to get that ball. He doesn't Trying manage to, to do so. Out of time. He doesn't need to go forward, Gio Bundy, but you can understand why he wants to attack again. Danny Visser wins it back and gets dispossessed. We've just had a full time result as PSV have just scored again. Big chance for Gio Bundy to add another one onto the tally. He wins a corner and it's all in his hands. But in other news, PSV, they are going through. They are cruising through. Very similar to Ajax. We completely forgot about that game because this one is so tense. But it looks like Beck Swaller has done it. They knock out Azad Alagmar and move on. Advance to the semi finals as we see hugs, chants, everything. And unfortunately, we'd have to say that the Dani Fizzer crowd is definitely very, very quiet. Well, we didn't expect that one. AZ Alkmaar out of the E de Vise. 2 0 up they were. They In were the cruising. second leg, they were cruising, Renzo. And then Gio Bundy, the underdog as he likes to be called, came out and gave them one hell of a second half performance. AZ Alkmaar out, Gio Bundy, Pexwall, they go through. We can confirm now that it will be PSV against Pexwall in one of our semi-finals. On the opposite side of the bracket, it will be Ajax against FC Twente. And this was the last goal that we missed from PSV. We knew they were already through already, but they fancied adding another one to the tally. 7-3. 7-3. On aggregate there. 7-3 I mean, on aggregate, yeah. Ajax look good, PSV look good. I think the, gen the general consensus here in the room in Amsterdam is that that's your, that's your grand final, but Pexwell will have something to say about that. I mean, the amount of energy that that team has right now, they can go into this semi-final against PSV as well, thinking, all right, we have already... Because I think this was more important for their own confidence as well. Where do we rank up in the Netherlands? Are we better than Azad Alkmaar? Okay, we did just prove that. Now PSV. Okay, let's go. We have nothing to lose. You never know. Yeah. Twente, same thing. It's just all to lose for Ajax and PSV. We're going to be in some hell of a semi-final games. We are sure, indeed. From eight teams, now there's only four that remain. That's the results you may have just seen come through. Some big results. Chris De Boer, he did his job. He went one, one goal up. Then Danny Vizzer added another one. They were 2 0 up in the second leg. Gio Bundy came out on the sticks and turned that game around. AZ Alkmaar end up crashing out the tall and Pex will go through. On the other side, as we said, PSV, a really convincing win in their quarterfinals. And from eight down to four in the E de Vise finals. That is going to be a, uh, a big scenario. <laughs> <laughs> I was asking you, you for a sub. sub. I was calling for a sub. sub. You called it for a sub. Yeah, yeah I was calling for a sub. That was the game. Sorry, PSV do, <laughs> did beat Excelsior Rotterdam. Uh, some big results there. Emre Yilmaz had a tight to game. 3-2 win. Uh, Manny Bashore, the current world champion. He thought if there was any pressure on his shoulders, it would affect him. It really did not. Very convincing. Uh, Very convincing. They are looking also... Pretty dangerous towards the uh, for sure the last stages of this tour. Remember, we are in the nitty gritty now. The Edivisie, we're in the semi-final stages because if you win this, you're guaranteed e Champions League. There's four tickets on the line. There's everything on the line right now. World Cup, e Champions League, everything to fight for. And especially if you're Manu, reigning world champion, he doesn't have the World Cup spot yet. Brandon, <laughs> he wants it. I'm telling you, we're in for some great matches right now. Yeah, I think you'll uh, certainly be very close to getting it as well. We might try and catch a quick word from PSV before we go into their semi-finals. But in the meantime, we're going to head off from the commentary booth. Me and Renzo will be back for the semi-finals. For now, it's back to Keane and Inter. Right, we are also back. So, first game, PSV against Excelsior. We saw Emre Yilmaz taking the win afterwards. 
also uh, of course um, uh, Manuel Bachore who won the second game. I immediately brought in Gio Bundy, the player of the moment. Take your headset, put it on. Yeah. Rex. Come in. So you can choose whatever yeah. fits you best. All right. Congratulations, first and foremost. Thank you. Do you have some words for the people at home? We saw a lot of celebrations. Come, come a little bit closer. You don't have to be afraid. Inter won't bite. <laughs> well, <laughs> if I have some words, yeah, I think uh, yeah, FC 24 is a crazy game. <laughs> After that Haaland uh, team of the year card, the, the meta is totally different. And yeah, the last couple of weeks we just grind as much as we can. And yeah, it's it feel really good, man. Yeah, you're of course you're one nil down. You're going into that game, you're playing against Zami Vesir, a friend of yours, that I can say. Team Hullet's teammates at the time. So, yeah. you can hear how loud it gets here. Did it help you to have Dani with all his fans here and being like, a little bit more, yeah. you're feeling like I have to do something? Yeah, listen to this. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. saw your coach as well. He was like, he was reacting to the crowd of AZ. Yeah, like yeah. like a, bit, a bit of a fight in between each other. It's, it's, it's brilliant, right? It's, yeah, it's yeah. the feeling of the final. Does it help you? Yeah, it, does, it, it helped me, yeah, and, and my mom, she's sitting yeah. on the first uh, place, and yeah, her, I don't know how you say it, but she scrolls, Screams, yeah, screaming. scream, but yeah, it's, it, you, you hear it every time, so it's, it's nice. Yeah. So Oh, sorry, yeah, to, to describe just a little, there's like a screen next to us, next to the AZ fans, was your mom standing there screaming to you. Yeah, was yeah. she was she your motivational, because you've told a lot about your mom, how important she is for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Was it a little bit more, yeah, inspiration to like get this win, especially against Danny, who you know very well? Yeah, it's, my mom is just my motivation. She always supporting me with practice, with with online tournaments or qualifiers, and yeah, it's it's the best feeling if your parents supporting you. So. I, I think for the people at home, Pek Zwolle, outsider of the, uh, of the title. All right, there we go. Thank there you, we go. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. So, we're going to turn this one off. There we go. There we go. Indo. Good luck. So, yeah, Indo, back to you now. We had a crazy game, like you said. We had a less crazy game next to it. Of course, we had Pek Zwolle right here. We also had a PSV. Who played the game? Let's start with the Excelsior PSV. Yeah, well, um, it's a bit... It's, it's a bit bigger score than we expected, to be honest. Last time, like we said, it was a 3-2 win, two PSV in the last minute. Uh, now it was a bit bigger. It was 7-3 for uh, PSV. I think in overall, it was a very clear uh, yeah, clear game plan for both uh, Manuel as well as Emre. They, uh, they were very... Yeah, they, they just brought their A game like expected. And uh, yeah, I'm very keen to see what they're going to do the next round. Yeah, looking at a great game. 2-3 loss against Emre, against Emre. That's exactly. That yeah. Which will also be an interesting one because they will play straight away. They don't have much time to just oh, wow. go, go, go hang or go relax a little bit after that win. Like yep. Sola has to just dig back in, go against PSV, whilst Ajax and Twenty are already playing on the other side of the bracket. Well, the same same goes for PSV, of course. They just won as well, so they're in the same flow. So I'm very interested to see who's going to play who. That's the main. Like, is it is going to be Manuel to like? Um, play against Gio because they know each other very well. They have, um, at least Gio has, uh, uh, so to say, experience with Team Gullet. They played uh, qualifiers together. So basically, yeah, it's, it's going to be a very strategic game as well. Uh, and it's more than just playing FIFA against each other, especially going up to the, to the next stages. It's going to be interesting to see how this chess game is going to be played. Exactly. Yeah. One nil down. Like we said to um, Gio next to us, it must be hard to go into the game. You know you're one nil down. You're playing against somebody that knows you by heart. He knows exactly how you play. He knows your strength. He knows your weaknesses. You go in. You go one nil down on top of that, and then something started clicking for him. He said that half card is just the card for me. 
works. It's a, it's a big change. So uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Uh, it, it, we've seen it a lot. This Halland, Halland card is like really, really important for the way they're playing. So like this high um, cross with L1 uh, to cross it to Haaland or Gullit, we've seen that as well today. Um, so yeah, it's a bit different to, um, to to change your game style to that. Like you, you need this player who can give this perfect cross, uh, so to say. So yeah. With, with Haaland being the, one of the best, if not the best player in the game to use, and Gio Bundy being able to uh, adapt to his way of, way of playing is, is, is incredible. So, perfect thing. A big matchup coming up. I see that they're still doing some interviews, that they're still working around it. Uh, yeah. But there's a big matchup coming up. Like, it's the semi-finals. Obviously, it's going to be big matchups. We switch places for the people at home. Exactly. Just, uh, <laughs> I think this is my, my, my better side. Is it? No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you look good from this side, to say. <laughs> Said we are in the semi-finals. We had one game already for each team. Yep. The first game is always going to be the most important, I think, because if you can like survive that one, you you can keep going on that rhythm. You can keep going on that feeling, and the vibes are here. I have to say, uh, there is a lot of people yeah. here. No, it's, it's incredible. The, in, in in the arena, like celebrating, being loud. They are noisy, so yeah, it really does help in the end if if, if things like these are happening. We can see that it's growing every single year. We have more and more people. So, uh, yeah, maybe for you, if we look now, who has been the most impressive person in the matchups that we saw already? Yeah, of course, um, most unexpected would be Gio. Uh, it's a pretty easy answer. Like, of course, for players like uh, PH Sin, uh, Manuel, Emre, the names we just keep, keep uh, naming. We expect them to win. So, it's, it's, yeah, of course, they did very well. I, I, I could mention one of them, but yeah, in the end, Gio with this, with this amazing uh, I mean, it's play. a comeback from Gio, but exactly. if you look at Levy, for example, big win, 6-1, I think it was, or 5-1. 5-1, I believe, Then, yeah. uh, of course, PH Jin comes, wins that game two against Colin. So, yep. I think individually, we saw that every single player is up there trying to compete. And if you have to go now, you've seen one game for the people at home, too. Just let us know. Who do you have as a favorite? And I'm going to ask you the same thing. If you go into the semifinals, who do you think is going to make it into the finals? Uh, yeah, of course, we've got uh, Ajax against Twente. <laughs> it's going to be very interesting, um, especially of like, uh, like we talked uh, with Brent already. Mm -hmm. uh, he really likes attacking play. And against Ajax, it could be fatal for him. Like attacking play against Levy or, or against uh, PSG. Yeah, yeah. You're, it, could be, it could be fatal yet again. He's he's number one in. Um, okay, so so he's playing. Uh, yeah, he's playing Pete Shin. Well, at the second match as well. That is going to be very interesting. I believe um, Mika could be. Yeah, he he could surprise us. Although we are talking about Levy to win. If Mika can make it like a one. Uh, a 2-1 loss or a, even a draw that would be impressive and we, we could see crazy things here at the EDVC finals with uh, with PH Sin against Brent in the second game I remember last year with Milan Loper too he was like Brent and Milan were a team together at uh, Twente yep. and they really yeah they really popped off during that tournament so Mika against Levi de Weert, a different style of playing a little bit. We saw Levi with a lot of those high balls, two Haal on second post, where he was ready to head it in, which PH in. We have like a lot of yeah. different styles of playing, I feel. He can adapt really well. Yep. And also the goalkeeper movement will be important because if Brent is getting some of those chances, if he will be able to get in front of the goal, then I think it's going to be Paige Jin's goalkeeper movement that might make a really big difference really? because it gets into your head. True, yeah. It's like a, a game of poker or a game of uh, just any card game that you will be playing. Like you're thinking like, okay, what will be my next move? Am I going to go first post? Am I going to go second post? And then you start doubting yourself at a certain moment. And if there's one thing you can't do in a game against Paige Jin or Levy is to start doubting yourself because you need to take every single opportunity that will be on the table to put this game to bed. Yeah, and, and the th funny thing is, Brent um, really, w in the first glance, if you look at him, he looks like a really calm guy. But I just, I can tell from from in the interviews and stuff like that, he is shaking. He's literally shaking but and me mentally, mentally, mentally shaking. No, not not really shaking. That, that physically shaking. Yeah. But mentally, he he's he's there. He's yeah, there. He, Especially attacking one. I have a different feeling. I have the feeling that he he's one of those players that if things go well, he can beat literally anybody in this competition. 
But the moment that he starts doubting himself, or there's like a, sl a slight doubt in his mind in general, it can go like downhill pretty quickly. But I think for him, and that's something that he said, it's been five years now. Yeah. I think he starts getting like more under control. I could tell in the first few years that he had some issues with that, but now he's been working through it, and you, yeah, we can we can obviously see it. It's the first game he lost that Twente eventually won. So yep. for him, it's an important it's an important landmark too. His teammate did some of the work already, so it's going to be a very interesting game, especially that Ajax um, Twente game. But on the other side, once again, Pex Holo against PSV, yep. a big one too in that in that um, with PSV obviously being the favourites against Pex. Yeah, yeah, we could say so, definitely. Okay, so let's uh, have a look at the matchup. It's going to be Emre in the first game against Dom Dijkis. I think this is a bit of the expected matchup that we had. Like, Manuel's going to face uh, Gio. Um, I, I'm really curious to see what Gio will bring to the table um, in order to, like, put Manuel off of his game. They know each other by heart. Like, exactly. once again, they've been playing together. They know each other. They know the way they play. So it's once again going to be like one of those interesting games. Same like we said with Danny Visser against uh, Gio Bundy. It's just the fact that if you know a person's play like by heart, it's it's not easy. But that's the moment when Gio can like pull through when everybody's against him, when the when the crowd is yelling and against him. That's what he told us uh, himself. That's the moment that I can do something extra. And it's going to be the same thing. PSV is a big club. There's a lot of fans of PSV right here. I see people who are asking even for signatures, by the way, of players. They have their PSV shirt on. So I think in this case, that once again, the crowd will be PSV favored. And once again, it, it might be like really Gio's game again. For me, Tom Dakies needs to make a difference here. First game, he couldn't do yeah. it. It was only 1-0, which isn't that, that bad. But he had a really good season throughout the year. So now it's his time to like step up in this uh, in this best of one against Embry Yilmaz for him. And I think that will be a very interesting one for him to prove himself once again, because that's what we've been talking about. Definitely, yeah. You can do it in a regular season, but the moment there is a crowd, the moment the lights are the lights are on you, when the stress is coming in, well, I know it too, as on the competitive side, but then as yep. a coach side, you can see that some people that are so confident, they will be talking smack to everybody. They will be talking about everything, but the moment they're on that stage, in that box, they are turning it into a different person. All of a sudden... Speaking yeah. speaking of coaching, legend fraud, coach of Peck, yeah. what is his influence for Gio, for Tom Dijkis? What, like, he's been around around the E-Divisa scenes a very long time. He's been around at Team Hullet, now he's got other uh, he's he got went, other. Yeah, he priorities. went from Team Hullet, if I, if I remember correctly, he went for freelance for a bit. Yeah, exactly. Then yeah. he went to Status Pro. I think yep. he's still at Status Pro, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. So even for him, he's been moving around doing different stuff, doing different things. Uh, but uh, yeah, he's been somebody that is around. I see him in the Belgian League too. Mm -hmm. He coaches there too. So he's somebody that is around. Everybody knows him within the scene. And uh, it's going to be an interesting one, I think, in general. For, is uh, Boss just uh, passing by real quick? Uh, there we go. Is he going to come? Is he going to come back in front of the camera? Uh, there we go. Oh, well, go behind <laughs> yeah. the camera. So yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, he's obviously happy because he's a Pex Wolof fan. Exactly, so he, yeah. He's, he's, he's jumping. He's not he's even he's in his right mind right now. I think. <laughs> I think he's more stressed than Gio Bundy himself, yeah, probably. to be honest. <laughs> but if we go back to the coaching, exactly, like, yeah. uh, Legend Front has been somebody that has been thinking about lots of strategical things. Yep. We saw, for example, I don't know if you noticed, know but we had like chip balls, chip passes that were giving yeah, yeah. to like Haaland or Hullet or Hullet. other big guys that are standing there. So at that point, I think it's something that you bring to the table too. Gio has been saying that they've been grinding together, that they've been learning. So I think for them, it's really the, 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 the place where they will feel good because Legend Front is somebody that will demand you to perform and demand you to play and demand you to train. All the coaches are more laid back. They'll be like, oh, you know what? Here is a video, watch it, you can do yeah. that. He's more like, nope, business. Business is business. Exactly. And so speaking of, uh, of course, Renzo is a coach himself. He's been doing commentary with Brandon. What would he be feeling? Like uh, we, we can ask him later. But yeah, we will definitely get, a, get, get to ask him. But I think for him it's pretty good because if you look, Ajax, he has Levy. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the opponents of Ajax, obviously Twente, where they don't have any players, uh, Team Hullet being Team Hullet then. Yeah. Then we have um, PSV, PSV Manuel. which was Manuel and, and Emre. Emre. So there's two players. And then we had AZ, who lost to Peck, obviously. Yeah. There was Danny Visser and Chris. So at that point, for me personally, when I, when I look at that, for me it shows that they have all the big talents coming onto the scene and doing this stuff. Yep. So I think for Team Hullet in general, they had like not much to lose. But now, of course, what they would want, 
if I were Team Hollywood, I would have won an Ajax against PSV matchup. Yeah, of course. It's, it's the ultimate final of, of, to, of today. The two favorites against each other, perhaps. I, I, I'd rather see like an outsider. You, want, you yeah. want to see your prediction come true, Pex And to be thing. honest, first start, you're already, yeah, you, you, you did a good job already. But we have to I see. I've got one game. There's two more games left exactly, for them exactly. if they win. So it's not that easy. Speaking, but, uh, of, uh, speaking of Peck, by the way. Um, yeah, so we can have a look at the schedule as well. So Ajax against Twente and Peck against PSV is going to be a very interesting matchup. Um, speaking of speaking of Peck, we we just just go back to to Peck again and go back to. Of course, we're talking about Geo, but Daikis has had a phenomenal season. I've mentioned it before. He became ninth in the individual ranking uh, between the home of champions. So between the champions in the home of champions, and. Um, He's, he, he's just been he's just been performing really really well and Gio has had a bit of a difficult season this this season and um, it's, it's, it's funny to see that it, when it's the big stage he steps up he's had um, experience with qualifiers and he's got his his mom supporting him I mean this is this really shows the difference between a regular season and a, and finals with a lot of people just shouting towards you and giving so much emotion. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's. I, I'm really keen to see uh, to see this game, and um, yeah, I'm uh, I'm really looking forward to to the chess game where they're gonna play, um, both tactically and mentally. Yeah, I think I think you're doing um, maybe in general Gio a, bit, a little bit short in the end. He didn't have the best of, of results, obviously. He finished 24th, uh, 24th, I think, in the, in the individual ranking. Yeah. Didn't, didn't do that well. But then again, you're in a team game. So. No, oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. In you, in the, your individual, um, how do you say, it? your individual performance doesn't really matter. For me personally, me as a person that is like an analyst or a coach, I would say, I don't really care about your individual performance. Mm -hmm. I just want the team to win. No, definitely, of course, so of course. Maybe in, in some ways, obviously, if you lose your game as the first player, then it can happen. But if you had the hardest opponent, then maybe it's not that bad. So for me personally, that's what I'm looking at. Like, I'm trying to look at how are you doing in a matchup as a team, not necessarily as an individual player. And it's a whole different, like, uh, way of playing. People think that they come here and I just have to win every single game and that's going to be the champion. No, it's not the case. You have to come and you have to make sure that you as a team Definitely. take the victory, whether it's an individual win, whether it's a win of your, of your teammate, whether you drew and your teammate won. Yep. It doesn't really matter. Just go there, try to win a game as a team, which is way more important. But we know some people like to have of their course. personal stats padded yeah. a little bit. Exactly. We know footballers like that, there's <laughs> esports players like that. So in general for EAFC2, it's the case. Um, but uh, I think for now, like back PSV, Ajax 20 individually, they are all great players. For me, it's going to be like we have the individual quality, but it's going to be who is the best team, who is the best like definitely playing together, trying to see scores out or in, uh, in a different scenario to come back from a score. OK, so um, if you have to do a prediction for both games, like score wise, what would Interesting you say? one. I think uh, the 20 Ajax game is going to be a pretty high uh, scoring game. I think uh, there's going to be at least at least eight goals on both, uh, like not on both sides, but in, in total eight goals. In a on aggregate, you mean? Yeah. Okay. There's going to be eight goals, and I think right. uh, if we then go to the to the other one, the other game was PSV against Bexwolle. Yeah. I think it will be a little bit less scoring because Dakis is not going to. I don't think he's going to go out and like go crazy with it. And on the other hand, I don't think in the same way that Gio will need four or five goals because it will be hard to come back against uh, Manuel was right. I think he's playing Manuel but shorter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Second game. Second so game, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, a difficult one. What, what about you? What do you think? Uh, well, I totally agree on the first game with you. I, I think um, it, it really depends on Emra's mood, to be honest. <laughs> if if Emra is really like, okay, you know what? Uh, now it's, it's gone. I'm just going to go all over you. There was like this fragment on the EDVZ, um, uh, I mean this video on the EDVZ channel about Emre just scoring 5-0, 6-0, 7-0 and just keep going and yeah he just has no mercy for his opponents because of course we, we could talk about Gio, we could talk about Tom, we could talk about Manuel but Emre is, is still such such a good strategist. Strat strat strategist. <laughs> <I, laughs> <laughs> My no, but, 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 but Inter, but Inter, <laughs> if you think about it, we have the world champion next to us. Exactly. Like, okay, PHN, FC Pro Open. 
and a back-to-back -back Brazilian world yeah, champion. The world champion with Brazil too. Yeah. Then we have Levi de Wert, who's won multiple online tournaments, uh, European Cups were there, and the, um, I think it's like 2021 or 2022, I can't remember And exactly. of course the 2v2 with uh, Then the 2v2 Ola. last year with Onolito. Yeah. We have Emre, who's won the E-Champions League. We have Manu, who's won the World Cup. So. And the EDVZ last season. And EDVZ, yeah, we have EDVZ winners too, because <laughs> yeah, it, in the end, if you think about it, the quality in this tournament is immense, but they are individually very uh, very uh, qualitative. Yeah. But we have to look like at a team again, and even there, they are just like, yeah, they're banging out teams. If you put N, BH and N, Levy together, yep. individually, they are probably top four in this league. So. Yeah, I think there's going to be a very interesting matchup that's coming up. Um, I can hear that the players are getting ready. They are ready for a uh, walkout. So we can see right here. Uh, yeah. Uh, right there there. It goes. There go. It's going to be first Bakis with Gio, then coach Lenny Cross, and after that, Emre Yilmaz, Manuel Bacciore, and Roma Abdi. We're going to sit at the side desk here. And the main game will be the second part of teams. So you said about this game, not necessarily a high-scoring one? Um, well, I, I expect uh, a 6-4. Six 6-4? Four. Six four. Oh, yeah. that's very specific. specific. Yeah. So I don't know why, just feeling. First game, Emre <laughs> Yumas Dekis. That's going to be, a, a, I think it's going to be a catalyst. If Dekis gets to win this one, Manu is the comeback kit, in my opinion. Manu can be in a game 6-0 down and still come back from that game. He has the mentality yeah. for it. Yeah. It's, it's just the way he's built. It's different. But he's built different. He's built different. <laughs> <laughs> but... With Emre, I feel more that he will be the person that is leading 6-0 and not necessarily give it away, but he will give away one goal, maybe, or two. Yeah. But he's the guy that can go up very quickly. And the moment you start dropping your mentality or you, you don't feel that well or you're not in the right flow, he's going to destroy you. Like you said, he doesn't give up. He keeps yeah. going. Even if he's 4-0 down, he's 5-0 down. He's going to try and keep attacking, which sometimes will lead to goals against him. But in other games, it will just be, okay, done, game is over, yeah. everything is finished. Just a regular Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> just a regular Tuesday. I don't know if with these prize pools, with this stage, with the people that are sitting here, if that would be a regular Tuesday for anybody. No, Saturday, by the way, but... It, no, no, I mean uh, yeah, the I competition. Know. Yeah. I know, I know, I know. Right, just, just to correct myself, I don't know what you mean. But, um, yeah, so behind us are the walk-ins of the other players. Uh, Ajax, of course, Levy starting the game. And uh, Twente coming up. Mika is going to have to find, yeah, find a way to draw or even beat Levy the Weird. And uh, I'm going to give, yeah, the word to Brandon. Um, he's going to take over for me right now. Brandon, kick it off. Thank you very much, guys. Yes, semi-final time has arrived here at the E Divise for the 2024 Capien Finals. And I mean, there's no one else better to do it alongside me than Renzo, a player, a, a former player and a, a coach player. that knows. <laughs> I mean, you've been in the finals before this tournament. True, you, deserve, you deserve the hype up. Um, you know these players better than most. We are playing both semi-finals at the same time. On one side, we've got this one, this matchup. Ajax against FC Twente. Levy David against Mika Muski. PH in, of course, against Werink. And on the opposite side of it, Levy could be playing against, obviously, people he knows very well if he was to go through. Emre Yilmaz will take on Dikis. And of course, Gio Bundy, Manu Bashor. We will be guiding you through both of these semi finals at the same time. Why do these games mean so much, Renzo? Because if you win, you're guaranteed E Champions League. Yeah, and potentially, yeah. the, you know, the, the FC Pro World Championship spots could be done. It depends who qualifies for the fi does. grand final. It really does. But, but if Ajax and PSV both manage to get into the grand final, Everyone, it's going to be a big festivity. Yep. Everyone gets a new Champions League ticket. Everyone gets a World Cup ticket. Even Max Kulamai, who is the third player not playing today, yep. gets a World Cup ticket. No e Champions League ticket. Which is crazy to say. So basically, if PSV win their game and Ajax win their game, basically, we know the top four that are going to the Champions League. But more importantly, Manu Bashor, after a, a disappointing FC Pro Open performance, will get back to the World Cup to try and defend his crown. And then also, Max, the third player in the Ajax team, who has played nine match fixtures in the league, which was the requirement to be eligible to get an FC Pro World Championship spot. Without even playing a game today, might be also off to an FC Pro World Finals, which could mean that Ajax could have a handful of players there. And more importantly, the Netherlands will have a handful of players in the World Championships this year. But kicking off first and foremost with this one, Emre Yilmaz. Up against Tom Dykes of Pexwall. And they've had very different quarterfinals, didn't they, in terms of the results coming through as 
Oh, yeah, it's looking to open up. There it count with Levy David against Mikabuski. Looking to book himself a ticket in that fifth consecutive, or well, not fifth consecutive one, but at least his fifth grand final overall um, in the EDVZ. Off to a great start here with that goal. In the fourth minute, maybe straight from kickoff, but as we can see here, there is Emre Yumas combining quickly here, finding Ruth Khalid on the Looking back to find line. First one of the game, it's defended. Somehow, somewhat, Lucio got a, a foot into that one. I believe it was Lucio, it could have been company on the other end as well. As we see Tom Dyke is here, um, building up, and I think it was company indeed on the right hand side. It's Lewis building up there. Switching play to Furlan Mondi. And building up slowly here through KDB. Losing possession. This could be dangerous. Emery Yumas is likely to punish this. If you, you make don't give Emery Yumas a sniff, do you? Because he's going to take a mile. It's Erlen Hall around the corner. Can't see it. Back. PSV. And that was a perfect prediction, Brandon. You just don't minutes. do this against an E Champions League winner in a game like this. He will punish you straight away. Beautiful play from Emery Yumas getting that counter attack on a fast pace, giving that driven pass into KDB, who does get that easy finish in that far corner. As we see PSV and Ajax in the first one to strike in the semi-finals and looking to book their spot into that grand final, that also oh tight but special grand final, because it, like we said, it will be all but smiles for everyone. Well, there's only 32 spots available, isn't there, Renzo? I mean, that's the... And that would be three spots for Ajax eSports in general. Two spots for, obviously, PSV eSports as well. Um, so, uh, like we said, it would be all smiles in that grand final, but for sure, then still, there is this massive trophy. And, yeah, the huge cash prize of 20,000 euros that you can still grab Whilst way in the knowledge that you have an E Champions League spot and a World Cup spot. As Frankie de Jong here is breaking through for Levy. Ooh. Could have done better there. Could have done better there for sure. Had so much time. And predicted the goalkeeper move maybe to go to that far corner, but it was indeed in that near corner. And as you can see here, games starting to Mendy. speed up a bit. Mondi. Could be around the corner. FC 20. Doing all they can to get back into this one. Mika Muski, he's got uh, quite the story, hasn't he, Renzo? You spoke about it earlier today in his quarter-final game. His first game in the Edivizo was up against P.A. Zinn. And he beat him. And he beat him 2-1. One. one of the few players to be able to do that. Lofted in deep. There's Haaland. There's the one more. He's onside as well. Levin Avid finds his second for Ajax in 23 minutes. And, and if it's going off his track record, he won his opening game 5-1 earlier today. It's going to be more of the same. And Ajax are cruising in the semi-final for sure. And it's interesting, like you said, uh, Mika Muski making a debut against P18 of all players and beating him. And now he's playing against Ajax, against Levy. It's an interesting choice. I'm not saying it's a bad one, but judging from the facts, you could have argued that, okay, he's beaten him before. Why can't Akani do it again? But they chose to not go for that one. And we're looking 26 minutes in. At a 2-0 lead for Ajax Esports and Levy De Weert, who's playing fantastic today. Got to admit, I haven't seen him make any mistakes thus far. But let's see what Mika has in his pocket still. Mendy. Oh, no. De Bruyne awaiting still. Was there a finesse opportunity on the edge of the box? He's back to one A couple of step overs. Levy, not silly to bite into a tackle, though. What's so impressive, though, Renzo, is the fact that the last time that Levy was playing in a competitive game was back in the FC Pro Open. Realistically, he's had nothing... Yeah, I've been, I guess, uh, yeah, a couple uh, of these uh, matches. I mean, there's, he hasn't had a great... We had the E-Euro qualifier, but that's different. It's not... 95 rated right mode, isn't yeah, it? It's it is a bit different, but yeah, like, obviously he's been working his way consistently throughout uh, the year or so. But yeah, the last time we saw him in action, at least on this broadcast, was for sure the uh, the Pro Open. And he did lose to Anders Vergang uh, in a 
Uh, that was a fantastic match. Even like we were on the losing end, I was sitting behind him. But it was a fantastic match, very tight. And before that, oh, it could be a third. Great save around the corner, around the side as well. But it's just more the fact that his motivation, his motivation just to keep on grinding, keep on staying on top of his performances. Of course. And you're seeing it. He did secure that World Cup spot already. Come through now, as we've just seen the most ridiculous goal in the PSV Pex World game. I've missed it. I mean, so you've missed it, Renzo. <laughs> we'll get on the replay to find out which way it's gone. And it can. I have a prediction because I I did miss it, but is it Erling Haaland? Oh, there we go. Yeah, oh it's Erling Haaland and he scored yep. a bicycle kick. And it's another corner from Emre Yumas. It's his third, uh, third or fourth corner kick score today. I mean, that's one thing that you know when you're facing Emre. Don't let him shoot, don't get him in any position where he can get a corner kick because he is relentless on those. As a huge chance there for Levy. Could have been three. Getting that Travella shot off. And you expect more from Mbappe there, but it's a great save as well. Rutgelit. Penalty. Yep. And, and we've seen this before. Worse. We've seen this before in the Excelsior game. And it was Emre on the, on the unfortunate end on that one. The shot already went off. Well, but still a tackle. For Haaland. Haaland. To score the penalty, he does three goals to nil. Ajax lead. This is terrible if you're an FC Twente fan because P8 Din, as we said, is yet to play. He plays in the second game. It's incredible, really. You, you still have, like you said, you still have P8 Zin, and we're 40 minutes into this game, and P8 Zin is already 3 0 up. And let's not, uh, we're, we're talking so much about P8 Zin, obviously, pro open winner, but Levy as well. He's right now on track to be 8 and 1. Goal scored, goals conceded in the EDV's finals. And the That's great well. thing about it is, as well, is that he's been stepping up first, hasn't he, Levy? Yeah, he's exactly. He's had to step up first, he's had to play first, he's had to... You set the standard. Yes, he, he set the pace and he set the standard for his team, mate. It's incredible, really. And so is Emre Yumas, obviously, still 2-0 up in that other game as well, still in the first half, uh, almost concluding that one with the last, uh, or the final attack here for... FC Twente and um, on the other uh, pitch it is for PSV. Well, at the moment, it's going the way that we thought it's going. PSV yeah. have just gone into half-time. They're 2 nil up. And Ajax are about to go into half-time as well. 3 nil up. They're 3 nil up. is there something here from Mika? Does get a fortunate bounce, but... Oh, he does get the ball back here for a throw-in. Needs to go quickly. Added time, there we go. Half time between the two games. We'll have a quick break in play. I mean, I think Pex while PSV just kicked back off for the second half already. But so far, as we keep saying, the favourites coming into this one, everyone's coming into this one saying that they expected Ajax and PSV to be the two teams going to a grand final. At the moment, it's living up to that. For sure, it is. And it's Verlon Mondi for Emery Yilmaz here, building up through the main man of everyone today, Erling Haaland getting a big switch of play, Quadrado, Quadrado just can't find that pass and there has been a goal in the Ajax game that might could spice up things a little bit but we'll get to that once we're able to get that replay on board for you guys as Bex Wolle here, ooh that was really unfortunate as we're about to see that goal from Ajax, but before that we have a big ball here from I believe it was Erlen Haaland there on that long ball pass to Gullit. Oh, look at that. What has 45 minutes and 50 seconds in Brandon, we might have seen a kickoff long ball pass from <laughs> from the defense all the way up into the box of Levy and he actually did score the 3-1 there. Called I mean, Levy, it's a great uh, start for them. They needed something, didn't they? Ajax looking for a fourth. Haaland there, he's just tipped over the ball. As it is another corner kick, Haaland! Should have been forward up. Should have been forward up.
big goals going in our other game. Yeah, as we hear the, the crowd roaring in the back. And at least here we can show it to you. Mbappe here turning and twisting. Palmer and once again it's a knockdown. Haaland finding one more pass to, from our nine to Foden. And it's, it's not the most prettiest goal, but you know what you're guaranteed, aren't you? If you just tip it up in the air to Haaland, you know he's going to flick it, you know he's going to head it, you know he can maybe touch it down, have a shot. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of it, Brandon, if I have to say so myself, but it's effective. And what do you have to do to win these poor, important games? Just be effective. So you can't blame anyone. And it's a brilliant goal from Tom Dykes in the end. As we can see, Halevi trying to do the same here, Alexia. Big save. Five. Still chances alive, though. Halevi David looking for a fourth in this game. A couple of ball rolls, expecting maybe a shot from distance. Well defended. And uh, Mika, his turn to get to enter at least uh, something going that Brent can be like, huh, Piazin, maybe I can outscore him then at least. But we're going to just focus on this game right now. As we can see, De Bruyne was triggered there for that cross potential. But well defended from Tom Dijk, he's there. Chance to break now for FC Twente. Haaland. Back to our nine. As Mondi here with a lot of space. Emery Yumas, where are you going? Big intercept there from Finzan Company. I mean, even if you can keep it into a 2-1 scenario, Renzo, it gives something for your teammate. Of course. I mean, this is. I think Gio will take this, honestly. Especially like I said, after the performance likes, he just showed us. As, exactly, and he likes that underdog position. Him going into the next game with a deficit, a small deficit, might even make him a better player when he would be 1-0 up. And it sounds weird, but some players just feel that way. Massive chance, two hands on it from the goalkeeper in the end. Yeah, and I can tell that Emre is getting a, uh, maybe a little bit frustrated trying to qu attack a bit quicker than what we're used to see from him. Does he ever show frustration, Emre Yilmaz? Because I feel like I've never seen it from him. Yeah, maybe I just I, I can just tell from the gameplay, but like if you would look take a look at him and his camera feed, you're probably like I don't oh, think I've ever relaxed. seen an outpour of emotion from him <laughs> in, exactly. in both sides, even if he's winning any Champions League. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I uh, I agree, I agree. Let's see here though, Frankie De Jong putting it out wide, Quadrado. Look at Haaland, he's in that There's box. The flick on, no, he's looking for headed it down, three one. Emre Yilmaz. And not the most fanciest of celebrations again. Emre just uh, his fist. And it was Manu who is not afraid to give him a little fist bump as well. But 3-1 to PSV Eindhoven. And Peck Swole have, well, a job on their hands. But Gio Bundy is definitely the person that you want to leave that to. As he did already against Azad Alagmar. 3-1, 75th minute. Let's see what Tom Dykes can still do. And Emery will probably be trying to get one more board on the board. Because we already saw that two-goal deficit swept away quite efficiently by Giovanni. As it only took him 10 in-game minutes to go from a 2-0 deficit to a 3-2 lead, knocking out Azad Alkmaar in the quarterfinals. Well, speaking of that, there's been another goal in our other game as well. It's Ajax that have extended their lead to 4-1 now. That's Levy de Veerd, eight minutes left in that game. Three goal cushion as he passes the controller to PH in for a second leg there. Yeah, it's just, um, it's just an incredible performance. Like we said, from Levy as well. Rolfo here on that right-hand side, getting the ball to Mbappe. Goalkeeper movement to that near post, choosing to go to that far corner as we see more action on PSV Eindhoven's end. Emre Yumas, he hears Levy scoring 4-1. He's like, why shouldn't I? 4-1 to PSV as well. We're looking at the exact same performance from both gentlemen stepping up to that semi-final, setting up their teammates in a 4-1 lead. Brandon. And I mean, look, it's taking nothing away by any means about the 
the second leg opponent on the opposite side of the stage, but it's just who you're playing against. One side of the screen, you're playing against the, the, the current world champion, Amani Bashaw, and you've got to score three goals against him. And then the other side of the game, you're playing against... P8 Zin. P8 Zin, who's won a handful of things, <laughs> including the FC Pro, he's probably the most informed player this year, and you need to score three goals against him. Uh, probably four or five. That's what we said. He will not not score himself. So, and I mean, Manu you're Bichur, it's a player same. that you know you're going to concede against. Plus, you've also got to score three goals. Yeah, it's. Uh, I wouldn't want to be on the sticks uh, as of now, but that's why I retired back in the days, Brandon. And I'm just a coach right now. And join more? on your side right now. As we can see, maybe on the break here, Emery Yuma's trying to make things even worse for Brent, but he doesn't. As of yet, loses possession. And then Tom Dyke's maybe the smart decision right now is to just take the last game, uh, last attack of the game, and not concede because you know Gio Bundy is feeling a little special today. Last chance of the game for Pexwell to take something into match two. Is it going to be a three goal? Deficit to chase. Can he help Gio Bundy out of a chance now? No, he can't. Emre Yulmaz happy with that one. Keys possession. And we'll pass the control over to his teammate, Emmanuel Bishaw, with a 4-1 lead. Full-time result in that one. Let's go and conclude our other game if we can as well. Ajax against FC Twente. We're in the last moments of that one too. It'll be FC Twente with the last kick. And looks like that was it as well. Levy de Vier putting PSZ in the, well, almost phenomenal position. 4-1 up. Excellent performances from both Levy and Emre in these uh, first legs of the semi-finals. Brandon, what I would say like because I mean, from I want to know from your opinion, why are why are there such levels you, we can see between these players in, in these moments in these games? Uh, tough is it, question. Is it just reps? Is it like honestly more experience in games, not feeling the pressure? I think I think honestly they they just the the, the sheer fact that these players are so good. The margins are very tight at this level. But what I see with Emre, what I see with PHC, what I see with any of these players that are playing well today, they just are relentless on any chance. They don't hesitate. And we saw, uh, we mentioned it in the AZ game, for example, for Spex Sola, that you saw weird crosses, weird angles, yeah. weird dribbles, like unsure what to do. And they are just fearless. They will just they see a little bit of space. We saw Emre there on that first goal as well. One small mistake, you're punished straight away. And I think that's the difference. It's not something like experience or anything that will grow onto you. But also these guys are still young. We're still talking about 18-year-olds, 19-year-olds that are performing at the highest levels against players that are actually older. Because Tom Dykes is actually older than, for example, Emre Yilmaz. Gio Bundy is older than Manu Bachor. So they are more experienced, you could argue. Yeah, they might be older, but unfortunately the young kids as well, well not yet, they're not very young. <laughs> they've won three, four hundred thousand dollars in prize money. This is That's the, difference. the current lay of the land if you have just tuned into the Capien E Divise finals. Live here from Amsterdam, we have just concluded leg one or match one in our semi-finals. As you can currently see, it looks as if we're going to be in for an Ajax PSV grand final, which we can basically guarantee you that the E-Champions League spots will be going to the likes of PH Zin, Levy David, Manny Bashaw and Emre Yilmaz. Four Champions League tickets, uh, of course, on the spot for this year's tournament as part of the FC Pro scene. On top of that as well, which is, which is quite interesting, as soon as this game is done, we basically know where the FC Pro World Championship tickets are going as well. It'll be Manny Bashaw that would take one of those tickets because he didn't have a good FC Pro Open. He didn't qualify to the top four and get his ticket that way. And then it would be Max, who you would have actually seen today competing for, uh, for, Amps, uh, for Ajax Amsterdam. But he played nine games this season in between weeks where maybe Levy or, or PA Jim wasn't there or maybe not, not, not ready to compete. So basically, because he's played nine games, Max, if they make a grand final... He gets the World Cup ticket as well. Yep. I mean, there's only 32 spots to the World Cup. We must remind you of that. And these tickets are money can't buy tickets. You get them via, you know, virtual leagues in the FC Pro Open, which we've already concluded earlier on this year. So for, for him to get that ticket is ridiculous. That's a very, very special gift from Santa himself. Nine matches in the Edivise. And you get a World Cup. And you get a World Cup ticket because your team is also ridiculously stacked. I believe we are jumping in to our second legs now. If we can jump into it, uh, we're not jumping into it. We've just jumped out of it. Yeah. We're going back to it very soon. <laughs> jumped in, jumped out, just like that. But like you said, it's just 
you know, I'm not sure on the statistics on that, but Max has played nine games. He has it's played not nine like games. he had won all nine games. I'm for sure about that. And you're guaranteed a World Cup. How nice is that, Brandon? It is. Basically, it was the rule set by the Udivi. So you had to play at least nine matches in the regular season to be, of course, eligible for an FC Pro World Championship ticket if your team was obviously to go and get to the final or go and win the final. But because, obviously, Emre Yilmaz has already got a ticket, PHM won the tournament, he's already got a World Championship ticket, and Levy David also has one as well. So basically, it's a case of where do the tickets go, and that's how it's, it's been broken down. So basically... Let's see how this second leg plays out. Yep. But if not, we already know what is happening with the allocation of tickets to various events later on this year. FC Twente will be kicking in the red from left to right. And very nearly, P.A. Jin has already added on another goal to his tally. And I was about to say, let's not get ahead of ourselves too quickly. But yeah. Uh, we said it a couple of times already today. It's P.18 who goes in to the game with a 4-1 lead and he's five minutes in and he already finds the fifth. I mean, it's just so tough to stop these teams with this type of quality that they have in both uh, both legs. Brent Wehring, you have a lot of work to do right now, but let's see what Giovanni can actually do against Manu Batur in that same position, starting with kickoff himself. And Manu here, can he do the same as PSG? There is a chance here maybe does choose to get the ball out wide again to Quadrado. And just slowing down the pace a little bit. Obviously, if you're in Manu's seat and Piazzin has already made it sure that that didn't happen, you just don't want that first goal in the first 10 minutes to go against your favor. Goretzka. Manu be sure. Has a three-goal cushion to fall back on, remember. It was Emre Yilmaz to put in a really strong performance in the first game. And a great a big tackle there. De Bruyne switches all the way across into our nine. He tries to juggle it towards goal. He needed Vincent Company to stand in the way, but it was an interesting couple of touches there, wasn't it? Yeah, that was not something that you uh, expect from R9, especially his team of the year icon version. But um, yeah, that was uh, a little bit fortunate maybe from Gio's end, but looking to score on him for himself here. Didn't manage to do so. KDB. Right inside, Manu now on the counter-attack, Mbappe. KDB, maybe a cross, no, doesn't do so. Goretzka. You see Manu just trying to control the pace here a bit, finding his pace. R9, reverse Elastico, gets blocked again. It's Sasha Bui. Who just attempted a pretty dangerous pass. Gio is definitely risking a bit. And that's a big tackle once again from Cuadrado. PSV. Looking for goal number five if they can. You can just see some family relations of Gio Bundy and Pex Wall that were cheering him up. Yeah, all the same. It's really low, right? PSV. Cuadrado. As KDB reaches Mbappe here, and it's a goal for Manu Bachor. 21st minute, Kylian Mbappe. Getting that fifth on the board for PSV Eindhoven as well, as we're looking at the same kind of schedule as Ajax, but we missed the goal there. You called it, Brandon. We, there was a goal in oh, that game, and it's it was 20. The gap's too big now, isn't it? I mean, it is Brent Wehring. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about him. He has made the comeback against Dani Fizzle last year. He has made comebacks. Four goals down, five goals down. A lot of times during the regular season, during his seasons in the EWZ all, all around. But against PSG? I mean, that's his story, hasn't it? PSG actually lost to this FG Twente side in his individual game, but the way the aggregate scoreline worked, I still did come out winners of that. True that. All those weeks ago. The reason I was saying the gap's too big as well is because PSV just added another one onto their tally. They lead by five goals to one now against Pax Wale. 
could be a chance here for FC20 to try and break down Ajax, unable to do so. But for PA Jim, what's a, what first season in the Edivise this would be for him? As he just seems to build on year after year in his performances, gets better and better. Sure is. As he's building up here. Looking for goal number six in Bappo. Can't find great, a way past that on Mendy. This is where Brent would like to see himself score that third one to get back in the aggregate. Actually, he would be leading the game then, but first leg performance from Levity where it was a little bit too strong for Mika. And right now, Brent's still trailing this game. He's in just taking his time right now, and that's where it can get dangerous. On that right-hand side, look at the space of Mbappe. R9, getting it out to the left. Of Mondi, Khalid, and this is a good move. Palmer, and that's brilliant play from PSG. Can't really find a pass, maybe a little bit on this indecisive there. As we see Brent on the counter-attack right now with Mbappe. It's also one of these in-game items that we're likely to see paired up with Haaland, with R9. Uh, something has happened, Brandon, on that PSV Paxwaller game. There has been a goal back in that game. We'll give it to you as soon as we can. Remember, this is our semi-finals of the Edeviso, season seven of this competition. And it's been a long five year wait for PSV since they've been able to lift. We'll get close to lift the trophy, I should say. Pexwell have pulled a goal back in this one. We're just looking at the same scoreline once again, Brandon. It's, I mean, uh, look, we, 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 we're not trying to, by any means, discourage the, oh. the other team that's in these semi-finals, but the gaps that we're seeing between Ajax and PSV and their opponents, it's just getting bigger, and it's always been a two or three or a four-goal cushion. A massive chance there for Brent to choose to do the ball roll scoop there, and I think the ball would have been enough I'm just shooting that one near post. But by out the chance, able to do so there. We're going to... Going to half timing both of the games again. It's time's running out. Time is running out. Six for minute half of those teams, and you're right. Six minute half, Renzo. They just fly by. <laughs> they do. Uh, right now we're used to those nine minute halves from Pro Open and every former, but in the EDVZ we're playing six minute halves um, in both legs as well. And obviously Manu here getting that last attack once again. 44th minute, 45th minute ticking. Doesn't need to go forward. Choosing wisely not to do so and might have the risk of losing possession. And it is still a free goal cushion for both Ajax and PSV Eindhoven. Trying to get those, well, festivities going yeah. already after We're this game. We're six minutes away. We are six minutes away from finding out who's going to be getting these four E-Champions League tickets. As there's and another goal, it's PSG. Just, it's just PSG. Just get him in the ground final now. Ajax, we can confirm. But what, what is it with this guy? I swear, in every tournament, I, you for, you've been to every tournament, you're commentating everything. Why do we always see PAZ getting these type of goals in favor of him? It's skill. It is skill. It's not luck. I'm not trying to blame anything. But it's, it's just, just... It's just got such a... Don't wrong, I'm sure there's pr plenty of pros that have the same mentality, but he's just got such a hunger. Yeah, yeah. He's so eager, and, like, he will come down at you. Like, he will try to... Get under your skin, even that ball roll scoop turn that we saw Brent performing. He's also forcing you into making these maybe not ideal decisions. He wants to he wants to follow in the same sort of footsteps as Matias Bonanno as well, a player that's come over from South America and also proven what they can do on the European level in European leagues, as Matias Bonanno has done, of course, in Spain and in England. Rightfully so. And for PA Jin. As he wants see. to win a trophy here in Europe and also qualify for his first ever E Champions League. Big goal back. 5-3. In this one, it's only a two-goal cushion. I mean, there's 39 minutes left in this one and Gio Bundy could be the player to go and do that. <laughs> it's a 53rd minute, two-goal cushion still for PSV, but obviously Manu's not going to be happy about that one. And... It's R9 this time, again, a knock-on from Haaland. We're seeing it quite often today. That back post cross, but it's working. 
phenomenally, especially for Gio Bundy. Let's see what Manu can. And the best thing he can do is right just get now. a goal, take the pressure off his shoulders, surely, Renzo. For sure. Yeah, and like this is the time where you don't want to slow down as much as you still want to score right. yourself. But then again, out, isn't it? you don't want to give Gio that confidence of getting that second goal in too quickly right now. He's moving around this pitch, isn't he? Could be a great chance. Mbappe, Van der Sar just claws it away. Was there ever a chance to shoot across the opposite side? Uh, I think there was, Brandon. I think there was. It was the left foot of Mbappe. I understand his decision making, but... I mean, Manu right there, same as Dani though, like it was just, it only takes one goal from Gio to really turn on the Jets. As you can see here again, pressure just being applied on Manu. As you can see, the Pex Olivan, he's just going absolutely mental about every possession. And yeah, unfortunately for Gio, he couldn't convert that one. Would have definitely turned around the game as quickly as he did to, against AZ as well, but Piers in probably going to put this game to bed here for sure if it wasn't already yeah Ajax lead six goals to two in their semi-final and they are 24 in game and it's away from continuing the celebrations if you're an Ajax fan it's been a pretty good season for them FC Pro winners they will be in the Champions League and we'll jump back to our well, PSV and Hoven game. Though. And there's Haaland at the back post. And De Bruyne, no, sure. big Mouses tackle. It down. De Bruyne, big tackle, as you're right to say. Company. That, what is it, fantasy hero item, I believe? Yeah. It's phenomenal. And, um, yeah, this one is going to go down to the wire, I feel like, uh, Brandon. I can see Gio just getting one more, one Do more knockdown. Do time on the cards, maybe? Mm, uh, I don't think so, but I think it's going to be tight, and we're going to see some goals still. As something happened in that other match let's see if we can get a replay on that soon but oh look at this this is Brilliant a fortunate feet. moment but we just Mendy. switched back inside great save from van der from Petacek, sorry in that other side of the PC net game. there's been a goal back for fc twente but the gap is still Whew. rather big what a power shot and again it it's, the, goal. Don't be wrong it's with. the norwegian giant but then again Khalid. Haaland, manu Choosing to go back it was definitely Tony Cruz even on the pitch to try and get those long ball passes out there, Brandon. Shake long ball pass plays style plus. Switch possession from left to right as you'll continuously look to do. 21 minutes away. Emre Yilmaz up and Manny for short. That's for me, Champions League tickets as well. Fancy the finesse from that far out was rather ambitious. Indeed it was, Brandon, but it's already nerve-wracking to look at this. Especially if you're behind the desk with the controller in your hands. Manu must be thinking right now, like, okay, all I need is just that one more goal. As he is trying to get one here. KDB, R9. A little bit fortunate, but again, company stepping up big there for Gio. And I said it before, you don't want to concede that. Two, if you're in a two-goal lead, you don't want to concede before the 70th minute. Manu has managed to do so, but... Right now, if he can stop this attack, he m must be feeling quite confident to get this one. It's a great flick on there, fellow Mendy. Stopped by De Bruyne in his tracks. Number five minutes out the game, gone. That'll be positive if you're a PSV fan. Look at that right-hand side. Could go on the left-hand side. There's so much space either there. Spit, either side, it was Harlan a lot of space. could be off. Just around the corner if he wants to try and find him. No, he doesn't. Goes instead to Tony Cruz, who can switch that play, which he will. Ball, There's the flick through. on. They could put the game to bed right now if they wanted to. It nearly went through. Into our nine from Mbappe. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. For two goals. Can Gio get one? Is this one of the goals now coming forward? Mbappe dinks it in. Haaland goes for a diving header. Virgil was there. Well defended by Manu. Noticing the run from Haaland quite early. And Tony Kroos here. Yeah, this is why he was brought on the pitch, Brandon. Those long ball passes. Two towards the wing. To play out of this pressure from Pax 83rd minute, Kylian Mbappé, R9, and it is intercepted. And was that the correct decision, Manu Bachor? Because Gio Bundy is running forward, but that was a good tackle. And now... Well, we've seen a goal over here in this game. Ajax have concluded the game. Job done, PA is in, Levy de Vier into a grand final for this year's Edevise, looking to put it right after losing last year 
in this very moment. But E-Champions League tickets guaranteed for the man that everyone's fearing at the moment in PH in Levy there as well. Two tickets. We can also confirm as well that Max of Ajax is a happy man. Will be a very happy man because one of the FC Pro World Championship tickets will go to their third player, their substitute player in this year's EWZ if... because he played nine, but only, sorry, only if PS PSP win this grand final because they might not. As it ball bounces back to Rolfo. Because there's four and a half minutes left here. If Gio Bundy scores again, he's about to rewrite the script and potentially give Pexwall two World Cup tickets and two e Champions League tickets as well. There's I, always something about them in the Edovise finals, right? They know always what it turn is. up. I don't know what it is, especially with Gio Bundy, but I said it a couple minutes ago. Manu went forward in that 82nd minute. Was that the correct decision? Or will it come back to haunt him for a while, for sure, after this game? No, it's Mondi here. Very strong. Oh, that's brilliant from Mondi. Breaking down on that left-hand side. Does he want to find another goal in this moment, Renzo? Or is he no, just no, no, no. The ball? You definitely just want to waste time right now. But then not like this. Mondi, Bad oh, big tackle. Ball. It should be a gift. Into our nine. PSV! And Manu gets himself a World Cup spot. What a big goal on such a big moment. Not and just in the grand final, but it's your right to say, Renzo, <laughs> after a really disappointing FC Pro Open, Manny Bashaw has just qualified himself for the FC Pro World Championships as well and got an E-Champions League ticket in the process. From what was a really disappointing start to the season by his own remarks and his own levels, he's just turned it around. We're about to go into April, and by that time, his season has completely flipped on its head. He's in the World Cup, and more importantly, he's off to an E-Champions League. Yes, obviously... Uh being one of the competitors that we saw at the FC Pro Open. Maybe not living too, uh, up towards these expectations um, that you might have from a reigning world champion, securing even a goal extra for that, uh, actually getting the draw in that EWZ finals as well, staying unbeaten. And we see nothing but sportsmanship between the, the teams as well. Well, hand chase between uh, the two players before the final whistle's even finished it. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> you know the... I think we still have to kick off, gentlemen. But then again, um, look the at their happiness. Hugs between those two because they've both just qualified for the Champions League. Emre Yilmaz will be back there to defend his crown. He was the last goal of the game that you saw as we were just about to go into full time. 6-4 in aggregate, 3-3 in the game. The man for sure will be a very happy man. We've got a full-time result over here as well between Ajax. I want to get Max his PO. Like, I just want to see Max on the screen or in, on the desk here because how I mean, is he feeling right now? I'm is gonna he try and find him. Is he going to I mean, send some, some special gifts to Manu, to Emre, to Levy, to Piazin? I'm looking off camera here because I want to try and see if we can find Max in this crowd somewhere. He's watching he's somewhere. somewhere. Just, just he's for somewhere. Clarity, he's this, just qualified for the World get Championship. Get this curly He's guy. a single game in, uh, in, in, in this afternoon's E Divise finals. Remember, he played nine regular games in the season, which was enough still to qualify him within the league rules. And because of what's happened is three of the four players already in tonight's E Divise finals are already at the FC Pro World Championships. Levy De Vier's already there. PH is already there. Levy, uh, sorry, Emre Yilmaz is already there. So Manny Bashaw gets a ticket, and so does so does Max. In in the grand scheme of things, this has actually been decided quite in a simple format. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to pass the spot down here and go over there. I mean, we can wrap it up like that, but still, Brandon, let's not forget, we still have bragging rights. We still have Ajax versus PSV, which is a huge rivalry, even between the players themselves, but club-wise, it is a huge rivalry in the Netherlands, and we still have... 20,000 euros and obviously a remarkable trophy up for grabs. And like you said before, Biazin is trying to win every competition in Europe and Emery Yilmaz is still trying to win an Edifici Championship himself. Because Levy and Manu already have one. Manu also already has three of them. Can he make it four? Brandon, I'm looking forward to that one for sure. Absolutely. Well, it was 2018 was the last time of course, that we uh, we saw PSV in a grand final of the Edivise Renzo, and that came all the way back 
in the first ever time that the E Divise run back yeah. in obviously, 2018. Yeah. Since True. then, PSV have never been in a grand final again. So for them to be back in a grand final is massive news. They'll be taking on Ajax in this year's uh, big match, as you said. 20,000 euros plus the bragging rights, the all important trophy. But Fremre Yilmaz is something that's missing from his, his trophy sort of calendar as well that he's, he's he's not won this Ida Visa yet you said he's come close before maybe he didn't always have the right team maybe the right teammate maybe it was at a different stage of his career um, it's a great moment now for him to potentially you know rewrite some wrongs and for his own rights get that trophy locked in confirmed and done we are going to bring Mr Dory back into the conversation quite quickly Mr Dory I mean what a what scenario I mean each Champions League tickets have been handed out. Manny Bashaw, after a disappointing start to the season, he's done enough. Yeah, a very interesting, a very interesting game uh, at hand now with the final coming up. But I think you have to look at what is at what is possible. Yeah, your question, Brennan. Sorry, I was saying it's a massive opportunity now for Manny Bashaw after a disappointing start to the season. Yeah. Didn't do well in the FC Pro Open. Now he's done enough to qualify himself, not just for the Champions League, but he's just qualified himself for the FC Pro World Championships where he can go and defend his title again. Yeah, exactly. The well, thing is, like 2023 could have been, couldn't have been better for him. Yeah. Like winning the EDVG and uh, be, becoming the E World Champion. So, um, and I think fourth time in a row he can become EDVG Champion as well. So it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be a very interesting matchup. So Absolutely. I'm looking forward well, I'm to I'm that gonna one. I'm going to pass you back over to uh, your co-host, Mr. Tory. <laughs> we'll make sure your mic works this time, my friend. Um, we'll pass it back to you in a second, mate. Well, so Dory, thank welcome, you, welcome back, welcome back. <laughs> yes, thank you very much, Inter. Let's yeah, take uh, it away. we just had to quickly check how we were going to figure this one out. So, yeah. yeah, interesting final coming up. The final everybody has been dreaming about. The final that everybody has been talking about too. So, um, yeah, we have to dive into it. Let's it's just get my stats against right PSV, in. one of the big clashes in the Netherlands too. Exactly. So it's going to be a very interesting one once again. I've been saying that every single game that is going to be interesting, but this one in particular is going to be more than interesting. I think it's going to be electrifying wow. in, this, in the arena too because people have been loud when it was Ajax. People have been loud when it was PSV. Yeah. So for me, I think it's going to get loud in total. No matter who's going to score, no matter what chance is going to happen, I think a lot of people are going to be happy and there are going to be a lot of people being sad after this tournament. Oh, definitely. And the um, thing is, it's, it's such a it's such a packed atmosphere. You've had the whole day with games being played, uh, people being disappointed, mothers screaming everywhere. It, it's amazing to uh, to be here and to have this final where we predicted it as well, like Ajax against PSV, of course. Um, yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to this matchup. Um, and yeah, I, I really I really have to uh, have to see what's going to come uh, come next. We can hear a loud applause because the Black Swallow Boys gave it their all. Semi-finals. It's it's a good result if you ask me. Semi-final for them. They already won one tournament now they cannot repeat it sadly yep. but uh, yeah a lot of all offense right here so now something interesting i've been going forth and back on social media with a few of the guys right there's questions obviously there's questions because not only are they playing to be the champion of all champions within here the house of the champions in the cap and edvz they're also playing for a ticket for the e champions league yep. and they're playing for tickets for the world cup Exactly. So, FC Pro World Championship, that's a better way yeah. to put it. So, they're playing for that, which is obviously important for some of the players because their seasons can depend on it. So, if we're looking right now, we have PSV, we have Ajax, Levy already qualified through the FC Pro Open, uh, PHD already qualified, Emre already qualified, so there's one spot left, This is that's for Manu Bacciore at that point. Yeah. But, if Ajax wins the tournament, the third player, Max Kulume, we'll get will get a ticket, ticket to no the way. World Cup. Wow. So, wow. for him, it's a very important moment right now because he played nine games during this, the, the regular season, so he has been a part of this team. Yep. He did play. It's not just somebody that's on the bench because he's not good enough. Isn't, it, isn't he uh, the only player, uh, the third player, to have reached a nine game? Yeah, it's the, only, it's the only one. Right. So. Yeah. So yeah, it's. I think that's an important part because for him, of course, it's uh, interesting to know that if they are gonna go and do it and take the win, take the victory, he's gonna get a World Cup spot. And I think for him personally, like, what a what a what a position to be in because you have to watch your teammates play and hope they're gonna win, which you obviously already do. Yeah, exactly. But now even more because you know if they do well, I get another chance to show myself at the biggest stage possible. 
and of course Manuel is going to. I, I just talked to Brandon about it as well. Manuel is going to want to defend his his title. That's his third right now. Uh, he already has three, I think. Yeah, no, I mean the the world the uh, world champion. Oh, world championship. Yeah. And that's the moment that he needs to win here exactly. to be able to go there. So uh, yeah, it's a very interesting one. And there's a lot of storylines to be written right here. Yeah. And I think no matter how the scenario is going to turn out, these guys that are sitting right here in the final, they are guys that are going to. They're not going to be like NPCs at the world. At the world, <laughs> no, they are going to be the guys, the protagonists who are going to be the big guys, the big names, the ones to beat. So, in my personal opinion, right here, we are we are already seeing a matchup that will happen during the champions, during the championship, um, later on, the world championship. Yeah. And we're seeing it right before, as they say in French, avant la lettre. Wow. Can so you say that one more time? One more time. Avant la lettre. And the direct translation is? Before the. Yeah, no, there's no direct translation. It's, <laughs> it, it means that, that it's a final before the actual final. Right, yeah. Well, that's a great explanation. So, there we go. So, wow. it's going to be an interesting one, like I said. These two guys, they are still doing some interviews. They are yeah. going around. They're trying to, like, lower the pressure a little bit. Um, in the meantime, Inter, I'm going to ask you to give your headphones to yes. uh, Nick Den Haber, go. who's going to join and uh, have a chat with me on the microphone. Yes, sir. I'm going to ask you some questions. We're in English, so That's it's fine. an English stream. I'm yes. sorry. So there's the camera, Nick. You're here. You're standing here for those that don't know you yet. Nick Den Hamer. If they don't know you, then they've never watched competitive EFC FIFA in the past because you've been you've been around the scene for a long, long time. What was the first year you competed in? I think I competed in FIFA 18. I made my first FUD Cup in Manchester and after that I did it for a few years until I became a coach. So now you're the coach of the Ajax team. Must be like big pressure on you right now. Yeah. It's, it's a tournament is yours to lose at this point, I think. Yeah, to be honest, I think we have a lot of pressure. Um, for Manuel, he also had a lot of pressure to make the World Cup. For us, we already had the World Cup, so for us, all the pressure is on the final. I think the EDVC is really important for a club. Mm -hmm. Loads of tournaments are also important for both an individual and the club. And EDVC, you really win it as a club. So for Ajax, it's, it's really important. So we definitely feel the pressure, but it's also so nice. So if we, if we look now, you have a third player, Max Kuhlmann. If he, if Ajax wins this one, he gets a spot for the World Championship too. Yeah, I, to be honest, I think he already has it because Emre is also qualified. Because it passes through, because only Manuel Bachoda can only take it. Only Manuel this. can take it. Yeah. So I think it's Max and Manuel already. Yeah, that's amazing to be honest. Max works really hard, um, so he deserves it. Maybe he didn't play everything in the EDFC, only nine games, but that was our plan from the start to let them all play. Mm -hmm. So if it happens through FC Pro Open, we can also give the spot yeah. to him. And that worked out, so I'm really happy uh, that it worked out like that. In the end, he deserves that spot because, like you said, he's been working maybe in the background, maybe not as at the front side, like everybody knows Levy, everybody knows Manu, everybody knows Emre, but Max is like more in the shadow doing his thing going about and well for me like now, right now he should be at the world cup right now if everything goes to plan of course we have to check with third players because also psv had a third player yeah, uh, but, but he, he didn't play any games so yeah, yeah so. there's gonna be uh, an interesting an interesting matchup so one more thing the games right now first uh, it's gonna be uh levy again this way we don't know yet i still have to talk with okay. the team so uh, what's yeah. the strategy behind that is it like trying to get levy to get a good advantage against p Jin so uh, for p Jin so he can then lay back a little bit more or i think levy has a lot of edvc experience mm -hmm. and he also played second almost his whole edvc career yeah um, but for him him it's not really important okay like every time i ask him and i tell him like do you want to play first or second also last year he says i don't care i just want to win so his mentality is amazing uh, i think paulo is really used to playing the second game and having the pressure on his shoulders yeah, so far it really worked out. Now it will be a best of three, so it's their individual games. So, um, so yeah, the tactic was indeed uh, Leif playing the first game, Paolo finishing it off. I think this year sometimes uh, it's better to finish it off by scoring more goals instead of defending your lead, and that's what we do. So. The, the thing that I found mostly, mostly particular and special with this game is uh, the fact that... Uh, Pijin is crazy with his goalkeeper movements. So, thank you, Nick, for all the information. Thank you. We're going to get Inter back on, on, uh, on the mic. Thanks, Inter. Um, the first game, as it seems... Oh, we're going back to the last game, I'm sorry, Inter. So, the last game 
was Levi de Weert playing against Mika as the first one, and then we had PH Zin against Brent as the second one. Yeah. So an interesting matchup there that already happened. Both of them won by a pretty large score, 4-1 and 5-2. So for them, it was like a comfortable lead once yeah. again. Do you think they're going to keep the same thing going? So for Levi, for example, to go first, and then PA Jin to go second once again to like defend that lead and then try to score some goals because now it's a best of three. Yeah. So it's a different mindset. Who would you put against one another? Like what would you do if you were the coach of Ajax right now? Of Ajax? Yeah, of Ajax. Who do you start with and who do you put as second player? I think um, I would put Levy against Emre. I, I, th okay. At least that's my expectation, what's going to happen. I, I really don't um, I tactically. Can, I, I, I can elaborate on that one okay. because Levy pretty much always wins against Emre from what I've, if, if I remember correctly, if my exactly. memory serves me right, like one of the players that have like the hardest way of like uh, doing, um, or, or the hardest way of playing against is, is actually for um, Emre then, is Levy. So I think it might be a logical explanation for that. And do you put him first or second? Um, Levy then. Would you put him in first, first game? Yeah, first, first game. Yeah. So he can get off the yeah. pressure and he can like start. Okay. Thing is, because um, Manuel was struggling a little bit against uh, against Gio Bundy in the in the second game, and I'm I'm really curious to see. Yeah, can can he like put his focus back home? Because we know Manuel as as a man of ice. He's yeah. So cool when it comes to these situations, but he was he was not really shaking, but it, he wasn't himself. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, Gio has, ha has had a very good day in overall, the whole day. So, of course, um, yeah, it, it can happen. But we have to see what it, what this matchup is going to bring. Because I, I'm, I'm very curious what Manuel is going to do against PHC, to be honest. If I look at the way they, they're playing right now, for me, both of the players at PSV, they still have like some sort of margin or progression to make. Because at this point, they are playing in some sort of way. They, they're not playing 100%. They haven't reached their peak performance yeah, exactly. just yet. So, exactly. to go back, talking about peak performance. Yeah. Yeah. Tio Bundy, a draw against Manu Bacioru. That's so insane. Insane, yep. insane individual results once again for him. So, um, but Emre Yomas, first game against Tom Dekis, a 4-1 victory for Emre. Yeah. Was pretty self-explanatory when you watch the game. It was pretty decent. Um, and he did a great job when he was playing that game. Second game, Manu against Dio, like you said yourself. Yep. He didn't really get into it. He didn't really get like into the flow. But um, I think personally that it's a very interesting matchup because Manu is the one that under pressure, when his back is against the wall, yep. can that's be one of the best, best ones exactly. to come back. And exactly. that's why I think that he can come in and really like make a difference. In the meantime, we are having Atakansu on the screen. There he Atta, is. make sure that you join uh, in uh, in the screen. Yeah, there you go. Sorry? You will always be in the show, and I wish that the camera can see you right now, because they need to see this shining face. Look <laughs> at that, there's a the camera, Atta. So, uh, give it a little wave for the people at home. There you go. So, Atta Kansu, you were the third player of Twente. You started as first or second, yeah, however you want to explain it. Um, and uh, afterwards, you came. So. First, second player, then you turned into a third player almost, I have to say, like reserve player, coach role. Yeah, you had a little bit of everything that you had to do. So, so you're like a polyvalent training player, trainer, trainer, next to one another. Tell me about this final today, like the finals in general. How did you feel it? How did you live it? Like, how was it for you to sit on the side and having to watch the boys play in the way they did? Wait, I'm, um, I think I'm going to give you the, the headset. It's not working properly. I'll give you mine. You talk to him, and I'll right. get back to you right there. We go that again. We run it back. So, Atta, second time. Talk to me about the game. How did you feel about this tournament? How did you feel about the finals? What were like for you personally the things that you will take away during this tournament? Uh, personally, it was uh, there were a lot of ups and downs. There were a lot of ups and downs this year. Um, I started uh, as a first player together with Brent. Um, Mika joined us as a third player, uh, rarely new in the scene. Um, yeah, I uh, dropped some very uh, yeah, bad performances in the start of the season. So that's why they chose Mika to, uh, to play for me instead. He did a very good job. It was his first season. So I'm proud of, uh, of their performance this year. Uh, and we are. Uh, yeah, we came just, we fell just short um, with Ajax and PSV, 
that's not a shame. I think uh, they are the best players in the world at the moment. And they're showing it nationally and international. So I'm very proud of the boys. Uh, we started as a team and we finished as a team. And uh, yeah. Do you yeah. have some words for the people at home, like the 20 supporters that are watching right now, that maybe dream of becoming a professional player, that maybe thinking about, they've been supporting the team. We have Brent and Mika, of course, next to us. So is there like something you want to say, something you want to get off your chest, something you want to like bring to the people? Uh, you can say there, there's yeah. the camera, it's all yours. Of course, to all the 20 fans, thank you very much. Um, for like years, we have uh, one of the best fans in the Netherlands. Um, and uh, if you want to join us, we are, Twente has always been really close with the fans. The fan engagement is amazing at the club. Uh, we have our own eSport box at the stadium. We have a lot of arrangements. So for the young fans that are dreaming of becoming an eSporter, um, they have always a chance at Twente. So the, who knows what the future brings for them. Anything for you in the future that you want to bring? Uh, you, I know you've been around the scene. You've been a, a talent player at Feyenoord. Yeah. Then you moved, of course. Now you're playing at uh, FC Twente. Um, what do you think for you? What should be next? Is this a job for you, being an analyst, being who a knows? caster? Who knows? I really enjoy it. But uh, I still have a dream. I still have the passion for playing the game. Um, and with FIFA, everyone knows if you don't have a clear mind, you won't perform that well. And for the last two, three years, um, I wasn't really there. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but now I'll you're coming back into it, so for you exactly. it's like restarting, you're getting restarting. back at your level. Okay, one more question from my side maybe. Yeah. Um, I know you're a big fan of music, I know you listen to a lot of music. So when you have to play, when you're prepping for a tournament like this, you have a lot of training days, you have a lot of training times. Um, yeah, we are, we are already setting up the, ne the next guy, but uh, yeah. you have a lot of training moments, you have a lot of like grinding moments. So what do you specifically do for kind of music or what do you put on? Give me just one artist. Uh, my top three, I would just give you my top no, three. No, no, one. You only uh, have one. It's really difficult. I have to choose between Jules, okay. D-Block, Europe and uh, Huncho. So you have English and French there? English and French. All right, Atta, that was it. Thank you very much for your time. I really Thank appreciate it. I see that there's somebody else waiting already for, uh, yeah. Get into the mic, so you yes, can give it to Max. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Yeah, Max. English, no problem. You can do yeah, that. You can handle it. Yeah, perfect. There is the camera, just so you can see it. Get a little wave. Say hi to the people at home. Hello, hello. Go. So, um, one question for me. World Cup? Confirmed. Confirmed? Yeah. Well, there you have it. World Cup confirmed for Max Rume. How, does you who do you, how do you feel now? Yeah, very happy and, of course, very proud of... Uh, PH and uh, Levy de Weer, they play really good all day, so uh, yeah, can be happier. Can be happier? Can't, can't. You can't Ca be happier, yeah. but they still, have a, they, have, they still have a final to play, how can't you be happier? Yeah. If they win that final, you're going to be even more happy, no? Or yeah. does it sting, even though you're happy for them, does it sting a little bit that you can't play yourself right now, that you have to watch from the sides? Mm, yeah, maybe a little bit, but of course, yeah, they just better than me, so it's lo logisch. Yeah, it's logical. It's logical that Paolo and Levy play the final and uh, I have so much confidence in them that they can win from uh, PSV. I was going to ask you a prediction, but you say already that they're going to do it. Are they going to do it in a 2-0 or is it going to be like a 2-1? I hope 2-0, I hope then the third, uh, the third match. The third doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, of course. All right, so talk me through, like, how do you get to Ajax? How did you get there? How is, how is the... Because you, you guys have a pretty big team. How is the feeling within the team? Because we have, of course, Rezende who's watching at home. He's doing a watch party. Yeah, guys, um, uh, at, at, In Brazil, right? Or is he here? No, he's in Brazil. He's in Brazil doing the watch party. So shout out to all the Brazilian uh, people at home watching us too, because they are watching. They're seeing you here. They're going to be celebrating and clapping. So just like this, <laughs> people here are doing. But talk us through your process within the Ajax squad. How do you feel? You have Nick as a coach. You have Levi, Paulo, uh, of course, Rezende too. Uh, as teammates, how, how does it help a young guy like yourself to get like more into that scene and even bigger? Yeah, so much because Levi and Paolo, they're like top three in the world, top two of the best players in the world. And also Nick gives me much confidence as a coach. And uh, we have a very good squad also with Pedro and Finn not playing in the EDVC this year, but still supporting us every day. And uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. It, mu it must be it must be good to learn from these guys. Like they they have tons of they have tons of confidence. That's for, for first and foremost. Yeah. But they also have a lot of experience. So if you talk about Levy exactly, he already won tournaments. Whether it's the online ones, whether it's the two v two cup with Onlito, you have of course 
Uh, PH Zin, who wins with Brazil, a back-to-back, -back, then the FC Pro Open. So Ajax has taken some trophies home. But I think this has been a while since they won this, this tournament. Is it like a, a goal for the club too, to try yeah. and win it? Yeah, it's like the biggest goal of the club, I think. Yeah, the Pro Open was nice, but Ajax as a club wants to win the National League, of course. So it means a lot for everyone. So, all right, we are as you as you have come a little bit closer. Watch that. Look at that camera right there. So at the left, tell them you're feeling right now. You qualify to the World Cup. What is the first thing you're gonna do? What is the first thing you're gonna say? Who's the first one you're gonna call to say like I've qualified? I've been I there. already called. I already called my mom and dad, and they are so proud of me, of course. And uh, yeah, let's see what we can do it at the World Cup. So. You're looking forward to it? Of course, of course. Are you going there for the win? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's what we love to hear. Thank you very much, uh, Max, for this uh, short interview. Thank, Thank you. you. Best of luck uh, at the World Cup, and then we will see you there. So, meanwhile, we are switching back to Inta Janssen. Yes. Janssen, sorry. Janssen. Yeah, there <laughs> no we go. Worries, no Inta Janssen. So, yeah. A lot of interesting information that came from them. Um, Nick was talking about the way that uh, Ajax has like a, a vision on this, that they, that Levy is not necessarily looking to win this tournament, that it's more like a, a way of like trying to play it out, having some feeling with Piagin. For Piagin, of course, he's used to these kind of things. I, I don't know in how far you could follow the, the conversation. Yeah, but, um, very difficult with, yeah. the, with the atmosphere here, of course. That, that's what I thought. Thank you for the explanation. But <laughs> Atai was more about like, how do you feel about the game? How is it yeah. as a third player? How, how do you cope with that? And then with Max, of course, he qualified for the World Cup. So yeah. for him, it has to be a dream and that he's living. Yeah. He said to me, this day can't get any better. And I said to him, like, wow. yes, but you still have a final yeah, to play exactly. at Ajax. Yeah, yeah. How could it not get any better then? And yeah. he was like, yeah, yeah, Personally, sure. It can, it can get a little exactly, bit better. Exactly. Um, if we need to do, like, um, looking forward to the next game that is coming, the last game, the final, let's go first over the rules, because the rules changing. Okay. Before we had aggregate score lines, yep. there was a home and an away game, and then we put them together, we see what the score is, exactly. and that would be it. Tra talk us through the format right now. So how is it going to go in this final? So um, instead of a best of uh, two, to, so to say, so that they're playing mm -hmm. two games, it's now a best of three. Right. So there's three games going to be played. Um, so either Levy or uh, PH in, same goes for Emmanuel and Emma, of course, have to play two games. So it's going to be very interesting to see uh, yeah, who's going to play uh, against who? And I think the matchup will be there. We go on the screen. Thank you very much. So Levy will be playing Emre, just you as call expected. It. You call yeah, it. You exactly. call it. And then PH against Manu. The thing is, with with this one, very particular um, way of playing, because if Levy wins and Manu wins. It's Levy and Manu that are going to play the final game again. Oh, wow. So the winner of each game yeah. will be playing the final game. If, for example, Ajax wins the first game and the second game, they are the champions. Same goes for PSV, of course. If it would be a draw, because we're not looking at the results um, over two games, we are looking at individual matches. So yep. we're going to extra time, we're going to penalties, we go all the way for each matchup. Right. Which is a different way of playing, of course, because before you could say, OK, Levy won 5-1 or 6-1. Now Piagin can be more relaxed because he knows his opponent has to attack. In this format, OK, Levy won 6-1, but they only have one point. Exactly. And now Piagin has to go again, play against uh, Manu, and has to win the game. It doesn't matter for Manu. He can play like, OK, there's a little bit more stress because you know that your teammate lost. But in some way, you're more relaxed because you can say, OK, I can turn this around. Yep. And if I win, I'm going to play the deciding game, and I'm going to win that deciding game too. So mentally, I think it's a completely different way of approaching the game. So for me, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting because, once again, me personally, I think each of these players can win one of one another. But now that they have to play best of ones yep. individually in a yep. best of three format, totally I think we're going to see a whole style. different way of like exactly. psychologically and yep. also uh, just being like in game. I think there's going to be way more celebrations. There's going to be yelling. There's going to be screaming. It's going to get loud. Will they mentally try to trigger each other? Like for example, Levy and Emmanu are not playing against each other, but they could. They know each other so well. Uh, meanwhile, we see PSV coming up uh, on the stage as well as I, uh, Ajax. Uh, of course, we see uh, Coach Nick sitting down right there. He talked about uh, the tactics uh, that they're going to uh, that they're going to use. Um, so, uh, to be honest, just to react again about what Nick said to you, like the fact that um, Levy is going to try and keep it a bit low key. I think that's that's 
very interesting to see because usually we, we don't see Levy at that way. Yeah, he's, he's chilled back. I think he's going to go and try and win this game, obviously, especially as the first one. But now the tactics change. And who else than Renzo and Brandon to explain to us what the changes are in this format once again and get us through the games. Yeah, thank you very much, Akeem. This is it. This is the Edevise Grand Finals. You have may have just seen across social media and more importantly on this broadcast where those tickets have gone for the e Champions League and the Grand Finals later on this year. It's been quite the day for a couple of players, such as Manny Bashore, who's guaranteed himself a ticket in this year's FC Pro uh, World Championships. And more importantly for Max, who was here a couple of minutes ago. Yeah. He's in the World Finals. What a story. What a story for him indeed. But the format change for this one, it's not aggregate Scotland anymore. It's the best of three. Yeah, and that would, well, definitely mix up some stuff because now you have to win your individual game. Yep. I think only Manu hasn't done that every single leg that they played thus far because Piazin won both his legs, Levy won both his legs, Emron won both his legs, and I think Manu drew against Gio in the end. But yeah, you now you just got all to win yourself and you can't rely on your teammate anymore. Although most of these players haven't as of yet. You're really going to be spoiled, like all I can say, for the next one hour, maybe longer if we go to a best of, uh, a best of three in a third match. You've got Emre Yilmaz up against Levy Vid. And then straight after that, you've got PH in against Manny Bashaw. I mean, you're just spoiled for games. I, I wonder, like every FC fan, FC, every FC pro fan, if you're looking into maybe jumping into the competitive scene yourself. This is the gameplay that you want to watch and learn of. These are the top four players in the Netherlands, but yep. also some of them arguably in the world. I'm not saying this is the top four of the world, but some of them actually proven themselves at the Pro Open already that they are. And we just kicked off Brandon, the first leg of the grand final of the seventh edition of the E Divisi. Ajax versus BSV Eindhoven, Levy versus Emre. Here we go. Here we go indeed. This is it. AFC Ajax against PSV Eindhoven. This year's 2024 Capi and Edevise Grand Final. Where do we start? Then Levy de Vier against Emre Yilmaz. Ajax kicking from left to right with the first real chance of the game. There's Levy. What can they make from this? sort of scenario. I mean, it was heartbreak last year for Levy de Vier. He came this close, representing Ajax with his teammate Finn, losing to the hands of Vitesse, who Manu Bashaw was on the opposite side of that stage. Alongside Damshi. That's the finesse from distance, and that's your first warning shot fired. This is going to be a mechanical battle between just top, top players that are just going to work you, they're going to play a lot you, they're going to what are Erling they Haaland, do? you, they're going <laughs> to cause so many problems. If you want to learn a thing or two about FC24 at a top level, this is the, the grand final to go and do it. Exactly that, Brenner. And as we saw there already, Levy getting into that position with Ruth Gullit, that finesse playstyle plus. He knew that he was, and Emre knew as well, and that's where he moved his goalkeeper to block that opportunity from Levy and we can see already the relentless pressure from Emre but Levy just being able to play out of it and getting into space on that wing Rolfo play a lot. the finesse. The ball inside Hullet. This has all been Levy so far. Flick on from Erling Haaland. Rolfo still waiting for the perfect pass to come through and a moment to breathe as Emre Yilmaz can get back on possession. Yeah and now for Emre Yilmaz it is Quadrado trying to find something here but doesn't manage to do quite so as Levy does intercept that one and first 15 minutes has been all for Levy thus far as he is able to just cancel out Emre's uh, fast-paced counter-attacks and work his way through that pressure. As well, it doesn't see. surprise many, Renzo, because Emre Yilmaz was fourth in terms of the individual player rankings for this year's Edevise season. What we mean by that is the points on the board, the goal scored. He's got 59 goals. You know he's full of attacking play. Yeah. And I must say, so uh, I've seen these players uh, battle against each other quite well, the amount of times. And even in some of the tournaments that uh, Team Khalid have hosted in the, in the past couple of years, and Levy's always come out of top against Emre, always. There's not been a single victory for Emre. So I'm surprised the fact that PSV didn't even change for the, uh, the grand final, judging 
that Levy would just play the first game. But here goes Yilmaz! A big cross! 23 what? minutes in and it's not Erling Haaland, believe it or not. He didn't even need a header to score that one. It was just, just on the half full. He tapped it in R9. It's one goal to nil PSV lead. Pick that one out. Pick that one out. Mbappe's left foot as well. And this is why you almost can't predict what Emery Yilmaz is going to do. I bet you Levy wasn't expecting this one. But we I said he's a goal scoring machine, Emre Yilmaz. 59 goals in the competition in the normal league format. The current e Champions League winner. He's going back there again later on this year. What I was going to say in the same breath of that, Renzo, is that defensively, Levy's one of the best players in the league. Yeah, I think uh, just the overall people will recognize Levy for his defensive display usually and his build up. And Emre, yeah, you can just tell, like, you said it, he was only one goal short of be becoming the actual top goal scorer of the competition. Scoring 59 goals, that's on average at least three goals a game. And even throughout the EDVC finals, he scored, what, five in the first one, four in the second one? And now he's already got one on board and it's up to Levy to see if he can reply in the same fashion. Here comes Levy. Finds it into our nine down this dangerous area. Cut back, it's a coming together in the box. He just about gets out of that one, but... Shaky, shaky uh, stuff been, there. That could have been a terrible <laughs> ending if the goalkeeper was to ricochet that one off to a centre-back, and you never know. You never know, indeed. But it was well done in the end by Emre, who finds the off the through ball there to Mbappe, managing to hold on to that possession. As we see, a dangerous play here. There's Haaland, there's that flick on, cuts it down into a nine off the post, and just about dealt with there, but you're seeing already for Emre Yilmaz, he goes from 60 to 100 miles an hour in a split second with a couple of step overs. Yeah, yeah, as he does indeed, but then Levy here, and it's on the other hand. We've got Furlon Mendy here for Ajax, trying to find an all-important equaliser, thank you very much. He did not need a striker, all he needed was the French defender. A little ball roll inside, outside the boot, we're all square here. Ajax 1, PSV 1. 60 to 100 miles per hour is not just Emre right now, it is apparently Levy as well, who realized that he might have to up the tempo in this game and expose Emre in the same way that he's trying to do with Levy. And yeah, this is just uh, FC at its finest. If you don't score your own chances, if you don't manage to convert them, although it was a bit lucky for Emre in the end to get that chance, Levy will just come back and strike against you. It's the perfect way to respond, One isn't all. it? Minutes. Minutes after conceding the goal. Yeah, this is exactly what you want uh, if you're Levy, who was dominating those first 15 minutes, we said it, and then Emre out of nowhere just manages to find a cross, gets that goal, and Levy just, yeah, trying to maybe not lose focus, thinking, okay, I was still playing good, but then obviously getting back a goal in the initial 10 minutes after. That's just beautiful. Quadrado whips it in deep. Van der Sar comes to save the day. That could have been. Great goalkeeper movement there from Levy. Realizing that Haaland was in. With that double tap triangle. It could have been an easy goal for Erling Haaland. Four minutes away from half-time. If you are just tuning in, this is our grand final for this year's Capien e Divise grand final. It's Ajax against PSV. It's Levy de Veerd against Emre Yilmaz in this first game. Then we'll go to our second match, which will see PH in take on. Manny Bashir, you've got a current world champion up against the current FC Pro Open champion two. That one should be fireworks. Remember, this is best of three. It's not aggregate score lines. We're playing to find an individual winner in every single individual game. And last attack actually goes to uh, Levy here. I thought that Emre was going to get that one, but it was a great offside trap. And let's see what Emre... Uh, sorry, Levy can still do with Rolfo here on that right hand side. This is becoming dangerous. Back post cross, Haaland. Lofted, isn't it? It's lofted so nicely. But then again, great interception from Fellon, Mandy. Uh, Levy just didn't get the right players in the box at that time. But those knock ons on Haaland, Brandon. 40, so 45 much. minutes in. I mean, we're potentially a quarter of the way through if this only goes to a second leg. What have we already seen already in that game? I mean, we've just seen, like you said, this was going to be a mechanical battle. Yep. You will see everybody using these mechanics to the perfection almost. I saw incredible goalkeeper movement from Emre on the finesse. I saw incredible goalkeeper movement from Levy. I've seen the, the knock-ons, the crosses, the unexpected things. We're just in for some great EAFC. Back. 
So 45 more minutes of constant pressure between these two. Oh, what is this? I'm not sure what happened there, Emre Yilmaz, but I, I think you've no been clicked a button. And yeah. you've just given away a corner. And you don't want to give away corners like these. Especially Emre himself scoring four already. Just watch Harland. Player locked off him. The idea was to get Vincent Company on the ball. De Bruyne might fancy that one on the edge of the box. Potatis is onside. Ball roll. Finesse. Corner again for Ajax. Let's watch again in the box because I'll get your opinion on this in a second, Renzo, depending on what happens. But corners is a conversation itself. There's Harland at the front post and two hands on it. I mean, for your pro players, how many corner routines do you have in mind? Uh, so, so, like, how many. Options. But ideas, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so um, at least <laughs> the boys from Azad had like eight. And I think with Levy, we dropped it down to like four. And Emre, Emre has one, but he scored it four times today. So yeah, that's all good. He just only trusts in that one and the other ones. So you're looking at multiple options, but yeah, corner kicks, we've seen it throughout the most recent tournaments, this tournament today. It's just... Get in on Haaland, no matter if it's the near post, if it's the back post, just get in on his head. I mean, it's all around him, isn't it? Whether you're flicking on or whether he's the man that's of course. scoring the goal. Mbappe peeled out on this forehand side. He's got two PSV players hassling him. Just jumping back to that, like, obviously, it's a crucial element in yeah, competitive play, just getting your set pieces right. As Rolfo is working his way, her way. Flicked it up to Haaland's corner again. I mean, we're speaking about corners. Let's see another one play out from Levy. It's three corners. And this is the, the third one. This in is about five three. in game minutes. Let's see what you can do from this scenario. We'll do again. We'll rework it back out to this side with Rolfo. Is Mbappé on side? Yes, he is. Haaland is there. You know what's going to happen. Let's Ajax make it 2 1. No one's going to stop him in the air. And we see his Levy's mother actually on screen, right there in support. And it's, yeah, it's just well worked in the end. Like I said, this was option free, taking it short, just getting a bit slower in the build up, and then finding Haaland again in that back post position. And a little late to realize that the cross was on. Maybe could have moved this goalkeeper, but yeah. You have to consider, take into consideration that there was more options, plenty of more options in the box. It's not as easy as it may sound. Emre Yilmaz, 2-1 down, 30 minutes left. What can you give us? Ajax take the next step forward in this grand final. I mean, it was only a matter of time, you could argue, Renzo, and it was just constant corners. There's only so many times you couldn't stop early in Haaland. From at least having a shot on target. Yeah, for sure. And this is what I mean. Like, Levy's just against Emre working that right hand side to almost perfection, where he has so many times the option to put that ball back in. But Emre just has to defend so much as, well, corner kick right now for Emre. He scored four already today. What should we see another one? Yeah? All right, then we will. PSV go down the other end. Did they score a corner? <laughs> I mean. Instantly. Brandon, this is, this is like you literally just asked me the question. I said, is there one option that he would go for? And it's been working perfectly for him. Because he's been running down that near post, like almost getting even further away from that near post than you might think, but baiting out the goalkeeper and just trying to get in front of the goalkeeper. And it's been working perfectly for him. Two all, 67 minutes, game on. Emre yeah, Yilmaz, 2-2 two, two, back in the game. You can have a feeling that this might actually go to a third game. In a best of three. I mean, honestly, we deserve it as well with these with these players uh, that are competing against each other. We just want to see it go out all the way down to the wire. If you're an FC Pro fan, Brandon, yeah, let's absolutely. be honest. Absolutely. Remember, it's 40,000 euro tournament in the Edivise. The winning team will get 20,000 euros in all the bragging rights. PSV have never won an Edivise across the past six seasons. The closest they came was in the first ever Edivise back in 2018. For Ajax, though, this will be the fifth final they've been in in the seven years of this competition. They are so consistent, but need by their own levels and remarks to get back lifting that trophy once again. You see an offside trap playing oh, there from Emre Yilmaz, and Mbappe will peel away in the space that's available. Is he offside? Yeah, he's offside. But Brandon, uh, four goals again. Three of them was Arlen. 
just one was up on R9, and that was the cross from Emre. <laughs> I mean, don't want to be increasing his price value, but that man certainly offers you a lot on the pitch in yeah. the game of EAFC 24. Referee will play the advantage there, Levy. And Bappe is battling oh. for it back to De Bruyne. And, and Pape fighting for uh, for Levy's badge there. Getting, uh, squeezing that one just a little bit in front of Virgil van Dijk. And Emre just trying to slow down now a bit. Obviously, we're getting into these dying minutes of the game. First leg, like you said, Brandon, it's a best of three format. You have to win the game. You can't rely on your teammate now as Emre looking to get that third goal. Haaland turning, twisting, it's great dribbling. R9, nah, doesn't manage to find that one. And it has, I mean, in all honesty, it's just been Levy controlling possession, getting in running around the box, and just Emre with two quick, well, quick attacks, one corner kick, one quick counter attack, and finding a cross. I don't know who's going to get this third goal, Brandon. I'm not going to lie. You could flip a coin, couldn't you, at this point? Yeah, because you should say, be saying, like, okay, Levy is do more dominant, but then here comes Emre Yumas. Let's see. Mbappe is there queuing up. R9's got loads of space. He just runs into Hullet, and again, possession will change hands again. A bit indecisive there from Emre Yumas as... He's winning back again. This could be a chance for Emre Yumas to snatch the game if he wants to. Back to De Bruyne. It will take a wicked deflection and just about go over the bar into a corner and a pause menu. We will go. If that was to go in, and that was to be the goal that was going to give PSV a slight advantage in game one, it would have been a terrible goal to concede. <laughs> I mean, Levy probably, Levy's always calm and collected, but I bet he was going to be boiling inside of his mind if he conceded that one. But let's see, another corner kick. Emre Yumas, is he going to do it again? You know where he's going. Punch back in. And he did go for a different corner kick there. I'm surprised. Maybe that's why it didn't work as well, Brandon. Didn't go for his trusty one. <laughs> didn't go for his trusty one. Look at Quadrado there. Remember, we've all got to do extra time if needed in individual matches here. This is the best of three now. The format changes for the grand final. So it's not a sort of two-match aggregate scoreline anymore. Big switch of play finds Quadrado on this far-hand side. 88 minutes. We'll look to cause some problems for Alfonso Davies. We'll spin him, we'll twist him, we'll turn him. Who's going to be the player to take the shot from here? Tony Cruz whips it in the air. You know what he's trying to do? Oh, he's perfect from Levy! Lionel Messi! With the touch of God to potentially give Ajax the first win in this series. But that build-up play, it came from Haaland. You were thinking the ball was going up in the air and we're playing headers and volleys, but no. Just touched it down. One more pass. Lionel Messi, thank you very much. That's a beautiful, beautiful combination there. Obviously, it's it's tough for Emre because you can't win that aerial duel. You just can't. And then, yeah, it's just quick passes. And it's already dragged out of position, but it's just very composed from Levy to, yeah, find those passes and the finish as well. I think he moved the goalkeeper in the right direction, but the chance was already there. Lionel Messi, who else would you want to step up in the 90th minute for you? Well, what a chance this is now for Ajax to just see out these last couple of in-game minutes. We should give them the first win next to the name in this best of three series. You can see what Emre Yilmaz is doing on the opposite hand. He's just packed his midfielders, his midfield, sorry, full of attackers. He's got five attackers in there. Messi just doing enough, as I said. Just getting in past Van der Sar there with his right foot even. Well, Emre Yilmaz has uh, maybe one... 2-2, two, two in-game minutes, and then that doesn't help, Brandon. That's a mistake that I'm not used to see Emre making. Three in-game minutes, actually, I don't know. Okay, so there's still time. It's never three minutes. <laughs> never in six-minute halves, for sure. We're going to see it. another goal, mate, for Levy. No, he's more mature in these moments, just to take time out of the game. That's two minutes gone already from the game. And that should, unless Emre can get the ball past the halfway line. Sidney on Goma on the left-hand side. It's a long ball over the top. The referee will play on. It's Alfonso Davies. Can he outsmart 
Juan Cuadrado is going to run off the pitch. Lofted it in into Mbappe. He needs to win the header, and that should do us for game one. Ajax take the first win in the series, but there is still more to come. Oh, what a day is Levy having. He's won all three games today, and I must be honest, like, he was the dominant player. He had the possession, he had the chances. It was just Emre who was literally <laughs> just maximally capitalizing his chance that he got, but it wasn't many. And Levy, 3 2 in the first game. PhD, <laughs> he's got a game to win the championship for Ajax. Yeah. I would never, never second guess to put somebody in a position than pick PAC to do that job for me. Well then, that's the end of the first match of that. You're absolutely right on what you said there from Levy David. It's, uh, it's a very different Levy we're seeing in this grand final. So composed, so calm. Why do you think, it, do you think he was just that good on the ball, possession-wise, defensively, that he just minimalised Emre Yilmaz from having any real chance other than a corner? I mean, the build-up was incredible. Uh, honestly, I think if he looks back at it himself and just me, if I would have an analysis session with him, I would say, like, just take this game. Your build-up was 99% perfect. I think he lost the ball twice in the end, where, where there were some sketchy situations. But And Emre, his pressure is usually something that gets him the ball up high. He's able to punish you for that. But Levy just didn't make a mistake. Yeah. And when Emre pulls out his defenders and tries to put that pressure up high, there's space in behind. And he utilizes that perfectly, getting down that right-hand side every time, being able to reach Haaland. Just a great great game from Levy. And still, oh, look at this game, Renzo. Look at this. This is in the E of Eze, which is... This could also be... This could be an FC Pro World Championship final. It almost was. It Brandon. was. It, it almost was. The PSG got a top four, didn't he? It almost was. If he uh, if, if he didn't lose the penalty shootout against Mark, then it would have been the final exactly that we're looking at right now. And let's be honest, these guys faced each other off in a painful E Nations Cup final for myself and for those guys. And just one guy walking away happy for it with smiles there. Who do you think feels more pressure in this scenario? PAG um, knows that his teammates not done anything wrong today. He's won every single game. He's teed him up in the best way possible. But on the other side, for Manny Bashaw, he has to win this game to keep them in the series. I think I think the pressure is on Manu in the end. Uh, I think PAG will know that as well. But then again, yeah, I don't know. It's it's a tough question because Manu also has nothing to lose. I had the same position when I played the Edifice Finals back then. And it's tricky though because you know that if you lose, you're actually you literally lost the championship. And nobody, in the end, is going to remember that first game. It's always that second game that concludes the championship, and it almost feels like you lose it. So I do think the pressure is on Manu a bit more. And I'll be right in saying this as well that if Manu was to win this, that'd be three divisas in a row. Yeah, and you could arguably say four because in the first one that PSV actually won they, because they were in like that final with Dennis and Ali they won and Manu played one game during that season I think two actually it was against VVV and guess who else against Vitesse and guess who was playing there one Levy of course <laughs> and he beat him 1-0 and I was on the second leg playing against PSV Dennis. I don't know if you remember yeah, it. Yeah. Dennis Rufin. What, what a player? Yeah, he was an incredible player indeed. And yeah, that was one of the two games that Manu played in that regular season then. And in the end, PSV ended up winning the finals. So arguably he has three titles already. He could create a dynasty. I saw Paolo Neto doing it last time. Yeah. Let's see if Manu can do that as Let's well. Let's see if Manu can do it because it would be yeah, a great story for them indeed. As the game has already started. I think it has. Let's jump into it now if we can. PSV Ajax back on the way for the second time. Man of short, kicking from left to right. Has it all to do? He needs a win here to take us into a game three. If PH in can do anything like he's done all year so far, it will be Ajax back to winning ways here in Amsterdam. And picking up another E de Vise trophy next to their name. Brandon, I can tell you this game is going to be on a very high level of pace. Manu Bachor facing off PA Zin in the second leg of the Edivisi Finals. And like we said, Manu has it all to lose for PSV because if he loses, that means Ajax are crowned Edivisi, KPN Edivisi Finals uh, champions. 
and Piazin still has a game in hand. If he loses, then there's still a third game. This could be a gift. Patias, Piazin, what can you do from here? Pull it takes it again. Goalie goes down to ground. It's a horrible deflection. Well blocked in the end. Lucio having that playstyle plus as well, which does help you out a very, very much blocking those long shots like a Travella, like a finesse. But let's see. Mondi here for Manu. Great dribbling. Oh, that's a little bit unfortunate there, I think, on the touch of Ruth Hullet. But let's see. PSG, yeah. The legs there, Mbappe. Mbappe could be through for PAG. Ball roll inside or two. Goes on his own. Time green from Mbappe. And just like that, PAG will open up his account in this grand final. He just doesn't feel the pressure. He's so relentless. He's so relentless whenever he gets that space, just dives into that, runs oh, literally onto you. He's just taking you on, Brandon. And then whenever there's a shot from PAG, I can tell you there's only one color that it is, and it's green. This one as well. Time green to perfection in that far corner. And Manu, he's probably thinking, like, does that really need to go in? But, yeah, for some reason with PAG, it always does. And it, might have spotted a small amount of goalkeeper movement there towards that near post that may could have caused so bad. And how hard is it to time it green every time? Because for these pros, it's just it's just easy. It's just muscle memory, but it isn't that easy. It isn't that easy, especially on these well circumstances. Playing a game for well an additional ten thousand euros, but it's just a title as well. The pressure of your teammates all in the back as well, and. Different animations, different players that you have to consider, take into consideration. What animation are you going to get before the shot goes off? It's not that easy as it may look. Speed team defends well there, blocking Manu. He's just the one thing you've got. You've got two experienced players that have played in such big games, big tournaments, big finals. They've experienced this level of adrenaline before and this pressure as PAG in. Looks to find a second potentially here, Pateus. Well, find that big switch of play into Rolfo. Then you keep an eye on number 99 on the screen. Erling Haaland and Mbappe still looking for a second. PAG in, looking to cause nightmares in the box for Manny Bashir. Yeah, he certainly is. And this is something I spoke to Levy about yesterday even as well. Like, he, he was practicing all week with PAG. And he just says, man, whenever that guy gets in the box, I don't know, man. It's just something else. And coming from Levy, who's one of the best defenders, I think, in general. That says something, and we saw it there, but let's see what... Massive switch! Oh, it's a save from what Van der Sar. That was from Quadrado on Erling Haaland. But a massive save there, indeed. Well, let's, let's see, see from this corner, which hasn't been dealt with properly. It's another corner again. And it's PSV. Manny Bashor will get another. Chance to move this one for Ronaldo. Back to Haaland, just like that, Raw Square. And of course, it's him scoring again. The Norwegian giant, Brandon. Just nice. keeps coming from <laughs> corners, Renzo. Man, and not even, right, this one wasn't even a header. What a, what a phenomenal foot item. Three players around him, and it still goes through. 0.25 XG, as we saw there, Brandon, but yeah. Game on, game on, and let's see what, how Paulo Henrique will treat this because obviously it was quite the same display. Like Levy was controlling the possession a bit more in the in first 15 minutes. Same for me in this game for Paulo. But then again, PSV come out with one, one just a little break, and then they get a corner kick, and it's 1 0. And definitely something for Manu to build up on from because he definitely wasn't feeling it. We saw some controller settings being changed as well. Just double checked after that goal from PSG. Now he probably is feeling like, okay, the, the stuff that I changed is working. Well, I think he turned off the controller vibration, which was did he? Which was Actually, one of them. So yeah. I, don't, I don't blame him for that. It probably was a bit of a shock when your <laughs> controller starts vibrating. <laughs> when you, when yeah, you're for playing sure. and PSG just scored against you, your controller starts vibrating. Here's another chance. Oh. It just falls back very kindly to that rude hullet, the ultimate birthday one that He's ridiculous. Mbappe around the corner. De Bruyne. Oh, what a goal. What a goal. We'll flip the game on his head and it's Manny Bashore. 
Wow. He's now back in the driving seat. I must admit that was a fantastic goal, Brennan. Did you see how many, how many mechanics Manu actually triggered? At? Look at this creative run from De Bruyne. He triggered him towards the byline a little bit, then triggered him again so he would make that run into the box. Finding one or two extra passes before he actually finds KDB, who wasn't quite a tough angle, Brandon. But KDB on that right hand side, he has done some magical stuff from for Manu Bachur. Well, what is it? The past six to seven months or so, winning him a world championship and now putting him ahead in the EWZ finals against PSG. If you're unfamiliar as well with the restrictions in play here, no budgets, but. Up to four icons slash team of the year. That De Bruyne is one of Manu's important picks in the team. PHG looking to reply instantly with Erling Haaland. What a block from Lucio. Oh, that's a massive tackle. I thought PHG did get past Manu's Bachur, uh, Manu Bachuri's defense there, but in the end, it was a wonderful slide tackle there. Uh, well placed, well timed. And PHG will probably look back at that one. Bit frustrated, maybe. As 41st minute, I think it's a little, little too. Well, suddenly, it's Manu starts scoring a couple of goals now. You can see the difference in the confidence. Exactly. When he's on the ball, he's so much more positive. He knows he can break down PH in. For sure, for sure. Like I said, this was going to be a high goal scoring game, and right now, we're actually going to be looking at PH in trying to get this last attack. That's a brilliant feed from. Rolfo and Mbappe is in. Can he find the cup that he's looking for? R9 will try his best to play to Haaland, but it's just not going to happen, and that should Brilliant. be a really perfect half overall from Manu oh. Mishore, who went 1 0 down early doors. Look at this KDB again, but it gets Varane. It's a 2 1 up, as that ball should go out of play. Yes, it does. That's half time in between the two legs. Remember, PSV have to win this game to take us to a third and final matchup. I'm up for it. I'm up for it, Brandon. Are I feel you? Like it's going that you way. I feel like energy? it has to go that way. Yeah, I mean, we like I said, with these players, it would rightfully so deserve a third leg to determine who is actually the best team. I don't know exactly on the rules. You can maybe correct me on this. Do they choose who plays the third game, or is it the two winners? So, so I had to be Levy and Manu. And yeah, they can pick. They so can pick. They can pick. Uh, let's see. This but could be a ridiculous early start, by the way. We only just come back into the second yeah. half here, and PSV. On a Whoa! Sure, show him what he is all about here in Amsterdam. How about that one? Teed up, didn't need Erling Haaland. I'll have a power shot instead. Boom. Thank you very much. PH in. He's feeling the pressure now. I have to say, you asked me how's Manu looking um, before, I think it was the semi final uh, or even the quarter final. How's he looking in terms of his level early early area in the season? He wasn't feeling himself. And I said, like, prime Manu, I think he's back. Then semi-final Manu, I didn't see that. But right now, damn, he is doing some. Oh, my. Oh, my. PAC could be in serious trouble here. Can Manu make the most of this chance? No, he can't. Should have probably taken that shot there. But PAC is definitely feeling the pressure right now from Manu. So with this in mind, if, if this was to stay the same, we'll be going into a third and final matchup. Who's going to play? Do, who do you think plays? <laughs> yeah, I mean... I think, I think we, we know the answer. I think it could be a Levy Manu. But is PA it's Zing, tough, is PA, it's is, tough. No, is PA going to back himself to go into that third game after losing this one? Yeah, I, like, I, he think, should. I, think, he, I think he won't. But I'm just trying to dive into the brain of Manu here as we see a chance again. Power shot, fake, but good defense from PSG. I just feel like he, he doesn't really think that Emre shouldn't be able to beat Levy. So he's going to ask Emre, and I think Emre will just say, Manu, you play. So yeah. Manu, Levy seems more likable. But then again, what is PSG going to do? I don't know. Again, there is still 32 minutes or so left to be played here. PSV, a 3-1 up. And Manu is playing out of his skin right now. That little reversal has to go pop up into a finish for R9. We're seeing some fantastic EFC here from Manu. He is, yeah, he's cooking. Yeah. He's Sorry, cooking. I have you back there. Um, it's, a, it's a very interesting game, this one. You're right. 
he went one nil down early doors. PA, uh, sorry, Manny Bashaw, and he just he didn't look like he was at the races. Scored one goal from that corner. Game completely changed. Now he's giving PA's in a really good game. Let's jump back into it now if we can. I don't because there's another corner to come in towards that front post. Honestly, I don't think after that corner kick, PAG really has had a chance. Manu, it's all been Manu. But then again, these players, they have kind of the same characteristics as in, if you give PAG a little bit of energy right now, if he gets a scrappy goal, just, you're just in anything, serious trouble. Yeah, yeah, you're in serious trouble. And that was the same with Manu. Manu got that, that corner kick and was a bit scrappy before that. PSG might get a little upset, but Manu feels, OK, we're back, we're back. Such a confidence play, isn't it? So many moments. It is, and this, again, brilliant feed from Manu, just being able to dribble out of that pressure from PSG. And now KDB getting it out wide. Quadrado. One more goal, could make the gap too big. Oh. Power shot again, he loves it. <laughs> I think he's overdoing it now a little bit, but he, yeah. Can you blame him, really, after scoring that one? I mean, he might have another one coming up very soon. Quadrado, back to Mbappe. Oh, it's electric from Manu Bashore. He finds a fourth. Wow. And I think we might be going into game three. <laughs> P.A. Jin is just left speechless. Okay. I mean, even... so. For those that don't know, I look at these guys every single day. I work with them every single day. And I haven't seen him play this good in a long time. I knew he was playing well, but I think Manu right now is playing out of his skin. And you can't even blame PHC right now. And what do you think that is? Uh, it's this stage, man. He's won it three times, like I said. Like, he's won it two times himself, three, three times in total. He wants that. Dynasty, like I said, I think he wants that gif as well, you know, where Paolo was like, Paolo Nero was in the EMLS, he was like doing one, two, three, counting his fingers. It's just Manu that doesn't want to lose against Levy as well, I think. They have a rivalry going on, uh, both as a friendship. He's not going to let this go uh, decided by him beating Emre. He wants to go challenge Levy. It just feels like it's going to happen, though. It feels like it's destined to be a... A Levy de Vier against Manny Bashaw matchup. Remember, they can choose who plays the third game. There's no set rules of who has to play. Let's be honest, Brandon. Wasn't it like three, four years ago? I think it's three years ago, three and a half, that you did some hosting some online tournaments and you always saw that Manuel Bachor underscore and Levy de Vier that you were like, who are these kids? And they faced off against each other in the finals. And one time, I remember it was one of your tournaments that was run online you were like who is this kid let me the weed <laughs> and, and then like one tournament later who is this kid Manuel Bachur and now they're up against each other probably in this grand final in the third leg but let's see if PHC still has something and to think he's on from that one's become a world champion and one has won so much as well that EA Sports Cup that 2v2 tournament both established names in the season I remember the days when Levy did used to play in a hundred dollar PlayStation tournament. That one, yeah, PlayStation head to tournament. Head with yeah, yeah, yeah. Liverpool <laughs> against PSG or Liverpool against Real Madrid. 95 rated mode, and he was grinding. <laughs> just just grinding tournaments out, getting reps in. For sure was. But let's not count out PSG in 73rd minute. Solov's come on now. That's his ultimate birthday item, which will give you the oh. same sort of body and feel as Harlan for a, a lot, lot, lot cheaper. So now on both ends, he has an option to crawl, whip it into. But yeah, like we said, this is a statement from PSV for sure. 76 minute, and I think it's already going to be a little bit of an un impossible mission for a P8 team. As Manu is just yeah, controlling the game right now. Will we see the pressure from P8 team? Again, just... Great feet, staying composed is Manu. <laughs> and he does win a corner kick at all. Just taking yeah. more time out of the game. 12 minutes away. 79 minutes From in three goals, Brandon. It's just mathematically already it kind can of happen, impossible. but maybe not when Manu's oh! trying to find a fifth. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not. You have to get that ball out of his feet somehow, in some way. De Bruyne. Goalkeeper movement there, yeah, this, and this is just smart, yeah. 
I mean, mind controlling the game. It might not be the prettiest. You're up against but... PAG, you're not going to be an idiot. You know what I mean? You're going to look <laughs> after the ball. I mean, you're going to hold on to it. You've experienced it yourself yesterday, how quick it can go against PAG. Yeah, it can go pretty quick. Yeah, that's why. Final seven minutes. As we said, if you have just tuned in, this is the Edivizo finals. We've already confirmed who will be get, taking the FC Pro World Championship spots. Manabe Shaw gets one of those and Max of Ajax. E Champions League already confirmed as well. Four more tickets given away to that competition, which happens in May of this year. Yeah, I don't know if it'll be nothing more than a consolation if PAG was to get one now. But Ajax won the first game right at the death. Levy David beating Emre Yilmaz. Manabe Shaw will take down PAG in game number two. So we will be going to a third game in this best of three format. The question is, who steps up to the plate? We think that it will be Levy and Manu, but let's see what, what will happen and what discussions will happen between the teams the teams and the coaches, really. Yeah, but like this is also, it's, it's just going to be very special as well because this third game, the player that wins that, Brandon, he will feel he's won the EDVC finals for his team, right? The third leg, it's all about, it doesn't matter if it's Levy, it doesn't matter if it's Manu, it doesn't matter if it's Emre, it doesn't matter if it's PSG, if you win that one. I mean, the one that matters, isn't it? You are the man of the hour, for sure. Well, there, what performance has been from Manu. He went 1 0 down early doors to PA Jin and has forced a third game for him and his teammate, Emre Yilmaz. Handshakes between the two, and now this is where the conversations will start to happen. Who's playing game three? The most important game I think it's Levy. of the series. You'd have to say Levy. On the side of Ajax, I know it's PA in. I know it's PA in. A player that's achieved so much, but he's just come off the back of a loss, and he's got to go straight back into a game that's going to be even more pressured for him. Can he reset mentally and really back himself in that scenario? I just feel like he's still he's still in talks with Nick. I'm not sure if that's like about okay, how, what did I do wrong, or if he's discussing right now with his coach. I want to play. What do you think? Judging, I mean, we can only go by body language right now. From what I can tell there, I'm feeling that, I mean, they've both just gone for, a, I'm guessing, a quick break. I don't, I don't <laughs> see Emre Yilmaz playing this game. I don't see no, it. No, Emre, Emre is not, because I think he would have, oh, that makes sense. He's being questioned for her to come for an interview. Again, you speak Dutch, I don't. So we'll try and translate that as in. best as uh, we can there to work out what on earth he's going on. Remember, we're going to our third final matchup here. They don't the know yet. E they don't know who's playing who. They can choose who plays this final game. Remember, 20,000 euros on the line and the trophy and the bragging rights. I mean, Levy won his game. Manny Bashaw beat PAs in in a really, really top, top performance. And you said you've not seen him play this well for a long time. It for seems like he's time. playing like I said, out this, of his skin. This was, I mean, the highest level I've seen him play even since the World Cup, honestly. And like I said, this is the perfect time to do so. But then again, how, can he do that against Levy? I think Levy is just the type of player that doesn't allow Manu or Emre to play in that way. But Manu's done it before, last year. He beat, um, he beat Levy in that game and he won Fitas the EDVZ Championship. This has been the road to how both these teams got to our grand finals today here in Amsterdam. Eight, uh, eight teams came originally. We had quarterfinals, semifinals, and a grand final. I mean, convincingly across the board, this is the first time we've seen Emre Yilmaz have a, a bit of a struggle, and it's the first time we've seen PA Jin have a bit of a struggle in terms of losing matches, because look at the results they've had. Yeah. Seven threes, seven fours. Ajax have played ridiculously well. Nine two, nine three. There's I such a team element with the aggregate scoreline throughout this. Again, it does change now in the grand final because we move away from that. But I think you have to argue in the nicest way possible, the quality of player that we're seeing in this grand final has just been around more, he's been to international competitions. You look you look at those four players, you've got a World Cup winner, you've got an E-Nations winner, you've got an FC Pro winner, you know, you've got an EA Sports Cup winner in there as well, E-Champions League winner. They call the Edivise the home of champions because the players that are in this grand final are all champions in their own right. Yeah, for sure. And it's just this com competitive scene that we have in the Netherlands right now, they're just forcing each other to be more 
well, to be better every every single week. And you, you can't quite see it right now. I mean, we can see it behind us, but there's some chats happening off stage. Yeah, actually, there's a <laughs> there's a group forming uh, there backstage is a group, from I see, I could just see PAs in Levy. And Nick De Harmer, the coach of that team, they're in in-depth conversations of who's going to play this final so, matchup. So for sure, this hasn't been determined as of yet. We because thought you, Levy you don't walked plan away. For it though, do you? I think in your mind you could all. You, I mean, it's not. It's not that you don't plan for the third game. It's you don't plan for who plays the better of the two exactly. in your team. So you don't know. And you don't know what's going to happen yeah. on the other side of it as well. So it's a tough one. Again, for those that are watching online. Let us know in the comments who you think should play this final matchup. As we said, Levy won his individual game uh, with PA Jin losing uh, his second matchup. Manny Bashaw won his matchup for PSV as well. If Manny Bashaw was to win this today, it would be three years in a row where he's obviously been playing the whole season. Won it twice in a row for Tesse. This will be the first win for PSV since they, uh, they picked up the trophy with Ali Rizaragon and, and Dennis all are that you, time ago. Are you going to stick with uh, your initial prediction? Ajax. The Ajax. I mean, you said Ajax as well. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> Do you stand with it? Uh, okay, it. okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna fence? say no. I'm gonna say one thing. If Levy plays, I think Ajax will win. If PSG plays, I think Manu is gonna win. You're backing it because you I, I think performance. You're backing against PSG. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but I think Manu will continue playing, and ju just based on. How I know Manu, Manu, if he beats a player once, he thinks like, oh, I could beat him again. So yeah. if, we, if we just stand apart here, Renzo, you go that way a second, go the other way. You can just see there, oh, yeah. where's my finger? There. There, you can just see PH in, the back of PH in. There's a little meeting going on right there. PH and Levy DeVeerds, there's a cameraman. Oh, here we go. We're a bit late. OK, it's Levy. But Levy's in. Yeah, yeah, Levy's yeah, in yeah we can tell there. We can <laughs> confirm. Um, the decision has been made on the opposite side. We're expecting Manu to probably. Wait, what? What? what, what? P wait, PH Jin's playing. What? PH Jin against Manu. That's what that's what we're doing. Emre Yilmaz is keeping his training jersey on. We'll be seeing him probably at the Champions League. He's not playing in this matchup. It's going to be a repeated fixture. Wait, I'm 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 Are you super confused. On that? Yeah, I'm I'm really confused. I mean, unless we've got the rules completely wrong, and there has to be a, a, a you, have <laughs> to play, you have to play the second match again. But we believe you could choose who you want to play in that final match. No, as we said, I, I have uh, like I had the rules. Uh, I even asked Nick you know, because I I could assume that I'd Nick love to was go and ask Nick involved. the decision now. Yeah, they have, maybe afterwards we can still bring him in, but. I'm 100% uh, sure that this rule set is like he can tr uh, For PA, choose. For PA, it is, though. Another bit, bit more pressure, just ramped up? Uh, yeah, but I mean, the guy, the guy, yeah, it's PA Zin. It's, yeah, it's PA Zin. <laughs> Zin. Like, he's been under, like, performing under pressure incredibly. And, but, I, okay, so I know Levy for five years, almost six. He would never say, okay, I'm not playing. Never, ever. He always believes in himself. So, it's just that's why I'm so sure because I can tell you 100% he didn't say okay you play so this is a coach's decision and that's all fair I mean no hard feelings or anything that's Nix's choice we're jumping into it we're getting into it right now this Let's is game number three off. here we go Ajax against PSV to, to determine who is going to be this year's E de Vise champions it is PH in against Manu Bishaw, FC Pro Open champion against the current world champion for 20,000 euros. And this could be a perfect start for Ajax. What a tackle from Lucio. Oh, penalty on the doors. Three minutes in penalty. What? And for Ajax and PA's in. This is the perfect start to get this grand final moving, which he does. Ajax lead by a to nil in just minutes. I mean... Brandon, what? He looked like he what, won the ball. What, was that what, was that a penalty kick? And this is no. I just asked you in the semi-final. Why does PHC always find these scrappy moments in these massive games? And here you go. This was. Uh, I mean, I don't see a, a potential foul in there any time of the day. Well, it was loose show, wasn't it? Originally, it looked like he scooped the ball away. Yeah. From the player. Well, let's see how Manu can respond to that because uh, obviously he has a lot of time to work with. So it's very simple. Whoever wins this game will be this year's EWZ champion. And this is uh, typical PAZ in there. 
just turning up in a different engine. But this is what happened in the other game before. I know it wasn't a penalty, but the scoreline was the same. He went 1 0 up, and then Manu came back flying, winning, as we said, 4 1 in the end. That's true. And Manu just needs to think okay, I had him fully, fully broken. Like, I was turning him apart, and now he did find something. But I just need to remain calm and stay to the, stick to my game, and then it should be all right. Let's see. That was a good interception there from Lucio. Shouldn't be losing his head, Manu, here too early, but it doesn't look like he did. I mean, if it was a red card, that would have completely... Oh, yeah, I expected that. I expected that as well to happen. Fourth minute red card penalty kick in a final. Le third leg. Which just killed the game, wouldn't it? I'm set for Manu be short. On the how how nice is this for Piazin as well? Like, dude, obviously he feels that pressure. You you said it. Like, is it added on pressure that he needs to perform now as well with that decision? Everybody was questioning that decision. I think um, to score a penalty kick like that in the in the early minutes of the game. Also, for him, he knows the commitment that Ajax have made to him. Bring him over to Europe. Yes, he performed so well in the FC Pro Open. That's dinked. Now to furl on Mendy. This is PH in steel. Just reworking the chance. That's a great interception from Goretzka. Finding Leon Goretzka's feet. But for him, he's been out. He's been in the Netherlands now for the last couple of months. His family have been here as well. His brother who was at the FC Pro Open. I saw him earlier today as well. They've been living here in Amsterdam. They've been living and breathing FC Pro. So there's certainly pressure there that he feels he's got to live up to it. Again, he's just qualified for the Champions League. He's already at the biggest event of the year later on this season. Long ball over the top. Fell on Mendy. Interesting touches. Well, it's out well for him. Arline again. Be careful of those swooping tackles, which this time was outside the box. But Virgil van Dijk got it right. I think it was the only thing, really, that Manu had left. Uh, so I understand that decision. But <laughs> fair play to him that he still... Uh, Trust his slide tackles after that challenge. He's around the corner, is he onside? No, he's not. Mm. I think Manu might have some second thoughts about his referee uh, at this point. Let's see what uh, Piazin can do. As these kind of side calls right now, you can almost celebrate it as if you score a goal in these tight circumstances. The thing is as well, knowing Piazin and knowing how... Hello, Mbappe. Just to say, Van der Sar. Knowing how I, I. Oh no, be careful. Oh I, yeah. <laughs> how shy P. A. Gin is as a person. I can't imagine he was very vocal in that meeting. I, 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 reckon, like Nick, I, said, I, I reckon don't know. Coach Nick would have just went, right, this is what we're doing. He's playing. In Listen the, to me. In the, me. in the Brazilian scene, I know, like that. <laughs> but he, he, is, wasn't going he, down there, he wasn't going down there, Vamos, him, was he? No. He just lost 4-1. Oh. Mbappe. Oh, look at it there. That's going to fall back. That's going to fall to play. What to say, Van der Sar? That's not even a save, Brendan, I don't think. I think he just stood there and he, he managed to get that ball. But okay, maybe not what to save, saved. Saved, saved by Van der Sar. <laughs> saved by Van der Sar. going back down the other end straight away. Furlong Mendy cuts it back into our nine. Who's juggling it around the box for PA Gin? Is the keeper going to get there? No, he's not. He's given possession back again to Ajax. And suddenly you can start to see the, the pressure. The tension is so building these two are under. in this arena, Brandon. It's slowly coming through Ajax, as we said, a leader by a goal to nil. Winner of this will win this year's E Divisa in its seventh season of running. Oh, that's a great interception from Varan. No foul given there as well. We turn away. Piazin getting a lot of plays forward now. This could be dangerous. Is he going to find a second before half time? Quadrado all the way out from a full back ball. Very fortunate to get the ball bounced back to his feet. And is uh, playing some risky passes out of the back. And Piazin, when he notices stuff like that, he smells blood. Yeah. This is a better build up from Manu. Quadrado just Goretzka left around the corner for a second. Could I try and set himself up for a one on one battle? Didn't really fancy it. Now we go back down the other way. Hey, no. 
Brilliant for the last chance of the half now, PH in. Yeah, as he's building up this last attack once again. Mandi in a lot of space. This Look at the back post. post. There's Mbappe, it's PH in! And he's not even on target! <laughs> Maybe that is a little compensation for what happened to that early, early penalty kick that we saw earlier for Manu, as he definitely counted that one probably himself. It would be even sweeter if Manu couldn't oh. snatch an equalise before half-time. Varane goes down to ground. <laughs> Referee waves that one away. <laughs> what a challenge. And half-time between the two, PAZ and Ajax leads. Manu Bishore, PSV by a goal to nil, 45 minutes away for being crowned this year's Edivise champions. Yeah, and I think like Manu, like I said, that top-notch performance from last game, don't, haven't really seen the same style of play that he was able to show in that one in this particular leg. So fair play to, uh, to PSG, and probably deserved the second goal there as well. Then again. That Mbappe header, you saw it coming the whole way. How's he not got on target? Yeah, uh, I don't know, Brandon, but then again, it is manual. You never know, you never know. Maybe he did aim a little bit too much to the right-hand side of the, of the goal. And then again, we also had that weird save from Van der Sar from Manu. So, I mean, yeah, both probably deserved the goal more. Um, but that would still put Ajax up in the lead. So we're looking at this 1-0 deficit for Manu. Can he turn on the Jets again? Or is PSG going to do what he does every time? Again, winning championships. Well then, back underway we go. 45 minutes away from finding out who will be crowned 2024 FC Pro Capiani Divise champions. Will it be Ajax? After a couple of years, they've had to wait to get back up there again. PSV Eindhoven. Looking to make it two Edivise trophies. And for Manny Bashaw, a third in a row. As it is Mondi here on his left hand side. Mondi just using that technical dribbling. Finding Goretzka. Goretzka. He saw the idea there, punch it into the feet. And this is where it gets dangerous. PSG on the where he can break with pace if he wants to, Mateus. Mateus the lift stepping up there. As Manu did make that substitute then, taking out Lucio, who was on a yellow. And Mbappe is as well. So he, he just wants to be careful, doesn't he? For sure. You don't want to get that Mbappe part. for Manu Bishore. There's the goalkeeper movement. It's lofted into Haaland, who will still try and get there. It was Rolfo that just guessed a second too quick. And the ball also wasn't superb, was it, into Erlin Haaland. He had to really try and work at that to get on the ball. No, it definitely wasn't. Van Dijk is struggling a bit there with the pace of Mbappe. Mbappe. Again, De Ligt, he's fresh off the bench, made that decision though. Great defense there. Curious to see what Manu has in store for us. I feel like a goal from Manu. Extra time, take <laughs> us to penalties. Oh no. Again? Take us to pens again. <laughs> <laughs> I think these, these guys have both uh, quite some history with pens. Here we go, Goretzka. Is this an equaliser coming to Bruyne? Love the idea there. He just tried to disguise that pass into the feet of R9. Manu might be a little bit overthinking his attacks. Trying to find these extra passes uh, when there is some space, not making too many skill moves. Or just taking the shots. Remember the power shot that we saw last game and him trying even two or three times more the same kind of power shots. Just to get him a goal, but Manu definitely getting a bit of the better of possession right now in this second half very aggressive in you see that second man press and just this generic press here against PAG and this could be dead can he get around the corner R9 no he can't delete with that extra bit of stamina off the bench that's the lift that's putting in work he's made two or three key interceptions now and this could be a chance to go down the other end for Manabish Short just rushed. not the same wavelength there of Kevin De Bruyne it's just too rushed If Manu is able to find this space, watch that back post. You know he's waiting for it. Rolfo into Erling Haaland, heads it down, back to R9. PAT in. It's a massive save from Van der Sar to keep it alive. And we will go into a pause. But can you imagine if this game is decided on that penalty shoot? That, that penalty. 
that single penalty three minutes in. I would be absolutely furious as a player, as a coach. I can take uh, these time situations a little better, but yeah, that's going to be heartbreaking for Manu for sure um, if it does end up getting concluded by that one. But there's goals in this game still, Brandon. There's goals in this game, especially when Manu's going to put pressure. Piazin will get space, and you know what he does when he gets a little bit of space. Let's see right now what is going to happen from this corner kick from the Sar. No, R9 is actually able to clear that one up. And we see Lionel Messi put in for Manu. And we already saw a big goal in this matchup from Lionel Messi himself for Levy in that first leg where he scored a 3 2. Which does did end up getting the victory for Ajax in the first leg. But this is a Scrappy situation here. Triggering some runs there as well. You saw Alfonso Davies about a 50, 60 yard run forward. Lionel Messi, fresh off as well, to try and bring a comeback into this one. Erling Haaland, is it now the all important equaliser? Messi down the byline, where's the cutback? Saved by the feet of Van der Sar. Ooh, that was well worked as well. The player lock usually works to perfection, but didn't get it there. 75th minute, will we see some pressure? Already from Manu. Oh, Davies does win that. Haaland. This is the time to shine. Manu Bachor. He wants if to be in the box, though. Fan. Messi. Back to R9 again. Deflections just bounce in the way of Ajax. They're able just to keep hold of it. Still 15 minutes just under left. As it stands, will be Ajax. There will be this year's Edivise champions. Oh, that's a... If Piagin can do enough to hold on to the ball in these last remaining moments. The goal came from a third-minute penalty in the game. And a pause from Manu. And you see he's a little frustrated there. He's probably feeling the same way that we are. He has been getting into these, well, opportunities, but just not finding that, that pass we can set it up beautifully or that shot that might end up in the back of the net. There's always a defender from PAC just getting that to that particular situation. Who do you got, Brandon? Is it, uh, do we still have a goal for PSC? I think there? there's a 1-1. One, one. It's a 1-1? One, one? I think there's a goal coming. I'm up for it. I'm up for it. Send us to extra time. We've, we've, we've played three games. We might as well play up for 13 game minutes. Wolf. KDB looking at left-hand side as well. Haaland is already waiting. Messi. Messi into the dangerous area now on that left boot, which once upon a time he'd be happy to have a finesse from 30 plus yards. Not now, though. Oh. Again, he, every time he survives one of these attacks, it must just give PH an extra bit of. No, it might not give him an extra bit of confidence because he's just given possession back again. Nice deflection goes the way of PSV. Back to our nine. Tap in, surely. There's your 1 1. It's Kylian Mbappe. He won't care if he's ugly. We could be on our way to extra time. Brandon, what, what what do I need for the lottery? I'll get my crystal ball out. <laughs> I mean, I could have predicted. I thought he bottled it because the goalkeeper movement was already there towards that far corner, and then he still shot it. But the <laughs> fortunate deflection to the feet of Mbappe. And who else is it going to be on the end of a scrappy deflection? It's always that Kylian Mbappe who's lightning quick getting to that. And look, ball goes around, comes around sometimes. That penalty, he was not happy to concede that one. Then again, that header, I mean, it's manual. No worries. One all. You guys now determine who's the best player. 84 minutes. Uh, I can't predict it. It's PSG with the kickoff right now. Let's uh, see. Is PSG going to take this in the last minute? He will be roaring. Oh, my God. I've seen so many times that he's already done that. But then again, right now, this is tough, Brandon. Taking the last attack is actually tough. And look. He's going to keep it in play as well. Gonna go, he's just going to go for it. Mandy. Surely not PAG. Manu will have to try and stand strong. Yes, oh, that's big now, tackle from Rolf. Oh, space. Break the other way. But does, the, does manage to cool down and realize if I can get this last attack? And I'm telling you, Manu has quite a track record of scoring. Big goals in the 90th minute as well, but maybe just not as big as Piazin. As we saw him eliminating Abu Makka in the Pro Open with a 
Last minute goal, I think. This is it. 89 minutes on the clock. Last kick. One switch of play. The chance of the game. It looks like it's going to fall the way of PSV. If they can try and make something happen from this moment now. A goal here would win them the competition, would make them champions. Can Manny Bashaw find a way through to find the last goal of his last chance? The current world champion back on the big stage. Is he going to get a second point at it? No, he's not. Extra time is needed. Strap yourselves in. We need 30 more minutes to decide who will be this year's Edevise champion. Well, you can definitely say this one is going down to the wire. Oh, Manu, I think <laughs> if he just did something there, because PSE, he wasn't going to jump into any tackle. You just saw him backing up. He may could have done it already. But then again, we said it, we deserve the leg free. Why not just take it all the way up to Pence like you, you, you even asked for, politely. Brandon, I think you will be served quite well today. Oh, or not. 30 more minutes now. <laughs> needed between these two. Who is going to be I think the player that uh, can contain their nerves a bit more in this stage, in this scenario? Roll five, big switch of play. There's Harlem with a flick on back. That's why no, be sure looking to get back in front. Lino Messi will! And it's the current world champion so that will take another slight advantage forward in the extra time. I, I'm going to be honest, Brandon. I just turned around, took a quick look after PSG conceded. And I noticed a kind of fear that I saw us having when we had the Inacious final against them. Because PSG, right now, he lost the ball straight from kickoff. And he just conceded. This happened to us as well. And Levy turned around. And now Levy is coaching PSG who was actually the guy scoring on him back then. It's a, it's a funny moment. But then again, Manu, yeah, he didn't hesitate a single moment there. He knew PSG was going to move his goalkeeper, so he was just looking for that extra pass to Messi. Beautifully worked in. Put that in the near corner. And here again, ooh, thought he won the ball up quite high. PSG is just not feeling his build-up at the moment, but never count him out. Serlov, once again, on the pitch. Oh, about, 20, well, about 20k is in-game item, but certainly <laughs> does the job. In the Edivisi final, apparently. That's uh, just a, a tip right there, if you want to build your squad. If Piazin is using him in one of the most important moments, and maybe his esports career as well. Get Serlov in. Get Serlov in then you know what you should do back home. Then again, 100, 102nd minute. PSG should take the last attack here, but look at that run. And Keep Salah will get it. If he can squeeze the ball through to him. No, he can't. He tried to play first time. It's going to fall back. No, it's not. Matthias be sure deserves so much credit in this game as well, because you've got to remember, in the second match of the series, he went 1-0 down against PSG and could have crumbled, came back 1-4-1. In this game, consider the penalty three minutes in, could have crumbled. No, just kept on knocking on PHN's door until and he found an answer. If Piercing goes quick. And now potentially will play the last kick of the first 15. Again, defended well or not, Mbappe. Back to Mohamed Salah. Still can't find a way through. And he's 15 minutes away, Mane Bashaw, for making it three years in a row that he's won this competition. I might have seen, like... We are witnessing maybe one of the best substitutions ever defensively. Matthijs de Ligt, he went all, all across the pitch there to get that ball. And all, for all the game throughout, he's been dominant. Interceptions, winning the aerial duels for Manu. And it was only really that he did that because of the, <laughs> the penalty that got given and the yellow card for Lucio. Big performance. 50 minutes away, 50 minutes away, PSVR from being this year's champions. Let's jump back into it now. If he can hold on, that's the all-important question. 15 in-game minutes, six-minute half. There will be chances. Yeah, for sure. But Piazin, really, if Manu plays this well, he only has two, maybe three opportunities to really get something going, so he shouldn't be losing the ball early, as he has been doing in that first half from extra, of extra time. Messi here, though, for Manu. Manu looking dangerous here. Has a lot of players in the box. Rolfo beautifully worked. Mbappe cuts it back. 
still not dealt with. That was a massive interception there. I believe it was Tony Crows. Brandon, penalties? I feel like we're going to see it. I feel so as well. And I think the entire arena off. feels Around it. the corner. He might be about 25k in game, but he's doing a job or not. Dispossessed to Alfonso Davies. Last seven minutes now. It's another big win for PA Zin. Does he fancy taking us to penalties? Tony Cruz back to Mbappe into Arden Haaland, who will twist and will turn. Just does enough money for sure to sort of retain himself from That's diving into a That's brilliant defense. And Mbappe now. He is a bit low on stamina, and we'll see constant pressure, probably from PA Zin, but it's a massive switch of play. Right timing, right moment from Manu. Uh -oh. Oh, that was Four in-game minutes, PSV back in possession again. We did it last year for Test, did it the year before for Tessé. Changed teams to PSV this year. And with a very talented teammate in Emre Yilmaz, Manu Bichol. 190 minutes. PSV might look to take the trophy on oh once again or not. Long ball for keep off his line. We have a really, really dangerous throw in here. Throw ins are known to be dangerous. And another one. will come back again. 20 seconds of in game time left for PHG to find an equalizer to take us into extra time. Can he do it here in Amsterdam? He's done it all around the world before. Sorloff down the byline. Goes for a corner. This is his time now. This is his moment. Nice step over X into Mbappe. It's another corner again to Ajax. Blow the whistle ref for if you're a PSV fan. Or a PSV going to take this in the last kick. So long ball forward. There's Erling Haaland. And we're off to penalties. Ajax. A PAG. Just about scrape us into penalties. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. This man. He I don't know never, how he does it. I don't know how he does it. He never gave up, did he, PH in? Honestly. <laughs> PH in's given me a lot in my commentary life, but I thought he was gone then. I thought he was gone. Well, penalty kicks, Brandon. I don't think we've got any time left. I think we're off to penalties to decide this year's 2024 Capiani de Vise champion. Referee, send us into penalties. And here we go. go. Up steps PH in first with Erling Haaland, who does score one for one. Man of sure up next with his Erling Haaland as well. Is he going to be one from one from him? It is. Up steps Kylian Mbappe for PAZ. Which corner is he going to go? It's going to be bottom left again. Scores. Manu just in the middle. Same goes. Mbappe. Posted from the in. Back of the post. Perfect pen so far. Back to Hullet now. This is Ajax stepping up for penalty number three. Three from three. It's all green at the moment. Pressure back on to PSV with Arna and the icon. Can he score? Yes, he can. Up steps, Mohamed Salah. Liverpool man scoring again, bottom left. He's a winner three times and I think just Marvel standing still every time. De Bruyne also puts it back in the net. He wanted a dive. Solov steps up. The PA's in from the spot, does score, it's five for five. Penalties have all been perfect. Must score. PSV must score with Hullet. Which will he go? Still squeezes in. And into sudden death we go now. Back to Ajax again. Tony Cruz does score. Pressure. Back onto PSV. It's Rolfo this time. She must score for Manny Bashaw. She doesn't. And Ajax will take it on a penalty. He does. PAG lives for these moments. PAG and Levy David. Ajax are champions again. E a 2024 champions. The chairs are being thrown. <laughs> PAG, Levy David. I think at this point, every everything is being thrown. I thought we're in a steel cage chair match up there.
You have to feel for Manny Bashore and Emre Yilmaz. Penalties to decide a championship. He came right down to the wire between them two. But for Levy especially, he's had heartbreaking grand finals last year. I mean, what really can you say? PhD in <laughs> penalty kicks. Manuel has won a penalty series, which was for him maybe the most important penalty kick series of his life. But yeah, you can't win them all. And he was one split second. I mean, referee, if we probably look back at it, the time was already way past injury time. I don't know what to say. It's PhD in just doing PhD in kind of stuff. I did call for penalties. I fancy penalties. Yeah, like I said, you, you should probably go. So I just start guessing, guessing what's going to happen in these games. I mean, look. First and foremost, what a grand final between those two. Incredible grand final. The talent here in the Netherlands is incredible. I know PAG is from Brazil, don't get me wrong. But the talent here in the Netherlands is incredible. What a grand final. There was so much talk about who would be in the grand final. Ajax and PSV, it was rumoured all the time. However, through what had been a, a more simple quarter final and semi final, they met their match in a in a grand final, and I believe they'll be getting their trophy in just a split second. I think so as well. And incredible, incredible scenes. We're back, we're back on, we're back on. We're, we're back on, yeah, we were just... Come out the penalties. We were just checking out if the trophy was already there. Those celebrations, those limbs yeah. between yeah. them two players, what it's all about. FC crazy. Pro, uh, E Divise champions. Incredible moments. We're going to give them their trophy in just a second. We'll flip to uh, to their POV. 20,000 euros guaranteed. A penalty shootout was needed. A third game was needed in the best of three series. And to be honest, that's all we could have asked for. Yeah, for real. This is what, like, we said it already. We First of all, we deserve the leg free to just determine who's going to be the best team. And then we even got all the way up to penalties. Penalties, it's a bit of a 50-50, we know. But then again, yeah, Ajax came out of top. They are becoming right now here we go as we speak this is it Ajax are your 2024 Edivise champions the best of three was needed a penalty shootout was needed and we have to remember as well the grand scheme of things here Enzo PAG might not have and maybe shouldn't have played that third game no and now, but he did. honestly, was it even the right call from Nick? Will you say like, yeah, I mean, this is what PAC does? Arguably so. But then again, he was literally a split second away of losing the yeah. final as well. And then you would have been on all the other side of things. But then again, let's be honest, 3-2. 4-1, incredible display from Manu, and then it got decided on penalties. Yeah. These two teams, these four players you, are just you so You flip a coin strong. on penalties. Yeah. You know what I mean? You flip a coin one day of the week, that team wins, the other day that does. But the, the, the quality, we said it would be a mechanical battle between the two. It wasn't high scoring games because, especially that last one, they were just both on top of each other. And it they was a real difficult one for PAG to step up in that. After losing 4-1 against Manu, he went, no, I'm going to play this game again. Fair play to him. Yeah, fair play to him. And fair play to PHZ for stepping up as well. I, I, I still want to know, Brandon, what went down what was the there. decision, yeah. Yeah, what went down there. I'm not, uh, just quickly checking out, Nick is actually being interviewed right now in the mainstream. So maybe uh, we can chat it up uh, afterwards. But then again, massive performance from PHZ. Yeah. And still... To kind of smooth and everything out. Manu still has the World Cup. Emmer still has the World Cup. They still have the E-Champions League. And Max Kulumai, like we said, what a story for him getting a World Cup spot today as well. Absolutely. As we said, look, the headline news, Ajax are champions here in the Capienne Divise. This is the bracket screen there of what has been a fantastic, fantastic day of action. <laughs> And we're going to bring in Hakeem and Inter to recap what has been our 2024 Ida Vise final. Superb work from Renzo today in the commentary booth. I mean, where do we start? We, we knew the grand final was going to be special, didn't we, Hakeem? But we didn't expect it maybe to go all the way to penalties. Yeah, eventually we went to penalties. It was a big game, um, especially last, last minute, last second header to eventually get it to penalties. So, yeah, Brandon, thank you for staying on here. We're going to just talk through this last bit of um, yeah, the, 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 the broadcast to make sure that you all have the last bits of info from around the scene. So, Brandon, for now, 
I will ask you to quickly switch out. No, it's okay. We're going to get Brandon out. And then later on, you, you can... You subbed me out? Oh. Yeah. La <laughs> later, you can be subbed back in. No worries. We're going to no get Manuel Bachur on here. Sub, Brandon. <laughs> we're going to get Manuel Bachur on here. Uh, whenever he can, he's still yep. greeting the fans. And still just, do. Uh, continue, yeah. So, if Manu can join. There we go. You can come a little bit closer, Manu. Commiserations, Manuel. I'm sorry. It was a, a tough game. Second, uh, second game you won yeah. pretty decently. You were in your mood. Last game, you went all the way to penalties. How do you feel after this game? Well, first of all, of course, congratulations to Ajax because I think we are the best teams in this competition. I think that was clear, but also to confirm it, to go to penalties, there's not nothing in between us, you know, so they were fantastic as well today. And yeah, the game was, uh, was a hard one to take. Of course, Emre lost the first one, and I was like, it's going to be a tough ask now. But then I beat uh, Paolo in the first game very confident. Really easily, to be honest. Yeah, 4-1. I think everyone expected Levy to play the third game. Yep. But uh, when I saw Paolo, I immediately my, I switched on again. I knew like it's now 0-0 zero, zero again. And in my opinion, he got an undeserved penalty at the start, which made things a bit complicated for me to grow into the game again. Sorry because to interrupt. But was that the reason? Like Immediately, when, when people came to you, you were like um, very emotional. You were like, oh, what, what happened? Was that the moment you were, no. you were, you were emotional about? No, no. Nah. It, of course, conceding in the... I need to stop one more corner and now uh, yeah. we're the champion. So, yeah, it was really hard for me to take, but uh, where was I? Yeah, so he scored the uh, first goal, which was very good for his confidence, of course, because I'd say, like, from his, from the equalizer in my game, the second game till the end, I was in control. But then for him to score immediately, of course, gave him confidence boost too. Then I'd say I was maybe a bit lucky in the end to equalize, but I took that luck, I created that luck. And, uh, yeah, in extra time, I think I didn't give up anything. I scored a goal, and, yeah, sometimes... Uh, Sometimes yes, luck hard is to take, hard to take. Sometimes luck isn't on your side, yeah. and I think in the end it's penalties, you know. So in, in this game particularly, if yeah. you if you watch after the one nil, I thought you were losing control. You were doing sliding yeah. tackles left, right, and center. But at a certain point, and that's what, what I was discussing in the in the stands with all the other players, uh, the yeah, you know you know them all, the Dutch yeah. bros. We were talking about it, and we were saying, if Manu can have one big chance, it doesn't have yeah. to be goal, just one big chance. You will have that mentally switch, uh, the mental switch yeah. in your head, and you will be on. I, and I felt like I was growing into the game as time goes on, and he didn't score the second. So, as it was one 0 game, of course, I'm really confident in scoring at least once. It was just for me a case of not conceding, of course, which is, yeah, easily said and done. But yeah, we can talk about this a lot. I think it was a nice final for the viewers to watch. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, my reaction now is also a bit more soft because uh, I'm qualified for each Champions League for World Cup and. I also realized at the same time, like last year, I got loads of luck in penalties, so, yeah. You get just, just one more view on the penalties you had, like, um, when when he takes four penalties in a row on the left side, I I can imagine when, you, when you're when you saving penalties, okay, he went to the left three times, he's going to the right. Is, is, that, is, that, a, is that a mental game that you play, or is it just, yeah. just pure luck? This year, I don't have, like, it's hard because there's five corners now, and I don't really know how to play mind games anymore, mm. so it's just a... Uh, guess basically every time maybe in the end it was stupid of me to go I think three times in the same corner he did, he, yeah. did, he did the same thing to you yeah. he did yeah, four yeah, times that's what I meant. He, did, he did it to you I like, didn't even notice I think yeah. last year was a bit more easy to play mind games but now because there's five corners up top right but uh, yeah exactly. I, have, I have to say you're taking this really well yeah. although it's a, it's a final loss I think it does have to do with the fact that you're qualified to the world championships yeah. and of course the e-champions league where we will see you back together with Emre Emre yeah. was the champion last year, you won the World Cup last year, so there's still a lot to do. I know you're disappointed right now, but if you look back at it, you got to the final, you got the job done because the World Cup spot was important to you, I think. And I think now you have to focus back again, switch on, World Cup is coming back. Back to back, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Alright, thank you very much, thank Manuel. Very much, Manuel. Yeah, that was Manuel. Um, I think you really control his emotion like really well. Of course, it's a bit harder in English as well to uh, to explain what you're feeling right now. But the interviews are still going with uh, with Ajax. They're of course celebrating uh, as they should. What a final! What yeah, a final Hakim. A very interesting final. We're looking back to see how they are going. We're waiting for the Ajax players to finish. Then we can bring them on here too to have a chat. Uh, they must be very happy. They must be over the moon. We could tell. Like when I was watching how Levy was sitting in this final match. 
you could tell that he was, I'm not going to say disappointed because he wasn't disappointed, but he had a lot you of stress. Yeah, he had a lot he of stress. That, yeah. he, he was stressing out at that point. And I think for him personally, having to watch how his teammates has to win that game, it must be one of the hardest feelings yeah, in the world. Exactly. And you he saw the emotions yeah. erupted when he scored that corner. He was almost he like confident. Ran over the, yeah. the podium. <laughs> so for him already, he felt probably that this is it. Yeah. If you can score in the last second, the last kick of the game, that's the moment that we're going to go into penalties and I'll be confident that he's going to win it. Yeah. And you saw the emotions coming out. I mean, yeah, it has to be a good feeling. You don't have it in your control, of course, but it has to be a nice feeling to have it. Let's yeah. see if we so, can uh, get... So while Levy's still handing out uh, some autographs, just have, a, just have a look at Manuel's, like, last few years as well. He's be become an EDVC champion three times in the three times he got into the final. So, of course... It's it's yeah it's really unlucky to to lose now, but he still he can still defend his title in the E World Cup, and it's it's yeah it's it's a very big journey for him. And um, yeah, Le Levy has all the fans to to please, yeah, of exactly. course. So we have to wait a little bit longer. <laughs> Priorities but, right there. But like you said, if, eventually he won already. He won already yes. multiple uh, EDVCs. Hey Levy, join. You can take the headset. You're still shaking a little bit. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Take your time. Wow. Right, fix the hair. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, it's it okay. Is. So, the camera is there. Get a little wave for the people at home. How talk us, right no, yeah, talk us through what you're feeling, your emotions, how it went. You played that first game. I think I had all emotions that there are in life today. <laughs> because I think I played amazing. Uh, I had the feeling nobody was going to beat me today. Um, then I won versus Emre. Then Paulo lost against Manu. And then it comes. Like yeah. we have to play a third game. And T take us to that moment that Nick decided, like, um, okay, Paolo is going to play. What what happened behind the scenes right there? I was going to the toilet already because I was thinking, yeah, I'm playing. Because yeah. today I think I was the best player maybe of everyone, mm -hmm. if I can say that. Yeah. And of course. but Nick Nick already said we still need to discuss. I'm okay with that. Then Nick just talked with us, like, who's the most confident? And we said both. Like I said, yeah. I want to play. Paolo said he wants to play. Then we both said, who do you think is going to win? I, I said, I think he's going to win. He said, I'm going to win. Then um, I was like, I don't think he's losing twice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He was, was the same the same for Nick. But I also really had the feeling like I was going to be better as well. So mm. for me, it was pretty tough to take. Um, I don't know, people who saw my face maybe yeah, noticed that. Yeah, yeah. Because, but then like the minute it kicked off, I have to be confident and yeah. think he's going to win it. In the end, the way it went is <laughs> a typical PH I would say. Uh, he didn't play his greatest, like he was defending so bad to you. Yeah. And that makes my heart shake a lot. Yeah. I think because of him now, I will only get to the age of like 40. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> then he has the balls to take that corner last second. Yeah. He takes it straight. I would not do that. I would just take it short. Then he hits it in. To be honest, at that moment, you don't think you can lose anymore. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like, but then there were five out of five scored from both, and I know Manu almost always wins his PKs as well. So I was like, nah, not Manu, because in World Cup, like nobody yeah. beats him in pens, for example. Yeah, we can uh, look at the penalty, uh, Peach. What, what, what did you think of this penalty, I by the way? It was not a pen, but I hoped it was a red card as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if he gives imagine. a pen, it should be red, right? Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. You, you, you can't have a double. You can't have no, a double punishment. You can in in, 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 in CFC is possible. <laughs> And then Manu obviously came back. This, this was, was a, this was a good shot, but also a lucky shot. But like the angle was really hard, I would say. Um, this goal also, I think in the end, is good for Manu. Yeah. The PH could have prevented that because yeah. you, we know him for the goalkeeper movement. But here, for example, if yeah, he doesn't he did, move yeah. it, it's not a goal. Exactly. exactly. And then this moment, this I don't know. At, the, at this moment, I, I don't remember. I have to. Be, I don't remember it. Yeah, because because at this point, and I can tell what you were doing. You were running around on the stage <laughs> yeah, true, and you were celebrating and and, and, and really? <laughs> yes. Well, I, sorry, I have no <laughs> you idea. You lost it. No, I have no idea. <laughs> and then of course the penalties. There no, was a lot was of penalties saying. going to the left. I didn't watch. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't watch. Uh, who, who else wasn't watching? Was in the stands. I was with your family, right behind your family. They didn't dare to watch the game. Uh, my dad, for, for sure. I think his heart rate was the highest like of everyone in here. Sure. <laughs> no, you could feel it was electrical. So, talk us through this. A lot of penalties going to the left-hand side. I didn't watch. Oh, yeah. I didn't watch. But you, can watch it, you can watch it now. So, a lot of penalties are going to the left. Left down, I see. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Five times already or something. Five times, back to back. So, we keep going to that side. And I then Manu. He had to take... I, I really felt like he had to save like this one. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I thought he's going to miss. Yeah. But I don't know. Manu was every time standing. I don't know. Maybe he analyzed something. I don't know how pH... Because you're not saving any, right? 
Yeah. This shit. Yeah. If he shoots to a corner, you don't save anything. Close. You're just exactly. standing there. So and then this one goes miss? Or the this one, right? This one, yeah. He saves it. Yeah, they can only not Rolf. She was the best player in my team, so she has to miss it for PSV then, <laughs> I think. Yeah, incredible. It was written in the stars for a final. For me personally, I was looking forward to the final Manu against Levi. That was the final that I wanted to see. So, in yeah, that case... Me too. But I think in, if I compare this league to other leagues, there will not be a final like this. Yeah. Like with this caliber of players probably. And I don't know. I, I All the titles in one final is incredible. And I feel everybody of us four gets better at LAN. And other players get worse. Okay. I don't know. It's just amazing. Back... Ah, second oh, you're time. Happy. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're not gonna keep yeah, you any exactly. longer because you want to go celebrate. There's like I think a thousand people waiting for a signature of you and P <laughs> yeah. and PH. So I'm gonna just gonna say thank you very much for coming yeah, thank on. You guys. If you thank still have last words for the camera for the people at home supporting, um, for, to the people who watched, I hope you guys enjoyed it because that's the reason we are streaming this. All the content is being made. I hope you enjoyed it and see you guys next year hopefully. Definitely. Thank you very Definitely. much, Levy. Thanks. Thanks. Right. The last things. Let's yep. go through it once again. Final, Ajax won it. We had seen an amazing final. Three games, you have to go to all the way. So for, for me right now, if you're here, you're sitting here, you're talking about it, I don't think that there's a lot of people that will feel bad, or at least there will be a lot of people that will feel bad that they weren't here in the stadium with yeah. us. Yeah, definitely. Of course, you like feel the atmosphere here. It's like the crowd was shouting, especially at that last goal of Haaland, of course. It was, it was incredible. It was just, yeah, last minute goal. Everything you really want in this final is you want it to go to penalties to make it the, yeah, the most interesting uh, final that could be. Uh, there's a lot of waving there. Ah, uh, yeah, it's, it's just incredible. Uh, PH is still, is still celebrating there. Brandon's celebrating. Everyone's like, uh, it's having fun. Uh, it's having fun around the stage, and to be honest, I had a really, really fun day with this final. I've, yeah, I don't I, know. I just wanted to thank you because I was gonna say, we <laughs> have he is. Brandon here, right Man here. Man of the moment. <laughs> we, I was just, I was just gonna finish it off. Brandon, thank you very much for your professional. I just wanted to add something to the conversation. Sorry. Oh, so yeah. yesterday, I played PA in the penalty shootout. Yeah. Did you win? He beat me. Ah. But he's been practicing against me, all right? So I'm so taking all the plaudits. So, so you're, take, you're taking 50% of this? I'm getting, I think, about 50, 50 euros. Right, all right. right. That's, what a better way to end. <laughs> so, Brandon, I want to thank you. Renzo, who's already in the back celebrating. Inta, of course, for all your expertise. And I thank, thank you. you at home for watching. And I hope to see you in the next EDVZ finals that might be coming next year. Hopefully. So, stay tuned. There we go.